Soon only I love you. Don't get go to You love me. The fuck are you doing? What? The fuck are you doing? Oh no, the accidental live stream. <laughs> People are gonna know I was singing 24 Hour Cinderella. Uh oh, well, I better copyright that. <laughs> um, so, should I take it that that's what you want to talk about first? First, uh, I, I mean, I guess we can. Like, God, it was, it was so satisfying to see. Like, it, 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 Sid Alpha's Sid video. video yeah. Was very, so, very well done. Everyone who is aware of the uh, copyright DMCA abuser situation, um, Sid Alpha released this video. It was a very, yeah. very good video talking about all most of the shit Acer has pulled. Um, it's yeah. just constantly ongoing, so, you know, it's uh, quite hard to keep track of it all. Yeah, exactly. It's it has been. <laughs> you hurt. What? Oh, you hurt Pat by showing him an actually competent Skyrim video before he had to suffer through Genji apologize. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Patricia. Who is Genji? Is is that a video we're gonna have to cover at some point? Probably. Oh. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Anyways, um... Uh, Skids, you aren't the only one that, that, uh, recommended this video. There's a reason people put the, uh, recycle sign on it. This video has been recommended multiple times. It just so happened that because Rainbow Douche last, uh, video decided to use this guy in it, we were like, okay, well, let's cover him. Yeah. Um... And I guess we should talk about that, too. Uh... Yes. Let me grab the uh, copy link. Let's hope the image is... I couldn't change the image before we went live. Uh, oh, that's still locked for... Why the fuck is the image locked? I can't change the previous images we've had on screen. Can I only change Here? them if... Yeah, can I only change them if they're enabled now? No, it's still saying no. That weird. is Weird. Can you add... I guess you'll just have to add a new one, right? I guess so. Image. Uh, add source. Uh, new source. Yes. Uh-oh. It's still not... That is weird. What the fuck is going on? I don't know. <clears throat> I've actually never seen this before. There's no reason the images shouldn't be working. They're just locked for some reason. Maybe if I remove some of them? Maybe, yeah, maybe it's like, you got too much shit, just like your tabs. Oh, no. Fuck, Mary kill. Y'all Balgruff. Uh, Preston Garvey and Amada. And that's 20 check crowns from Carol Svoboda. Thank you yes. very much. Thank you. That was a super chat. Sorry. Just trying um, to... Hmm. I think I would marry Jarl Bulgriff because he's such a limp dick of a leader. He's so weak and pathetic that you could easily take control from him. So I would marry Jarl, Jarl Bulgriff. I would kill Preston Garvey. Yeah, would, you're going with one I was going to do. And I yeah, would uh, fuck Amata. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I, I was going to say. I'd probably do the same, yeah. <laughs> I sent the Rainbow Hawk video to a friend of mine that makes response videos, and he said in the video he hates me for re uh, recommending him to respond to the video. I'm not surprised. That's a fucking terrible video. You push Jason the Throne too far, he's sabotaging the stream? Uh-oh, what's happening? The image thing. No, they're saying the image thing. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah uh, this is weird. Like, there's no reason it shouldn't be working. First he hacked my account, now he's going for our images. Um... I suppose... Who would win? Honest Abe versus Dishonest Abe. <laughs> Uh, I, I suppose, 
Um, what I could do... Can I go based off the real life, Honest Abe? Or do I have to go off the the mythologized Abe? Uh-oh, you're getting a little bit spicy there, Setch. No, because... I, I, I know, Abe, I know. Abe was a human being as well. I'm like, yeah, he was, <laughs> he was totally not... Not above, uh, like, getting down in the fisticuffs and th making threats and stuff like that. So I would say if we go with the real-life version, Honest Abe would win every time. <laughs> that comment by King Aru. Peg and Setch, how do you guys feel now that you're famous because of Acerthorn drama? That will be the future, of, or will, <laughs> what will be the future of Stag? Hey, Owlman, get out of the way. You're in, <laughs> you're <laughs> You're in the front of the hosts. <laughs> wow he, he's saying that me and pagan are the famous ones and you're oh. you're just holding us back <laughs> <laughs> anyways um this kind of isn't working uh yeah i don't know why the image it's not letting me like i could show the images that are already there but i can't change them like it's just completely grayed out there's no no yeah. Wait. Well, I mean, we could see we could see his uh, thing now. Well, yeah, that's because I opened it in a um, browser tab, but I can't like scroll. I can't scroll to show the whole thing because the window is already um, the the size of the window is altered because that's for uh, watch together, so it fits the uh, video frame perfectly. Well, okay, so we can. Yeah, we, we can just say that this is from Rainbow Hawk, that that thing at the at the top. Um just give me because they, they can they can read the by the way. Uh they can read that up to that point. Yeah. Uh just give me a second here. Apparently that video I just uploaded um failed to render properly, which is annoying. Ugh. So I just <laughs> uh God damn it. I'll fix that later. It's not a big deal. U.S. Army <laughs> ad, ad. I have two moms. <laughs> yep. <laughs> two eighty from Sun Eater Grom. Thank you. Yeah, of his fake maple leaf money. Anyways, so Rainbow Hawk uh, commented on the video. Bot scam in Discord. God damn it. Um. <sighs> fucking goddamn. God damn it. Yeah, I see it. Hold on. Yeah, I'm getting it. Um, why can't I... Oh, I have to click on the account to ban, right? Yeah, I already did it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep, and all and this then, stuff is gone. Yeah, and I was going to say, and make sure you don't uncheck. Because normally what happens is when we ban... Um, when we ban people, we don't we don't remove literally anything they said so that people can have a record of, okay, why were they banned? Well, here's all the stuff they said. Have fun. Yeah, but we don't want that here because the but guy's putting links that could fuck that your could account. hijack so. your account and everything. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. those are those are the exception of if it's something that can actual like do damage, then yeah, that's that shit's gotta go. Alright. Anyways, back to the comment at hand. Uh a few days after the last stream, it was only like a day or two, uh, Rainbow Hawk showed up and commented on the video. You know, I was going to suggest you watch my follow-up video, How Honest Hearts and Far Harbor Get Grey Morality Right, where I actually say good things about New Vegas and extrapolate on my complicated relationship with Grey Morality, but I don't think that'll do anything productive. Um, so again, where I actually say good things about New Vegas, we don't care if you say good or negative things about New Vegas, we care... That what you're that saying accurate. is accurate and correct. Again, it's like, oh, there's no swords in Skyrim. Like, I don't, I can't stand Skyrim, but that's just factually not true, you know? Yeah. Um. By the way, you want a proof of the toxic CD Pro Obsidian fanboys? Look in a mirror. Instead of saying, I respectfully disagree, here's my take, you and your friends chose to say, wrong, 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 fucking libtard. Um, so that's not what we, like, you're actually saying stuff that's factually wrong. When you say Good Springs dies Again. out, yeah. I, I get to that in my response, but yeah. Um, and he, yeah, he, just keep going, just keep going with this, then we'll go into the response. I'll finish his comment, then I'll grab that super chat. Yep. Though I will admit, I did come off like that in my video. So again, fucking libtard, though I do admit I come off like that in my video. Well, what the fuck do you expect? 
Um, perhaps I should have made the disclaimer of, if you love New Vegas, I don't have anything against you. My problem is with the people who react so harshly against people who say good things about Fallout 3 and 4. So, my bad. Again, that's not... Not understanding what the criticisms that we have for you is. Yeah. But if you want to stick around, I've got a new Serious Sam video in the works. Bye. So he's uh, shilling his shit, number one. It's like, yeah. why would we give a fuck about your Serious Sam video? Yeah, if, if your Serious Sam is anywhere approaching the quality of the video that we just experienced, it's going to be dog shit. Yeah. Why would we want to watch that? Um, 25 Polish Lodi from Krovio. Uh, thank you. Hello to my Krov- new favorite... Krovu. Krovu? Yeah. Okay. I get kind of fucked up with his, what, like, E-A-U-X, that, yeah. Sorry. Hello to my new favorite podcast. Have a bit of, oh, God, that's, ah. Uh, have a bit of my first paycheck for your good work. Thank you. EFAP had a head start for my heart, but Stag is catching up. Oh, glad we, uh, <laughs> could provide content that you enjoy. Yeah. Um, and 50, uh, check crowns from... God, why is it not letting me scroll on fucking OBS? There we go. Uh, from Carol Svoboda, thank you. Nice long comment full of information and stuff. Uh, Cree, you're in fact a furry. No. However, I did not inquire. Ace of Cox. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I guess that's just referencing how a certain dipshit will uh, completely ignore a comment if he interprets anything as uh, hostile or uncivil. Nice long comment full of information and stuff. However, I did not inquire, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Who asked? <laughs> Didn't yeah. ask. Anyways, also, you're white. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, my response. Look in a mirror. We We reacted harshly, not because you said good things about Fallout 3 and 4, but because you're saying actually insane things, like, I'm glad C- uh, Cyberpunk 2077 failed because I could have my revenge upon CD Projekt Red, because I have some weird axe to grind with Obsidian, uh, because I don't like gray morality. We don't care in the slightest that you like or say positive things about Fallout 3 and 4. Literally, all we care about is the accuracy of what is being said. If you're saying things that just aren't true or are completely unreasonable, then yeah, we're going to react, and the worse it is, the worse our reaction is going to be. For example, you claim that you ran into the arms of Bioware and Bethesda because the fans of two other companies forced you to, resulting in you blaming them for your own poor choices in mindlessly buying Fallout 76 and Mass Effect Andromeda and failing to do any research, such as claiming that New Vegas was Obsidian's next game after KOTOR 2. Other insane claims are that the NCR are the objective best ending and that the ideal person, in your example, you, would choose. Then being upset that a community is thriving, but those that can't keep up are forced out. You were actually so upset by this that you actually started seething and then claimed that Good Springs was destroyed when the end slide literally said that it was thriving. You also showed an insanely fundamental misunderstanding of what Mr. House is when you straight up fucking claimed he was just Andrew Ryan attempting to build another rapture. You also clearly misunderstood what the Legion actually are, which you would know had you actually talked to Caesar, or companions or NPCs that are aligned with the Legion or know enough about them. The Yes Man ending is literally you get to control the Wasteland, so that shouldn't be the lesser of two evils. But then you are uh, surprised that there is a power vacuum in this scenario when three major factions have been overthrown and driven out, taking all stability and support with them. Like, yeah, we're going to react harshly when you say crazy wrong shit, and blame the game and the fan base for your own lack of paying attention to the stories the game presents. This has never been about anything as petty and fucking stupid as simply liking or disliking a company or games, in the absurdly pathetic and frankly tribalistic way you portray in your video. What we care about are the facts and quality of these games. We are not critical of Fallout 3 and 4 because they changed what the series was when it was developed by Black Isle Studios, who became Obsidian Entertainment, but because Fallout 3 and 4 have objective faults and do not understand what the point of Fallout 1 and 2 was. We are critical of these games because we genuinely want them to be better like they were before. 
It is off-the-wall fucking bonkers that you genuinely believe that we want Bethesda and Todd Howard to die simply because we are critical of these games. It is absurdly fucking hilarious that you're telling us to look in the mirror about metoxicity while you are the one actually celebrating the failure of a game by a completely unrelated company to Obsidian because you dislike the fan bases of uh, Obsidian's games, which you have not proven the toxicity of, and provide examples of videos simply critical of Fallout 3 and 4 that you have not watched and claim they are toxic. <sighs> so, yep. yeah. Um, um, let me grab this super chat real quick. Sounds good. Uh, $10 super chat for McDingus. Thank you very much. When the last two, people rarely mention that there are supposed to be two, Ice Zombie books that will never come out are released, will you do a fur fap on them? Well, we won't do a fur fap, we'll do a stag. Uh, we might, we'll do a stream, but probably won't be a stag, simply because Pagan hasn't watched or read Game of Thrones. We can still do a stag. Pagan uh, will just sit in the corner and be quiet. I mean, I, I guess we could, and he could ask questions. Yeah. I can be the gadget of the group. While you guys are talking about something, I'll be like, I can, when you guys are done, I'll be like, ah, I don't know, that sounds really dumb. That sounds stupid. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you say that to the good things, and then to the bad things, you say, oh, that sounds interesting. That sounds like Yeah, exactly. Good that's what I meant. <laughs> Just completely yeah, shitpost everything. Uh, guys, the video was private because it, uh, the rendering failed and just, like, no video or audio came up. I, yep. That it happens, happens from sometimes. time to time randomly, and I hate it. Um, that was that happened to me actually um, the other day when I was uh, saving an archive for a video. So there was a video that vanished off of YouTube, and I was desperate to find it. I found it on a, on a, on a third party site, and I quickly grabbed it for archiving purposes. I had no idea this video was ever going to leave YouTube. So I've got that, and I re rendered it and everything like that, and had it posted. And the one I tried to show Cree and Pagan was a black video with no sound or anything. It was like, God damn it. Because sometimes that just happens. Sometimes the render is like, yep, it rendered completely and finished, and then you play it, and it's a black video, and it's just there's nothing on it. It's just like, <sighs> damn it. Um, Pagan could talk about MLP when you pause. <laughs> <laughs> and 20 check crowns from Carol Svoboda. Uh, Thank you. Are you hyped for Rings of Power? We was elves. Um... Um, I Did, am hold not on. hyped. Did, didn't the trailer release yesterday or today? Uh, I haven't watched it. If it did. If it has, we should probably watch it on stream and comment on it. Yeah. Do we want? Sure. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah. Well, we are going to be covering it when it gets released, so. Yeah, yeah, we might as well. Um, so anyways, that was my comment response to Rainbow Hawk. Now, you can't see it because the way the screen is set up, but below that is Pagan's response. Um... Why are you upset that we called you out for uh, being a libtard when you just admitted that's how you came off in your video? Also, yes, we said you were wrong when you got facts blatantly incorrect and showed you did little to no research. You have to keep in mind, we are always open to discussion, but when we cover a video and it makes unproven and outright false claims and acts disingenuous, we are going to get harsh in our criticism and start using insults to vent our frustration. There's a difference between us insulting a video and the person who made it on stream and saying it to them in a discussion. Uh, we plan to potentially cover your Why Honest Hearts and Far Harbor Gets Grey Morality Right, even though you clearly didn't watch the video you cited and didn't watch all of this stream, where we go in depth with our, uh, with our arguments and address the things you're saying in this comment. If you'd like to come on stream sometime and discuss this with us in a call live, you're free to get in contact with us on Discord and we can arrange it. So as you could see, th this screen cap was taken like immediately before the stream started, and um, this was four days ago. Okay, um, we responded the following day to his 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 comment was five days ago. Me and Pagan responded at the same time. That was uh, four days ago, and yeah. no response from Rainbow Hawk. Um, well, of course, he, again, as I said, he can't because he got blown the fuck out. So yeah, he can't he can't respond because he literally got curb stomped. Yeah, when you get stuff factually wrong and people call you on it, it's hard to argue that point. So, your options are, okay, admit you fucked up, or tuck your tail between your legs and fucking run like a bitch. And he tucked his tail and ran like a bitch. 
Yeah, because he's still uh, responding to comments on his video. I checked it uh, yesterday or the day before. He So he's gotten a few new comments on that video, and he's responding to them. So, come on, this is petty? Dude, we covered yeah, this, this is guy, not and he said petty. stupid shit directly to us. It's yeah, he said a... this to us. This isn't on his video, it's on ours. Yeah. Yep. Uh, five dollars. Yeah, this ain't petty from... at all. This is just showing what a fucking idiot he is. Yeah, it's not drama. It's that this guy, uh, came at us, and we responded, and he fucking, I guess, bitched out. It yeah. happens. It's the internet. Because, and here's the thing: if we ignored it, you know, people would be saying like, "Oh, so you don't even address the criticisms you get?" Yeah. When yeah, the people who no literally win. make it's the no videos you cover comes in and says something, you don't even read what they say. Yeah, it's a no-win scenario. So. We got yeah. him. That's all the matter. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about him. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, oh, Rainbow Hawk okay. is being petty. Yes. Uh, yeah, go ahead and do the $5 super check. Sorry for... Uh, yeah, $5 from Libertina. Thank you. I gotta go to work soon. Here's a donation. Have a good day, everyone. I'll suffer with you guys later. Uh, UMU emote. UMU. Uh, thank <laughs> you. And yeah, it'll be suffering. Uh, Neanderthal, this isn't Acer. This is uh, Rainbow Hawk, because we covered his video last week. Yeah. Um, That's Again, Pagan for Pagan, wow. Kree's thing just won't update his... He's not allowed to update his images anymore for some reason on OBS, so yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. It's really bugging me. But yeah, we are covering DJ Peach Cobbler. His video is called Skyrim, a bittersweet masterpiece, and yeah, it's gonna... I, I don't know what's sweet in there. So, we'll have to see. Yeah. Anyways, um, if the Lord of the Rings trailer is out, we might cover it after this, but no guarantees. Uh, we have no it idea how long this be. video will take. The Lord of the Rings trailer does not seem to be out. Okay, I, I, I heard it was coming out this weekend, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, there's, uh, I don't see anything, though. People have already, uh, have already, like, ripped it to shreds, and... Like, even bringing up, like, letters from Tolkien himself that are showing, like, that Amazon is full of themselves and shit. It's just great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm aware of no username. Um, I've seen those comments on uh, Rainbow's video. Anyway, should we get started? Are you guys uh, both in the watch together? Yep, I'm in the watch together. All right. Disclaimer. Skyrim is the nostalgic about, except for Freddy Fish, or Kitten Cannon 2, or Dragon Fable. But still, Skyrim isn't even a decade old. How could I feel nostalgic about something that came out less than a decade ago? Well, I'm 23. I feel nostalgic about breakfast. I bought rice checks, hoping for a copy of Checks Quest in the box. I was so uh, young, so naive, so innocent. Okay, so he's one of these guys. Yeah, sorry, that's pretty fucking cringe. But also, that w when you were young, I don't think they even did that. I think Chex Quest was when I was young, not when you were young. Yeah, because Chex Quest is a reskin of Doom. Yes. It's actually a really good game, too, amusingly enough. <laughs> well, I mean, of course it is. It's based off of Doom. Yeah, but even being based off of Doom, you could have gone Plutonia Project with it, and thank God they didn't. And mm. if, if if you don't know what that is, that's where, like, it's all difficulty and enemy spam is through the fucking roof. And no, they didn't do that, thank God. Also, whenever I see people do these kind of skits where they dump food all over their fucking table and shit, I always think of that fucking, that TikTok with the syrup guy where he pours syrup all over the floor and that one guy comes in and goes, how do you feel 10, 20 seconds after that video ends when there's syrup all over your floor and you have to get on your hands and knees and clean it up? Do you feel good? How does it feel knowing that he like talks about like how like when you're when you, when you get down on your hands and knees and you're stuck to that sticky floor, does it remind you of how you will be stuck in hell? <laughs> 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 Holy shit! I will link that thing to you guys if you haven't seen it yet. It is really funny. But yeah, like you're either wasting the food or who knows how fucking dirty that table is. What fucking crumbs or like hair is on there? Like, come yeah. on. Why would you do this? This is 
it's not even like a good joke or anything. It's just weird. But uh, and here's here's the weirder part about this. So he's saying the reason he feels nostalgic for Skyrim is because he's young and stupid. That's literally what he's saying. Well, I'm young, so I'm allowed to feel nostalgic for things that aren't actually old. It's like uh, okay. Mm. Weird way to go with that. Yeah, but I mean that's just how time works. We were all younger when Skyrim came out. That doesn't necessarily yeah. like you know. We're not talking like like my god, dude, once you pass into your thirties and then you start looking back at, at stuff you had when you were a little kid, like, man, I'm nostalgic for, for Pepsi Blue. And my god, if you ever had Pepsi Blue, it was great. But it just didn't take off. It just didn't go anywhere. Nobody wanted it. <laughs> it it wasn't as bad as Pepsi Crystal, though. Oh, my God. Pepsi Crystal. I can't hear or think the words Pepsi Crystal without thinking of that one image that's shared around of, like, the 20-year-old Pepsi Crystal being drunk and a guy fucking vomiting. Yeah. Well, it, was, it wasn't very good when it first came out. <laughs> no. can't even imagine how long <laughs> when it's been there that long. Um... The Wayfarer, thank you uh, for the membership. Uh, welcome to Owl. And uh, $5 from Amora Silverspark, thank you. This is completely off topic, but did you see the Markiplier Smash or Pass Pokemon video he recently uploaded? No. Smash or Pass Pokemon. I don't watch, I don't watch Markiplier, so I wouldn't have, that would have been out of my wheelhouse. I'm concerned at the content of that video. Like, if it's just like, yeah, I'd smash, I'd hit it, something like that, I'd be like, but, okay, I might watch that, because it seems like it'd be funny as fuck. But they're Pokemon. <laughs> Vaporeon is... No! <laughs> shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's continue. The real reason I feel so nostalgic for Skyrim is a game that just grabbed me. I grew up without a console, hence the shitty games, and just had no idea what gaming- No. No. Hold on. No. I will- I will fight back against that. I grew up with a, without a console, hence the shitty games. No. Most- uh, Most of the games that stand the test of time are on PC. Okay? This ain't a- Oh, console had all the good games and PC had all the shit. No. PC had a fuck ton of good games. There are the games that literally defined what the gaming industry was. That's on you, your shitty childhood. That's not on you having a PC or a console. Yeah, playing, like, simple Flash games or whatever, just games on Newgrounds, that, that's your fault for, I guess, going and playing those games instead of playing something else. Exactly, yeah. You had you had options. You had choices. It was on you to play stuff like Dragon Fable and Adventure Quest and stuff like that. That's on you. And, like, there's a ton of PC games that were cheap that you could have gotten, like... He could have gotten the Half-Lives. Yeah. Like, this... Especially when he was Wasn't... younger, he could have gotten the Half Lives in in the box set, not not the orange box, but there was a yeah. a box set for Half. Actually, I think I have it. Wasn't uh, good old Almost games perfect. around back then? Did such say he was going AFK? Uh. Anyways, I'm I pretty sure good know. old games uh was around back then, Gog, and that's like. You know you could get stuff like Warcraft 2 on there. And just, like, tons of PC games. I think the, um... I think most of the Ultima games are on there. Um... Of course, there's Steam, which has a shit ton of games on its own. So, why Skyrim in particular? He could, uh... He could have played Adventure Quest or RuneScape. Yeah, there's just... It's weird to say, oh, I didn't have a console, so I didn't have access to good games, or whatever it was he said. Yeah, that's that's weird. I don't know where I put it, um, but I had a... Because I saw it in a, um, in a Goodwill. 
So we were just going through a Goodwill, and they had a, uh, a, a Goodwill every now and then will have, like, PC games that people are getting rid of, old old PC games. You can find uh, that in a lot of thrift shops. There's a place in a town yeah. um, I lived in um, where it wasn't, it wasn't Goodwill or Value Village or anything like that. It was just, like, this local thrift shop where people would donate whatever stuff they had they didn't need anymore. I found a bunch of stuff in there. There was GameCube games. There was fucking... PC games. I think I got Enter the Matrix in there, and I never got around to playing it. I got Age of Empires 1 or 2 in there. And there are some other games. I don't remember them all, but point is, I got yeah. some good shit in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and maybe some I had, I had, um, when I went in there one time, they had an original box copy of the, the Half-Life trilogy. Oh, and there nice. it was. It was Half Life, there... Opposing Force, and Blue Shift all in yes, one box. Yes, I know the box you're talking about. There's a local computer store in the same town that just had a box, that box in there randomly. It's yes. just like here we are in fucking what? What year was that? It was like 2008, 2009, and they had the original Half Life in the two expansions in a fucking huge ass box. I legitimately want to get uh, a copy of that at some point, like the physical big box of Half-Life 1 uh, Opposing Force and Blue Shift. Yeah, I, ha I have it. Um, I, I have that box here somewhere. I'm looking at my shelf, at my bookshelf over there. And it's funny, I've got like the, the 50 notebooks, stuff like that, from all like unreleased stories I've written and everything. D&D um, &D books, everything. Uh, Warhammer Fantasy and 40k books. A uh, bunch of old stuff like I could see Universe at War, the old Grand Theft Auto 4 box set. Um, there's the original Alien trilogy. There's Band of Brothers, the the big collector's edition 10 Band of Brothers. The, the point we're making here is um, there were a lot of fucking options for PC games. So to yeah. say, oh, I didn't have a console, so I couldn't really experience good games is just fucking weird. Yeah, no, I, I agree, King Aru, but that's just kind of what they advertised it as because this was before Half-Life 2 was released. This was The box was made before Half-Life 2 was released. So they had Half-Life, uh, Opposing Force, and Blue Shift all in one box. They called it the Half-Life Trilogy box. Also, hey, Skibbity Bibbity, good to see you. Yeah, how uh, are you we're doing, doing, man? We're doing pretty good today. Uh, Overlord, uh, Ace of Thorn tried to copyright strike the... Morrowind in New Vegas stream, so part one of our coverage on him. And he tried to copyright strike the Red Raptor rights video because of a meme that was on screen for less than a minute. Uh, an image meme, mind you. And those were the two. He tried the DMCA, and they both fucking failed. Because, guess what, Acer Tard? They're fucking fair use. Fucking get yeah. over it, you little bitch. So yeah, um, his DMCA's against me failed. I'm doing good, guys. How's this video so far? We are... We haven't... We're 40 seconds in, and we already had to talk about... Uh, uh, he was talking about his his childhood, which I question aspects of his childhood. Which, Jesus Christ, I didn't yeah, he, do that. He, he and, then, and then he talks about how he didn't have any good games, no games that really captured him, because he didn't have a console when he was younger. He only had a PC. And it's like, th that's on you. That's your fault. Yeah, not the not the not having a console thing. I understand, but you didn't need a console to have really good, captivating games. Because holy fucking shit. Anyways, uh, I guess I I will say Skibbity. Uh, would we be okay if Skibbity jumped in? Because hey, if he wants to, he can hop in here. Yeah, Skibbity, if you want to hop on, uh, you're welcome to. He's getting ready to sue you for six hundred billion for saying that. <laughs> yeah, he he literally said there were no good games on PC, and his example, and he used the examples he did play, which were just which... random flash games, fucking kitten killer and this dragon thing. Yeah, like I'm sorry that you're too stupid to actually look up like bigger games and just not play shit on Newgrounds or whatever. Not shit talking Newgrounds, by the way, but you know. You literally could have gotten the original Half Life back then for like five bucks. Yeah. These again, these are these are things like it's it's not not like oh you could have gotten it if you had a job or anything like that. It's like no no you could have gotten that on an allowance. 
I can hop on in five, like, the, uh, if that's cool. Yeah, of course, man. Um, I'll yep. invite you to the, uh, to the group quickly. And then you can hop in the call whenever you're ready. There we go. Uh, it's ringing him immediately for some reason. I don't know why. That's a little bit annoying. Yeah, sorry, Skibbity. It immediately started trying to ring you. But uh, yeah. you don't have to pick it up now. You can pick it up whenever you're ready. Yep, just hop in whenever you're ready. Acritosis. I didn't have a console as a kid and dominated the world in Civilization Five. Yeah, again, like, yeah. It, it's just crazy to me to say, oh, hey, um, there were no good PC games or whatever it was he alluded to there. Like, before yeah. Skyrim. Like, what the fuck? That's just insanity. I was going to say, considering the games I grew up with, like Number Crunchers and stuff like that. like, Or is it Number Munchers? It was one of the two. That was the, that was the thing in, in our school. Um, old CRT monitor computers and everything like that. And the, one of the things you could get is if you were good enough, um, if, you, if you were good, like you're, you got your homework done and everything like that, you could get time on the uh, class computers. And they would have stuff like uh, Number Munchers or Crunchers. It's one of the two. Uh, stuff like that. Those are the games I grew up with. Oh, and Math Blaster! Yes! Oh, I'm in a starship and you have to shoot the correct answer to the math questions to continue continue going on. And it's not maths! No! You you silly English, you Englishman and you're, you're adding an S to it. It's not maths. It's math. <laughs> yeah, it's always bugged me when people say math is a plural. Well, I can understand the logic behind it because you're including all of them: calculus, uh, trigonometry, but algebra. It's still just all of math. Them has maths. Yeah. So it's a different uh, types of math. Uh, you missed my super chat. We were talking. Uh, I'll grab that now. A uh, hundred check crowns from Carol Svoboda. Thank you. Half Life, Starcraft, Deus Ex, Transport Tycoon, Counter Strike, Half Life Two, Fallout One and Two, Age of Empires. Heroes 3, Stronghold, and Crusader, Portal, Team Fortress 2, Left 4 Dead, and Swap 4, and many, many more. Consoles are no good. I won't say consoles are no good, but, like, there's a lot of PC games. And to pretend otherwise is insanity. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Threadnought. Maths, because it's short for mathematics, which is multiple mathematical disciplines, a.k.a. maths. Yeah, mm. that's what I was saying. It's the same thing. I understand the logic behind it, but just call it math. Yeah. Anyways. No aiming could offer until I played it. It was a world with an undeniable and unique atmosphere that I also, find Also, I'd more like to point out, um, I... he, he has noted that this is his first game like this. So this is the first Elder Scrolls game he'd ever played, too. Right. So, yeah, so Skyrim is his first. Call it math? Never. Yes. <laughs> Call it math. Thing than Todd. Oh. God, I. The screen's kind of okay there. Um. All right, I'm backtracking us a bit. Yeah. Thank you. All right, here we go. I had no idea what gaming could offer until I played it. It was a world with an undeniable and unique atmosphere that I find more enveloping than Todd's beautiful blue eyes. Skyrim. Mm. More mm. an undeniable atmosphere and totally unique. It's not unique though. It yeah. is definitely it is definitely not unique. Morrowind um, has a unique atmosphere. It's an alien landscape with mushroom trees and like canyons burnt into the landscape by lava flows. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it is, it is not unique. It, it's not something different or alien or unseen before. It doesn't have, like, weird Euclidean geometry or anything. No, it's just... Skyrim is it, as it, generic as you can get. Close to it. Yeah, it, it's pretty generic Viking, but not understanding anything else that makes the Viking Vikings. So, like, the, the, all those awful horned helmets in Skyrim as well annoy the shit out of me. 
Yes, I fucking hate it. Oh, why couldn't you just put the classic fucking helms in? Oh. Yeah, at least they didn't do... They got a lot of the buildings right, at least. Well, a lot of them, but there are a lot of really bad buildings, too. Hi, phone. <laughs> I don't know why... The, I hate it when it does that. It's like, I need to tell you there's an update. Well, I didn't ask you. Skyrim Shallow? Mechanically, yeah. There are no defined classes or real specialization. The quests suck, too. You become the master of every guild by essentially just walking in. Hey, I'm competent. Shit, really? Well, I, uh, I guess you're in charge then. We're all fucking useless. Skyrim doesn't really have- I mean, in fairness, that's not far off the mark. It, it definitely isn't. That is pretty damn close. Yeah. A uh, membership mem uh, message from Rage vs. ML. Thank you. How's it going, Stag Crew? Skyrim is my first Elder Scrolls, and I rate it a 3 out of 10, so I don't understand how people think it's a good game. People well, think it's he's... a good game because they don't think deeply about it. It's just like, hey, yeah. here's a funny fantasy world. I'm going to fuck around in it. Yeah, same. It's It was my first game, as, or my first Elder Scrolls as well, and yeah, still don't like it. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. And welcome, Skibbity Bibbity. Hello, yes, everyone. welcome. Hello. I am not excited for this. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Is this the cobbler guy? Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. No. <laughs> oh, no. You should have warned, <laughs> warned me. You should have warned me. Wow, that's the fastest instant regret we've ever had. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm out. I'm dipping. <laughs> God, I've watched two of this guy's videos and that he's, he's awful. But I'm oh, excited no. for this. Thank you yeah, guys for having I me on. As I said last stream, we were, we were, we were doing stag because he got brought up in Rainbow Hawk's video. Yeah. Uh, have, here, yeah. have my good friend Peach Cobbler. Take it away. And I was like, oh, no. Every time I've ever seen anything from Peach Cobbler, it's been shit. So and I will fully admit that there is a thing called um, observation bias. So I have only gotten shit takes from him. He could have really good videos, but I have never seen one yet. <laughs> yeah. When, yeah. No. Everything I've seen from his, yeah, you're right, just shit vids. Yeah. <laughs> I will agree. I think Elder Scrolls Online is the best, uh, the best, um, Elder Scrolls. Ooh, uh, yeah. Probably got honest. Yeah. And, and that's uh, funny because I, I hated the initial launch of ESO. And, um, when we were going back in with MO Grinder to review the new free to play, or well, buy to play version, but there is a difference between free to play and buy to play. Buy to play means you buy, you pay once, and then you never have to pay again to play it. Free to play means you don't pay ever. There is a difference. Um, but yeah, so we went in for its buy to play launch, and oh, it was it was actually really fucking good. Like holy shit! Like there were things we were talking about how like certain models weren't weren't accurate, or why why are all the ends the exact same design? Every single end in the game in each territory is the exact same design. Why is this so dumb? And then, like, every single cave is, like, hand-modeled. It's like, okay, this is weird. Yeah. It's, but, uh, yeah, it, it's really good. It's got a lot of heart, and that's why it's, like, a lot of people stick to ESO's original launch, like, the, that feeling where everyone's like, oh, it's just a cash grab, or it's, or it's you know, pretty, pretty yeah. rough, you know? But if you actually go back and play or if you go play it now, honestly, it's one of the most enjoyable like MMO experiences I've had in a long time. Yeah. And the and the fact that they're actually making the lore uh like <laughs> not insanely sporadic is nice. Yeah, there's an actual consistent through tone. And I know uh set you all like what I say then ESO is non-canon. I know it's non-canon. I know. But the, but Bethesda for, to be fair to Bethesda, their previous game is not canon. They'll make up whatever <laughs> they fucking want. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Exactly. It's hard to have it's hard to have canon when it's part of your company procedure that canon doesn't matter and you're just going to fucking trample all over it at the drop of a hat because you want to write a funny quest about a ghoul locked in a fridge or fucking whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's... yeah, I, I, I honestly legitimately think ESO is a, a fantastic game. I would love if they did a little bit more of a combat overhaul because I do enjoy the idea of weaving in that game. 
But I would love if there was more emphasis on that and you had more abilities. Instead of a hot bar of five abilities and an ultimate, get just just make it a true MMO. Make it ten abilities. Like, And I know you could switch between weapons, and yes, you're supposed to switch between weapons to set up combos and everything like that, which you should absolutely do if you want to maximize DPS or whatever you're doing. DPS, healing, or tanking. You want to switch between weapons. But still, I... I would love if there was more ability so you could weave in more different uh, skills and everything. No, no, not not weaving, weave, <laughs> weave the V. <laughs> <laughs> I I ain't uh, gonna go Kawaii Desu. Oh God! Was, actually, Des. By the way, Desu is wrong. So. This, the only reason I know this is because I watch a channel called Dogen, and he talks about um, pronunciation and everything in Japanese. And you can always tell a weeb or an otaku who doesn't know what they're talking about because they'll say desu. When in Japanese, if you have a hard sound, you don't follow it up with a soft sound. So it's just des. So it's oh. just kawaii des. Hmm. That's but, cool. I highly recommend watching Dogen. He is fantastic. He uh, he does all kinds of comedy skits, stuff like that. When like he'll do an entire skit in Japanese on going to pay his taxes, and he shows up because he's a big YouTuber, and that's how he makes his living. He he teaches people uh, Japanese phonetics and language and everything, but he also teaches it. So he also makes his money off of YouTube and Patreon. So he has to go pay his taxes specifically for YouTube and Patreon. So he'll show up at the tax office, and then. He'll look around and be like, "Uh oh," <laughs> and then he starts playing the Zelda um, Mystic Forest music where he's stuck. So it's just going do 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 as he's walking around the building because he can't figure out where the hell he has to go. Because in Japan, it's very specific. No, you can't show up here for a non-traditional income tax. You need to go to the non-traditional income tax on the internet. And it's like, oh. God. Highly recommend his videos, though. Dogen is a fantastic uh, content creator. Anyways, we good to continue? Yeah, yeah. There isn't much going on mechanically or story-wise, and I just don't care. What Skyrim has is an open world that hasn't been replicated. That's the reason it has been and will be released again and again and again and again until we're both dead. Oh, hang on a second. That's the reason why? Hold up. Because I, I, I need to go back. Because it has a world that is open. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it has a very generic world. That's why it'll be released again and again. No, that's just greed. I mean, Oblivion had a pretty generic fantasy world too, and it didn't get really... You know what Bethesda yeah. did for Oblivion's 10th anniversary? Fucking nothing. You remember that? You remember that um, thing, right? That That meme? Of them like holding their child, it's like, ah, oh, yes, my favorite child. Oh, and yeah, it's like Skyrim's <laughs> fifth anniversary or whatever, and then it goes down to like Oblivion's anniversary. Oblivion and it's, is the it's drowning. drowning, yeah. Oblivion yeah. is a drowning, and then they one. show Morrowind, and, and it's, it's a skeleton, dead. yeah, it's yes. a skeleton at the bottom of the water. Yeah, I don't, I honestly, it's just it's, it's modders, it's the only reason Skyrim's still really around, it's not yeah. the world. Yeah. You know, of course, Oblivion does have modders and everything, but, like, I, I don't know. I mean, Bethesda literally put mods into the official release of Skyrim at this point, so you gotta, you, you, yeah. it's definitely not the world. This guy's, this guy's insane. Um, but, yeah, what is your favorite ESO expansion? Honestly, I liked, uh, I like Dark Brotherhood. I, I really, really liked the introduction of Dark Brotherhood and everything. If we're talking like full on like chapter, then Elsewhere was really, really fucking good. Yeah. Though, the 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 Dragon, what was it, the Dragon Hunter DLC or whatever that was like a tie-in after Elsewhere to talk about events that would happen later, that was not so good. There was a lot of stupid in that storyline, and I was just like, oh man, Sai Sahan deserved way better than that. Because there's a lot of dumb in that storyline. There is a lot of dumb.
Okay, here's... <laughs> you don't have to watch it now, but here's that uh, that syrup thing I was talking about with the guys. Like, how oh. do you feel 10 seconds after recording that TikTok? <laughs> yeah. It, it's fucking great. Yeah, I've okay. never understood those where it's like, oh, you made a huge mess for a two-second joke, and now you have to spend, like, 20 minutes cleaning it up. Good job. Which, yeah. which hey, if you're, if that's what you're used to, if you're down for that, then, you know, more power to you. If you're like, yeah, no, I know it's going to be a big mess, but, hey, if it works, if it, the joke lands, the joke lands. It's like, okay, well, you know, I, I, I appreciate the grind. Yeah. Well, it definitely does not here. <laughs> yeah, that did not land here. Ugh. Especially in the... Yeah, both in this cobbler video and in the fucking original thing that I just did, the fucking syrup. But yeah, no, that's not funny at all. That's pure fucking cringe. Uh, uh, to, to your super chat from Mr. Pyro Crab, thank you very much. Thank but you. No message. Yeah, if you want to add a message, just type it in. Oh, damn it, my super chat didn't go through. Mr. Pyro Crab, just type your message uh, in chat and we'll read it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we all know the only reason Bethesda, uh, people play Bethesda games is because of CBBE and armor conversions for it. Yeah. A people, lot of people like their... use it, that's for sure. Hmm? A lot of people use it, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I was going to say, Daggerfall had its 25th anniversary last year. Oh. Yeah, someone yeah. in chat earlier said, I'm glad Bethesda doesn't touch Morrowind. I'd prefer it that way. And I do kind of agree, but it's like, man, you're not even talking about, like, the game that saved you. Yeah, what was crazy was ESO made it a big deal that, you know, return to Morrowind, return to Vardenfell. And it was so... God, I love that expansion, too. Jesus Christ, that set piece at the end was fucking great. I don't want to spoil or anything, too, because it actually genuinely did have a very good storyline. Oh. Wait, this guy's called DJ Peach Cobbler, but his ap uh, avatar is a pie. What the fuck? Um, well, there is there is Cobbler Pie. Ah. Uh, 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 there are all kinds of designations. The same thing with, like, is soup a cereal? Uh, is, uh, you know, is it an open face sandwich? Or is it a, you know, stuff like that. Is a hot dog an open face sandwich? Hmm. Anyways... Skyrim doesn't really have much going on mechanically or story-wise, and I just don't care. What Skyrim has is an open world that hasn't been replicated. That's the reason it has An open world that hasn't been replicated. Okay, so yeah, he's legitimately talking about the open world that hasn't been replicated. But it has, Peach Cobbler, it has... It, it has been replicated. In fact... Uh, again, people will naturally jump to the first conclusion, which are three. Yeah. Not only did it do the Viking fantasy thing, but it did it better. And I, I'm only talking about Skellige and stuff like that. Obviously, you know, medieval European fantasy is what the main continent is. Yeah. But yeah, even the small section of Skellige does the Nordic, like the Viking, the Nordic feel of everything so much better and it even gives you variety to, like, the actual landscape, the characters. Yeah. Uh, it's ugh, it's so disappointing. And, and like, yeah, I get, like, Witcher 3 came out, like, years later. But, like, at the same time, what, when did this video come out? Well, he already said, uh, he said Skyrim was released 10 years ago in this video. Oh, uh, he, he didn't say 10 years ago. Um, He said something to the effect of, it's been less than a decade. Oh, less than a decade. But, yeah, so he's still giving it many years after yeah, and I I feel like it, you know it probably this probably came out after The Witcher Three and and I mean I, I ah it's so frustrating. It's the reason it has been stop up, playing. Straight up admit. Okay, stop playing. What are you talking about? I opened it in a new tab to see when it was uh, uploaded. Ah, fair. Gotcha. Sorry. All good. All good. August twenty fifth, twenty twenty. So yeah, so he's just straight up uh, omitting The Witcher Three. Like not bringing any. I mean, I mean, unless it comes up later. But he's already saying it can't, hasn't been. Like, of course, Skyrim hasn't been redone by someone else. It's fucking Skyrim. Yeah. Like, so, like, so many other people have done the Viking theme so much better. 
I know the yeah, video isn't good. on screen, Tony Donning. I was I had opened it in a new tab to see when it was uploaded. Yeah, he he wanted to get when the original video was uploaded. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, and there's also plenty of games that had open worlds. I saw people in chat mentioning Gothic. Uh, obviously, there's Morrowind and Oblivion, which again, Morrowind is a far more unique world than either uh, Oblivion or Skyrim. Yeah. Um, Gothic mentioned... especially is a big deal. Like, yeah, uh, it has the controls are clunky as all fuck, but it actually took it made things incredibly realistic and like thought out how people would actually act in the situation with which they were in. Yeah, it, it's really, really fucking good. Like the whole there's an entire group of people that are the mages, massive air quotes. Um, they do have magic and everything like that, but they. They believe in something called the speaker. And the way you can really commune with the speaker is to take a lot of uh, cannabis. So lots and lots of weed. And they fully admit, like, hey, there are people that don't actually believe in the same religion as we do, but they're just joined for the weed. And that's fine. We, <laughs> we, 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 we will take in all comers. Like, we will preach to them. And if they don't even hear a word of it, but they're still here helping around the camp just for their their weed did i say speaker yeah i meant sleeper damn it yeah if everyone says sleeper sleeper not speaker yeah i meant sleeper my apologies yeah they're saying hey even if they don't hear a word of what we preach or what we say they're still here helping around the camp that's fine with us yeah and also uh people mentioned a chat valheim like that's a crafting game i think the world is like procedurally generated but it's still uh open world on very nordic feeling uh, Death's Fault Infidel in chat, Kingdom Come Deliverance is pretty open once you get through the intro. Like, there's plenty of open world games out there. I don't, like, what is it about Skyrim in particular that makes it so special? Because I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Yeah, if we're going not with the Nordic and Viking feeling, yeah, there's so many other open world RPGs. Like you said, Kingdom Come Deliverance is a fantastic choice if you actually want a game that has depth to every single section you know you literally have to learn to read if you want to learn other you know other parts of the game like alchemy and all that and they, they treat sword making the way it was why swords were rare and expensive it took a lot of effort to make a sword and they go through that in depth in kingdom come deliverance of how much ceremony and ritual that people put into it because this is a very very valuable like a sword to a normal peasant, a sword could pay for your entire life's wages and you would live in luxury for the rest of your life for the same price of getting a single sword. Yeah, like, but, it is hard to overstate that. But in Skyrim, you know, just go go take some raw iron, some leather, and slap it together. You're good. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love this name. Five dollars super chat from Flannel McManel. Thank yeah, that is much. an amazing fucking name. And uh, thank you. Love it. Can't watch live, but have fun throwing this expired peach cobbler in the garbage. Also, you should check out his video on Annihilation. It's cringe. Now, when you say oh, Annihilation, no. do you mean like the Natalie Portman movie? I don't I'm, know. Oh, Jesus Christ! Now I gotta look it up because if he, everyone always has a pretentious fucking view for that movie. <laughs> That that's the boot. That's the movie with like the mutated bear that like battery has a low. Yeah. Battery low. Yeah. It's... Well, I, I, you know, maybe he's talking about Mortal Kombat Annihilation, which you know. Yeah, Wubba Fett, it goes Mortal Kombat. LOL. Yeah, <laughs> so did Sir Sir Gondo, exactly. Charging talking about Mortal Kombat. Okay. That could be interesting. No, it's it's uh charging it's battery. The space color bear movie annihilation the best movie you haven't seen no oh. I i've heard a lot of bad things about that movie hi battery it's chan no it's headset waifu get it right <laughs> no it's not battery chan quaitis chakun <laughs> it's headset waifu it's the kai me <laughs> <laughs> And hello there. <laughs> hey, welcome in to go. Good time. Hello. I have no idea what that was response to, but hey, sorry guys, I, I was late. I uh yeah, I had a surprise thing I had to do at one. So oh, Yeah, that's happens. Fine. Um 
my headset battery was dying, so chat started going off calling it uh, Battery Chan. But that's not the name, it's Headset Waifu. Get it right. <laughs> so charging was not complete, you said? Uh, no, it's a battery charging right now. Battery charging. Uh, to an extent, uh, so Crestless King says, to be fair, what Such is talking about is fancy swords for nobles. Peasants could afford bladed weapons, but theirs were the most basic bitch, low-quality iron and steel garbage to your daggers. Not so much. Uh, it wasn't so much the dagger, but you have a knife. You have a workman's knife. That was kind of your your lot as a peasant, what you would use to defend yourself as well. It's why when the, the Knife Maker's Guild fought against the, the, swords, the Swordsman Guild, the Blacksmithing Guild, in uh, Germany, they made the Kriegsmesser, which was literally just a big knife. It was literally a sword made in the same style as a knife. And it's... Uh, God, there's so many fascinating things. But also in Germany, once that had... By the time that had happened and sword making had become more of a mainstream idea, um, it was actually illegal not to have a sword. Which is also where the Knife Makers Guild came in and said, hey, we can make a lot of money here on this whole, like, you know, legal requirement for all German citizens to be armed with a sword if they leave their house. Yeah, totally. We'll do this. Seems like it'd be a great uh, series uh, also in Germany. <laughs> Yeah, also in Germany. <laughs> it could be followed by a lot of things. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I'm going to mute audio for just a second. Um, I'll let you know when it's unmuted again. All right. All is good. All is very, very good. I was having uh, sound issues with my microphone last time I streamed. Do I sound okay? My volume sound okay? Yeah, yeah it sounds you sound good to me. Yep, you're all good. Okay, cool. Um, Watch Together's not coming up. Has there been a new link, or...? No. Um, it should be the one that's in chat there. Oh, you know what? I think I posted it in the other chat. Oh, okay. Yeah, the one I clicked on here is not working, so... Yeah, okay. Um, Such, can you grab that? Uh, I think it's going to do the whole big link, but we'll try... Yeah, but it's the link that's uh, in our other group chat. There. Okay, try try that. that one first. Wait, then how did Skibs join the watch together? Uh, it's a hacker. I'm, magic. Yeah. Big brain moves. <laughs> Alright, well that's happening. Let's go and get these super chats that we missed. So there's an invalid code. Uh oh. Uh, bro. Um well while you work on getting him the code, I'll do these super chats real quick. Yeah, so um good. twenty check crowns from Carolsville Boda, thank you very much. Indigo is a traitor to EFAP. You will be reported. <laughs> <laughs> no, Five dollar super chat. Oh, good. No traitoring here. It's uh, there's no exclusivity thing. No, I just uh, usually Mo just reaches out, reaches out to me directly when uh, he has an opening, and um, I good thing he didn't because I had to turn him down because I have not finished Arcane for for uh, to be able to comment on it yet. So probably wouldn't uh. have much to say. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't yeah. watched it yet myself. I've heard nothing but good things about it, though. Yeah, I'm still... Uh, I'm liking it so far. Uh, I, I can't comment on the story yet. I don't know how it ends, but the app, the art direction is absolutely fantastic. I love the art direction. It looks like no other uh, uh, th CGI animation I've seen, so I'm really... Hats off to them for coming up with a really an original and interesting art style. Yep. Um, five dollar super chat from Scoopmeister. Thank you very much. Warhammer Fantasy has a nice twist on Nords. Dive into the lore and you learn they got more besides being chaos worshippers. For example, exploring and trade. Yes, this is one of the reasons I like Warhammer Fantasy. Why I like Warhammer Fantasy over Warhammer Forty K. It's not as grim dark. So even though the Nords, or in this case the Norse who come from Norska and everything like that, um, even though they are all chaos worshippers, that's their religion. That's their pantheon. It's treated in much more the same way as what what would... It's treated much more in the way that Chaos is supposed to be represented. So, like, Zinch, he's not just the schemer, the manipulator, and everything like that. He's the one that brings hope, because there's hope to change your fate in life. Your, your fate, your destiny is not set in stone. You can choose to change what you have in life. If you want to be a farmer, you can be a farmer. But you could be so much more if you so choose to. That's part of being Zeech. Um, Corn isn't just about bloodshed and murder. He's he's not like yeah you know 
he, he's not just about the killing and everything like that. That's a big part of it. But he won't lie to you. He won't stab you in the back. He won't scheme or manipulate you. If he gives, if a corn worshiper gives their word, you can hold them to their word because they will not break that word. That is dishonorable. And corn cannot stand someone being dishonorable. It's all about martial prowess and honor for corn. It's stuff like that. And they, they delve more into that in Warhammer Fantasy. That's why I liked Warhammer Fantasy so much more. I personally like Korn's first album. It's probably the best one they did. Wow. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I personally like their flakes, you know, that the milk just goes so well with. Yeah. Kree, you want to check what I posted in the uh, group? Yeah. Um, I'm fine with inviting him on if you guys are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He said, yeah, he said he wanted to join. So let me. Yeah. I'm not, not getting any luck with this watch together. I've tried the new link and I see the, the title of the video, but it's at zero, zero and, and buffering. Oh, that's I weird. What, what I'm oh, doing. There, let's see. Let's see if I move back. I'll move back slightly and see if it updates for you. Yeah. The black screen for me, but did it move to 117? Nope. Okay, there's something um, I actually to play. don't know how to bring people in here, so I can't um, do it. Can you get I him see... the me can you get him the message me pagan? Yes. I, I see I see everybody in the in here. I just don't see the video. Wait, hold on. Maybe we can play I'll, the Yeah, I'll, I'll push play real quick and see if it if it kicks it for you. Alright. What sky oh, that has worked. is an... nice. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so I guess the, just to play it re, re kicks it up for me. Cool. Uh, 50 check crowns from Carol's vote Voda. Thank you. Thank nice you. try, heretic. You will be purged for this blasphemy. For the Emperor, Battle Brother, Space Marines, Cosmonaut Sailors, purge the heretics, charge! Oh man, are you guys excited for Spice Marines too? I'm really excited about that. I actually really I am, like original. I am up and down on it because I don't like the way the Tyranids are, were depicted in that. Oh, okay. Why, why the hell are the Tyranids backing away from anything? They, the Tyranids don't have fear or doubt or anything. It's just so... I don't like that, and I don't like that the, the Tyranid Prime just stood there like, yeah, I'm a big, bad, scary monster, Rah! and just let himself get killed. Can, any, can mm -hmm. anybody hear me? Yep. Yes, we hear you. That's the first time I've had to resize the uh, Discord icons because we've had so many people on the call. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I am looking forward to it because I do like Captain Titus. I really, really do. I really wanted to see what happened to him after the first game. So I'm excited in that regard. I'm just very worried that the way we're being introduced to him as a Primaris is pretty lame. And the Tyranids aren't acting like the Tyranids. And what we've seen in the trailer is if you if you literally have that many crones and gargoyles flying around in the sky, your world is lost. It's over. Yeah, I gotcha. Well, I'm I'm a I'm a fake Warhammer nerd, so I I just I just want to be a Spice Marine. That's what I want to do. No, that's totally fine. And the original Warhammer Forty Thousand Space Marine was a fantastic game. It actually got what being a Space Marine was like really, really well. And they really did the uh, uh should I forget the, what they're called the um the guns right because they're they're not Bolt they're not yep. bullets. Yeah, the bolters. They're like ex mini rockets. So it really yep. felt like you were just going boom, 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 boom. Really felt right. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of a fake Warhammer nerd. I've played tons of Warhammer games, but I've not actually played the the tabletop. I wanted to get into it when I was 14, but I uh, do they still have Games Workshop stores anymore? They used to. They they do, but they're mostly in England. Okay, no, I, I went to I went to one in uh, my mall. Uh, mall I was at in Washington State, and um, the guy was super cool. He showed me all around. I'm like, this seems awesome. Then I found out that. Everything was unpainted. You have to glue, uh, assemble, paint everything. And oh my God, I was looking at potentially like I was a teenager. So like 40 bucks was like a major investment for me. And that would get me like a set. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, I don't know how Gadget does it, man. The way he talks about it and how much it costs. I'm like, why do you even do this? Like, I yeah. can't imagine paying like, well, what did he say? Like $4,000 a month. Yeah, on these figures right. and stuff, and I'm like, why? why? Yeah, That's they like... are ludicrously expensive. Does he like... use all of them? Uh, probably, 
probably not, honestly. Uh, you would have them as different variations for your set list when you're going into battle. Uh, all right. Different people enjoy different things. All right. I know I've already spent over a grand on 40k and uh, probably more than that on fantasy, but that's not per Disclaimer. month. Oh. Skyrim is the only. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. oh, Ragnar joined the uh, group. Yeah, that's what auto started. All right. Sorry, people. Sorry. No, it happens. It's okay. It's not a big deal. So, yeah, it's no, okay. I, we'll just kick you. <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine paying four thousand dollars a month. Like I'm, I'm. Uh, that's actually why I was late. I was looking at a house. I'm looking at doing a mortgage, and holy shit, that's like double my mortgage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they are, they are expensive. He can do it because his family is super rich. So. Oh yeah, he's one of those. Yeah. He can basically buy whatever he wants, and it doesn't affect them at all because they just have that much money. All yeah. right, uh, they don't have a name, but it's the Hal Nine Thousand uh, picture with five dollars super chat says, "It's so sad that Joe died of Ligma." <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell is Joe? Ligma ball. <laughs> uh, fail. Uh, anyways, we've already gone with this video. Yeah. Yes. I have no yep. context. I've not caught up, but uh, I'll just I'll just be in for the ride. <laughs> well, we're a minute well, yeah, twenty you, seconds you missed... in. He said um, he only had access to flash games because he didn't have a console. Even though I mean, the entire computer. PC market exists. Yeah. How could you? How could you only have access to flash games? That's the most nonsensical sentence. sentence he I've also ever said heard. when he also said he was twenty three when he made this video, and when he was, how could he feel nostalgia for Skyrim when he less than a decade. When it's less than a decade uh, ago, and he said, video, "I'm only 23," and I'm like, "Uh." I'm nostalgic for vacations I took a month ago. Nostalgia doesn't have any time limit. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I think nostalgia though is more powerful when it's something you remember back a long time ago. When it's that 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 power of everything, the whimsy and everything behind it. I just find it weird that he's talking about having nostalgia for Skyrim. And I was talking about checks and getting checks quests in the box when he was a kid. I'm like, when you were a kid, I don't think they did that anymore. When I was a kid, they did it, but then they stopped. Yeah, um, I, and I also think that nostalgia has a much shorter um, runway when you're younger. So what you played when you're 15 and now you're 20 can be can be heavily nostalgic versus what you played when you were 20 versus when you're like 35. So basically meaning like when you're younger, time, time moves, uh, slower. So it, it gives oh, the yeah, artificial, uh, artificial apparency that more time has gone by. Therefore, nostalgia kicks in quicker, I'd say. Yeah, I can no, see that then. He spoke the truth. Yeah, I, I can, I can see that. Cause yeah, it is funny to feel like how I just felt like I always had more time when I was yeah. younger. Like everything felt like, oh man, we played, we played, it felt like it was days of, and you just get now and it feels like, what is it? Oh, it's already been a week. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And just like games. I mean, uh, um, when I was in my mid twenties, uh, I would buy a game from GameStop, beat it the next week, turn it in, buy a brand another brand new game. Like I'd be like basically beating a triple A game every week. Now I'm well, like, uh, I'm like three years behind on many games. <laughs> yeah. So I also yeah. deal with video games far differently now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, five dollars more. Five dollars super chat for pieces never an option. Thank you very much. Thank you. I got my gaming PC commissioned. Is having a superiority complex required? No, that comes no. naturally. Yeah, but it does kind of like oh man, wait, if you get it done right and it just looks. Trust me, when you see a properly done, high end gaming PC, you're just like, damn, that just looks good. And it just kind of gives you that little bit of a oh, and it's mine. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I'm unstoppable with this. Yeah. <laughs> and thankfully, we're no longer in the era where where power in, in gaming and everything like that is literally exponentially growing. So you can keep that nice rig for a lot longer than back in the old days. Like when I was started as a PC gamer, you needed to upgrade basically every fucking year. Because yeah. there's like, oh, the, this new card, it's smaller and it has five times the power and capability. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, no, I, I, I love the example. Um, sometime look at this, uh, 
if you look at what was it 90 1992 i think it was um uh wolfenstein 3d top of the line yeah. uh first person shooter i think less than five years later unreal the original game 3d accelerated fully polygonal world you know reflective uh real-time reflections all kind of shit yeah like, and then a year after that half-life where like a voodoo graphics card was required yeah I'd, I'd even argue unreal was more graphically advanced than half-life but um yeah but yeah but i mean if half Life had the physics and stuff like that too but i know it's insane how how insanely fast uh technology was improving in the 90s like you could build you could build a Pentium, a top of the line Pentium one, and three years later you had to upgrade to Pentium three, and you know get a Voodoo card or whatever. And yeah, I know it's insane how fast I was moving. But now, like if you've got, you could play most games with a you know a nine eighty, uh, yeah. GTX nine eighty. So you're good. And it's just again, it's because we've the the big limiter we've run up against now is the heat wall, where we we cannot make things smaller. And thus, because we can't make things smaller, we can't optimize and make things more powerful because it's heat. We, we can't get rid of the heat. This, the, the amount of heat these things generate is ludicrous. Yeah, and then there's the, um, I think we're now finally seeing that, uh, well, what's that technological rule where things double over X number of years? What was that law? Do you remember? I don't remember. I keep wanting to say Poe's law, and it's like, that's not it. But my mind is immediately jumping to Poe and Murphy and everything. It's like, it's not that. But yeah, I do know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's one of those um, where basically the idea is X, every X number of years, technology doubles. And for a while, that was true. And in fact, I'd probably say in the 1990s, it was far beyond that. But yep. um, now it's actually we're... we're uh, Moore's Law I, is what chats. Moore's Law, yeah. And uh, there's actually an issue. This is kind of insane. We're getting so small with our circuits and our processors and stuff where... Um, the very the very workings of the physical universe are kind of getting in our way. We're like, exactly. uh, uh, I, I forget that uh, I want to say electrons probably chat probably correct me, but basically the 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 small energy units that are moving through the processor are sometimes uh, squeezing through walls and stuff. Like there's actually issues with we're getting so small that on like an atomic or or a subatomic level things are not working properly because our our pathways are too small. <laughs> which is insane makes you wonder how uh what their actual upper limit of computing is you know yeah because yeah. because the big thing is going to be uh, another big game changer will be once we get viable superconductors yeah that'll be the biggest game changer of them all and uh people kind of still some people still call it kind of a myth but when quantum computing and all those kind of things happen like uh I don't know if it's true, but I, I talked to an engineer years ago who talked about how um, binary is actually um, kind of limiter where we could actually have potentially instead of two states, four states. And we think about that, that'd be exponentially more powerful if we could actually uh, have four states rather than zero and one. We could have zero, one, two, three or something like that. Yeah. It's very, very, very difficult to pull off. But if that's the case, then that would probably, you'd have to have different, it, it's difficult because binary is super easy it's either on or off so if you to detect like lesser forms of the same power it'd be more difficult but it could potentially could potentially drastically increase processing power if that if actually uh pulled off yep well it's the same thing with like the ultimate end goal is the quantum calculator that's the that's the ultimate end goal where using quantum mechanics you use alternate realities to do the computing for you what the hell? <laughs> yeah, it, that that gets into ludicrously big brain science. That's the that's the stuff that that uh, Godzilla Zero Point was dealing with when one reality created a quantum calculator and and was able to calculate the literal apocalypse and everything. That's and, oh exactly. god! Well, Dude, I feel stupid hearing all this because I don't understand anything you're saying. It is crazy, and they explained it. They actually, they had a moment in there, and it was one of the things I wished Godzilla Zero Point did more. They actually explained it very, very well, where a, a guy, he, he held up a Rubik's Cube in front uh, for his daughter, and he held it in front of a, uh, a lamp, and he was showing the shadow on the wall, and he's like, this is what we could observe through, through our own quantum mechanics and, and everything. We could see this shadow on the wall, and we thought it was this state, and then he rotates it slightly. And it's still the same shadow, just turning. He says, this is another state. What we didn't realize, and then he turns the Rubik's Cube, and it makes an entirely new shape. He's like, 
is that this is also the same object. We had no idea because we are limited perspective. What the quantum, what this quantum computer and calculator allows us to do is to see it from all angles. So we can actually get the true shape and picture of the image. That's like, that's almost getting into flatlanders kind of stuff, you know, or we're like we're, we're limited to our current level of dimensions. And so we cannot perceive beyond them. Yeah. But, and it's, uh, it, it was a great speech it, again, because it was one of those speech that a layman can understand and yeah. he's explaining it because again, he's, he's explaining it to his daughter and his daughter's not a quantum physicist or anything. Right. He's explaining how it works. And it was such a great like breath of fresh air, but also Godzilla zero point was written by a guy who is a leader in quantum physics physics. So yeah. And he was explaining how Godzilla would work if it was explained through this lens. It's like, Oh God. I don't know what Godzilla has to do with it, but it sounds interesting. <laughs> well, it's because it was the, it was the particle. It was a special particle that they found through, through their um, usage of the quantum computer and everything. And this particle allows for dramatic evolutionary like changes and adaptions. It is a particle that has, I think it's like perfect density, but no weight or anything like that. And it's like, hmm. oh God, it, it, it is stronger than anything we have ever experienced, but completely malleable and adaptable. Interesting. I love the duality of yeah. this right now, of what we're talking about and what we're covering. <laughs> it's just so funny to me of like this is what we're talking about on stag and yeah. then we go back to the video and it's like uh, skyrim is the most unique atmosphere is... ever <laughs> <laughs> oh um, god let's grab these super chats five dollars from yep. the wayfarer thank you dj cow uh, pie saying that console gaming is superior to pc gaming it's like saying burial at sea is better than minerva's den what is minerva's den is that like Bioshock 2 DLC? Uh, Minerva's sure Den. Was it Minerva like It's the definitely God a Bioshock of... 2. Yeah. Uh, the joke is too deep for me. I'm sorry. It is for, it's Minerva's Den. It's for Bioshock 2. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, no. I actually haven't played that DLC for Bioshock 2, but I know anything associated with fucking Bioshock Infinite is garbage. I think Bioshock 2 gets a bad rap. The story was just basically a rerun of the first game, but um, I, I will admit that like they did improve a lot of the mechanics and stuff, and it was yeah. not even uh, tangentially related to uh, irrational games. So it was just like 2K and like one of their subsidiaries and like three other, other studios pulled together. And so I understand now it's not necessarily going to have the same creative spark as the original creators. So I think yeah. it's a bad rap. It, it, it was a bit weird that the prototype for the Big Daddies is better than the Big Daddies in every single regard. That that was a bit yeah. weird. Yeah, I'd say a big yeah. flaw in the game is I never really felt like a Big Daddy. I just felt yeah. like a dude. Yeah. I just felt like a dude wearing, literally wearing a diving suit. I didn't feel like I was a Big Daddy. Like, if I had actually been a lumbering thing and it was, like, difficult, like, maybe they made turning slow or whatever, but you actually felt like a tank. Like, you had tons of defense and health and everything. Yeah, so, like it. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, like, if if splicers ran up to you and they started attacking you, it would literally do nothing. You just hear them clanging off of you. That would be that would be interesting. That'd be ways to make you feel as ludicrously powerful as you should be. Yeah, like, what would be rad is if for whatever reason you're like prototype whatever, and uh, you could get in and out of your your uh, suit because it doesn't the, the effect doesn't quite so extreme when it's your normal. But yeah. a great example of that would be Titanfall you feel very different inside and outside of your Titan. Like yeah. you feel like the lumbering kind of thump, 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 thump. And you're, you're, you don't feel too slow, but you feel way more massive. Something like that. The, the contrast would really make, would really sell it, I think. To be honest, it's said in the lore that Delta is weaker than most big daddies. That, that it makes it worse. <laughs> but, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, but that makes it a lot. I mean, it might be health wise, but then he completely just annihilates anyone in his way. You can use plasma, you know, Delta can use plasmids and just fucking annihilates the later versions. Like, okay, if he has, what was it? If he has less health or, uh, yeah, if he can't take as much of a beating as a big daddy, but you can, yeah, you absolutely can. He can literally heal. You can heal up. You can, it, it kind of breaks the lore if that's true right there. Yeah. I, mean, I guess it shouldn't say breaks the lore, but that, that point that you bring up that it doesn't really fix anything it's a yeah. little just 
strange. And trust us, we're not saying that Bioshock Two is a bad game. No, it's. it's I not. love it. It's I, just one of those like it's just that one spot of like, yeah, but you didn't need to call him. You needed to call him like a prototype of the Mark II Big Daddy or something like that. Like make it like he's a new evolution. He's a new yeah thing off of the Big Daddy. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. If you, that'd be kind of cool if you were like very very super alpha, but more advanced version, and you had to like upgrade yourself and fix your bugs and stuff over time. That'd be kind of an interesting concept, right? Where Ooh, you had way more. Be- you had way more potential, but you were actually like a pretty, a pretty shitty early Bethesda uh, version of of what you could eventually become. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, like imagine if, if like you you can't use plasmids at all, yeah. and then you find out that one of the one of the scientists and engineers was working on, well, what if we introduce plasmids to the Big Daddy, and then you have to complete his work, and now it you unlock that as a new ability thing. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah, you have to upgrade yourself throughout the story. Ooh, that reminds me of, um, kind of reminds me of Metal Arms, honestly. Or even uh, like just straight up Metroid or something like that. New suits, things like that. Yeah. Upgrade your suit. Um, two dollar super chat from Reebok Shoes One Two Three. Thank you very much. Thank Keep you. Keep up the good work, bro. Will do. And there's another one in there somewhere. Um, a hundred check crowns from Carol Svoboda. Thank you. Moore's law is essentially fake. Investing in new silicon fabrication is super, super expensive. Also, companies like Intel are lying about transistor size since 2003. Right now, we've got EUV for FinFET. So, yeah, uh, Intel, its whole thing about what nanometer they actually use, because you have stuff like AMD and NVIDIA, which are investing in, uh, I think it's a uh, three nanometer technology. And Intel's like, oh, well, we have four nanometer technology, but their four nanometer, if you look through their own legal documentation and parlance, actually means six nanometer or something like that. Oh, weird. It's just like, ah. Uh, and they're, they're literally only doing it so they can, like, you know, confuse people. It, it was literally only done to confuse people. That's weird. I have no idea about that. Um, but I, I always took Moore's law as like a, it's not like a Newtonian law where, you know, this is an absolute fact of how the universe functions. It was more of a, uh, a general observation, I think. Yes. Just like how uh, I think it's Godwin's law or whatever. It's obviously not an, an absolute law of the universe, but it, it, it there's some truth to it. <laughs> it's the same thing with Murphy's law as well. It's, yeah, it's not exactly. an absolute law either. It's just, it's, it's truthisms. Where, yeah. you know, it, it just seems to happen that way. If something goes wrong, everything will go wrong. Yeah, isn't that like kind of the difference between maximum axiom? I think if I'm getting it right, axiom is like an absolute law that can never be broken. Whereas yeah. a maxim is like more of a, a general truth. Not always it, it, truth with, with uh, a certain level of exceptions, I think. Yeah. Might be getting that backwards, but something like that, yeah. Yeah, there Carol's all about to said it. Intel renamed their 10 nanometer processors to Intel 7 to troll people. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> hmm. That's weird. Tendencies versus certainties. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, there are some things that are 99% true or even 90% true that are helpful, but they're not exactly laws that are, you know, absolute. All right. Are we. Are we finally ready on some tangents are guaranteed to go back to the video? Yeah. All right. It hasn't been replicated. That's the reason it has been and will be released again and again and again. And again until we're both dead. Now that we're out of the 2010s, a decade stuffed to the brim with open world games, I think what? it's important that we look back at Skyrim with fresh eyes. When you take away... Wait, 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 wait. Now that we're out of the 2010s, a decade filled to the brim with open world games. But you just so, said that open world games haven't been done. What? Hold no, on. He, he, he's saying Skyrim is a unique open world, I guess, but he still hasn't explained how. Yeah. And I'm definitely not seeing it because I'm seeing generic fantasy land full of generic dungeons full of generic enemies and uh, obnoxious dragons that are probably the least interesting versions of dragons I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I agree. I guess let's back up slightly. Also, as someone who actually loves Skyrim with a passion, I can say that the mechanics of the unmodded game are pretty, well, uh, mediocre. So, yeah, there's that as well. Yeah. I don't God think, damn it. I, 
I think one of the things that Skyrim did do that nobody else had really done is dynamic, uh, dynamic dragon physics. Like we we see that in Dark Soul or uh, Demon Souls, and possibly Dark Souls. Actually, I don't remember what Dark Souls came out, but uh, they were pretty scripted, and they pretty much went in a line and a path, and weren't they couldn't pick up other creatures and fly around and they weren't as dynamic as Skyrim. Like we'd always wanted yeah. that sort of thing in a game, like a, a dragon that could pick up and fling something from the air. So that, that particular system, uh, I think held quite a bit of, uh, swaying power with Skyrim. Just, just the final fantasy fulfillment of a dragon that actually acted kind of like a dragon, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, Dark Souls came out a month before Skyrim. Yeah, but I mean, if it, there were dragons and that's demons, not, old, but they were pretty. Yeah, yeah but uh, they're pretty scripted. Like they they didn't yep. they didn't move around dynamically to you. They were kind of on a path. So I I can understand. There's definitely a difference between what they pulled off. They definitely looked yeah. awesome in Demon Souls, but they didn't act quite as dynamically in as in Skyrim. Yeah. yeah, but the the dragons picking things up definitely was not dynamic. That was 100% scripted. So, because yeah. it never did that outside of those scripted events, there was like three in total throughout the entire game. Oh, I thought that they could pick up whatever if they only I was do told it. That. That's what I was promised too. That's one of the reasons I got the game. No, but they know. can do, the, they can do the, the death munch animation where they grab people and bite them and whoa, 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 th fling them around like a, the T Rex in Jurassic Park and then throw them. Oh, okay. I was under the impression that they could do that whenever. You guys, but, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but unfortunately, I need to go now. I just oh. wanted to to be, to be with you on the stream for a little bit. Yeah, the first okay. time. Uh, well, I want to say we can do this another time. I want to say one comment before you go, and then I will ask you another question right afterwards. Um, Deus Voltifidel points out that Stag is perfectly split between the black and whites and the colors. Wow. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, as the thing I'm going to ask you, would you care to uh, let the people know who you are, where you come from, and what you're about? Ah, uh, well, I call myself on YouTube Ragnar Magadan Blasebron. I, in real life, I'm from Brazil, and I mostly do Skyrim content, though the videos are really long, and I do them mostly for for, for myself, because myself because I, I like to, um, uh, to, to post videos about my character's story, my, my walkthrough, my playthrough, my roleplay, and my head lore. I'm just trying oh. to search up the channel now so I can put the link in the uh, description and in chat. Thanks. Oh, yeah, thanks for uh, stopping by, even though it was for a short time and we were only really in tangents the entire time. Yeah, you didn't really get much of a chance to join in. Sorry about hey, that. Yeah, It's fine. He came in, got his five minutes of fame, and now he has to go. <laughs> 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 Maybe I'll have another chance in the future as well. Never know when you were gonna do another video about Skyrim. Yeah, yeah, we're open to having you on again. Uh, anyway, it was nice There's uh, a... being here. And well, I... yeah, there's a I'll link to your, your channel in chat. Oh, and he's gone. Yeah, and we'll get it in the description as well. So that'll. Yeah, I'll. Um... I'll have to edit that in after because it might fuck with chat if I open the editing. Yeah. Will that fuck with chat? Uh oh. Well, who knows? Let's not kind of tempt YouTube. To... It did. Oh well, good job. I I should know. I know better. I should know better. The moment when Kree says, "Well, will it?" He'll he'll start doing things. <laughs> he won't he won't stop for a second to actually ponder his question. He will immediately dive in. Hey, how do you think you find out the answer to questions? You try. That's how it works. <laughs> you logically think through the consequences first. No, you dive head first. Naturally. No, I am not steering into the oncoming lane of traffic. All right. <laughs> yes. It's the thing we talked about literally last stream of fucking, should I reach my hand into the garbage disposal? <laughs> Let me just do it real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Will this hurt? And then all of a sudden, the next thing we hear from the kitchen is Kree going, ah! I think Kree, that's what'd a... you do? I well, think... I needed to see if I would stick my hand in the garbage disposal if it would hurt. I believe that's a little bit unfair to me. You ruined chat. How did I ruin chat? Yeah, no, you ruined Christmas. It's over. Ah! <laughs> Games.
I think it's important that we look back at Skyrim with fresh eyes. When you take away the hot takes and the bugs and the frustration at Bethesda's constant re-releases of Skyrim, what's left? A ma I had to stop you immediately because I knew where you were going with that. <laughs> no, it is not a masterpiece. If you take away the hot takes, I okay, the bugs and the frustration of them releasing it again, there's not much left. Well, well, there's a question. What are the hot takes? Is it a hot take that Skyrim is bad, or is it a hot, it's a hot take? He's saying it's a hot take. Skyrim is bad. Did you notice what the name of that video was that he said was a hot take? Skyrim review, an overrated epic. And yeah, Skyrim is absolutely overrated as all hell. It's is it, it just is me awful. or is this a fucking potato quality video? The overrated epic one? Yeah, this or, like screenshot or video. Yeah, clip. It, well, it's it's a 2016 video, and see, I can't even he's read. He's kind the of an established. He's kind of an established channel. Oh, I can. Uh, how many subscribers does he have? Uh, five point one thousand. That's still not a lot. If you're going to be talking about hot takes, you need, like, a big, big video to be like, hey, look, this is a hot take that this game is garbage. Yeah, hang on a second. Hang on. I'm going to do some other things. How to divide a fan base, The Last of Us 2, and he only watched a little bit of the Closer Looks video. Um, Salt Factory, he watched a little bit of Salt Factories, evaluating Skyrim, an extremely shallow experience. Well, sometimes the view progress bar fucks up if you click back onto the videos. So. I know, but this is yeah. giving me insight into who he's watching. He watched Ray Sivek. Um, he watched H Bomber Guy. He watched uh, one zero punctuation, but not another one. Interesting. One was all he needed to know that he didn't need to watch him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to strum in this guy, but it was his take literally if you take away everything bad, the game's amazing. It seems to <laughs> be. Yeah. Because then my, my take would be, if you take away everything that's bad, there's nothing left of the game. Yeah, because, like, I, I there's some games where I consider their, them to be, like, fantastic concepts and, and potentially great games. Like, good example, uh, uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. But I am I am not under any impression that that game came out anywhere uh, near its potential. It came out extremely buggy. Yeah. Like, I played it years after release, and I, I had a hard lock. I couldn't finish the game without patches. So, yep. yeah, like... I don't know. Uh, uh, Skyrim, unless you're playing on PlayStation 3, uh, generally didn't have that extreme of uh, bugs. But still, like the the idea is like, if you just take away all the things that that's bad about this thing, it's a masterpiece. Like that's just a completely you, useless statement. <laughs> if you Which take away, hilarious. if you take away all Go the ahead. bad parts about getting shot with a shotgun, it's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because we covered people who have said literally like one of the charm and good things about this game is that it has these bugs. So <laughs> yeah, that, it's that, like, that. which is it? It's, is it, if you take this out, it's good. Or is it because these are here? It's good because we well, keep getting contradictory statements from people who defend it. I, I think you need, uh, Oh, go ahead. Uh, Cree. Sorry. Uh, it wasn't that it was part of the charm. It's Oh, Skyrim fans love the bugs. That was the white light video. Yeah. I, yeah. Maybe with the right clarification, uh, you you could make that argument. Like, I like, uh, for example, I like Dark Messiah Might and Magic because the the physics have been tuned up to eleven. Yeah, it's not really a bug. That's kind of a feature. Like, I, I know that's a, that's a that's a meme, but it kind of was designed that way. Whether or not it probably should have been, you can kick people like across the across the room, and it's awesome. Um, yeah. so I wouldn't really consider that a bug. Um, but the whole, oh, we love the bugs, we love the glitches, whatever kind of thing, that kind of pisses me off because that actually, a great example of how that can be really bad for the industry. Remember, um, uh, I don't know if you ever played it, but a Deadly Premonition, right? Yes. I, I played it on launch on the on the Xbox, and it kind of looked like a PS2 game. Um, it didn't run perfectly, and some of the graphics look kind of bad, but it was pretty stable. I had a pretty stable experience whenever I played the game. It was, it was a couple of slowdowns in the open world environments, uh, things like that. But, um, oh, God, I don't even know why I know the context. <laughs> what? Uh -oh. What the fuck did you post, Pagan? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> why? <Wow>. Why? <laughs> Any, anyway, to, to summarize my point... Uh, I didn't think the base game was all that buggy. It had some issues for sure. It had some kind of jank. It was definitely jank. But uh, overall, 
a fairly solid experience. Apparently, it got buggier actually as time went on and people started playing it at a higher than a uh, 60 FPS for, uh, frame rate and things like that, right? Uh, fast forward a, a few years and um, Swery is did a sequel. Um, he signed on with a Nintendo and he's doing a, a Switch exclusive sequel to Deadly Premonition, right? Yeah. I cannot tell you how many people on Reddit, Twitter, all over the gaming sphere, people are like, this game better be, like, run it, like, sub 30 FPS and be buggy or broken or, or it won't be the same. Like, they are actually demanding that the game would be technically inept. Wow. And I'm like, what the hell? And uh, lo and behold, the game came out and could barely... It, uh, just skateboarding down the streets, you'd be get like sub 20 FPS sometimes. Like it was a mess. Mm. I, I still to the day I've not played it because I, I refuse to pay for a game that's that technically napped. But people were like celebrating it, and Swery was retweeting these things like this game can barely run. It's buggy. I, I you know so and so and so and so. I can't I can't I can't express how much I love it. And he was like retweeting those tweets like as if a celebration of technical ineptitude was somehow a good thing. <laughs> Very, yeah. very strange, and I, I don't, I don't get it. I think that if the game ran at a solid frame rate, uh, you know, didn't look like a, a piece of garbage, and I didn't have so many bugs, I think it'd be an improve. I don't think anybody, reasonable person, would say that wouldn't be an improvement. It's just weird to me. Yeah, it is weird that people are demanding games to be shittier, like. <laughs> Uh, I hate that. I was considering checking out the sequel, too, because um, I had seen a full Let's Play of the original, and I've yeah. been wanting to get around to playing it. I was thinking, hey, I could grab the sequel and play them both, and just didn't end up doing it. Yeah, the original is still quite playable, um, and uh, it's it's a very original game. Like, it, There's no other game that is quite comparable to it. It look, it may look like, you know, Alan Wake meets GTA meets whatever, but it, there's no game quite like it. So I recommend the original, but I'm not touching the sequel until they actually make a game that can function properly. Yeah, understandable. Um, $5 from the Wayfarer. Thank you. A masterpiece? Skyrim is basically ML and Pete's retelling of Beowulf. We... <clears throat> uh, we have seen how well that panned out with Fallout 3. Uh um, and five dollars from lethargic slash kitten. Thank you. Minor uncommon physics bugs are endearing. Skyrim has way bigger issues than minor uncommon physics bugs. Yeah. Yeah, it's got some huge issues. I mean, uh, I, I... Go ahead. Yeah? Sorry. Oh, I was just going to read a comment. Get out here, yo. Which game? Uh, Deadly Premonition. Uh, yeah, I mean, the I... sequel that was... Sorry. No, sorry, it's hard to tell them when you have a gap. Um, I, I was just going to say, like, I was streaming uh, Vampire the Masquerade uh, Redemption, not Bloodlines Redemption, the other day, and I did a couple mods to see kind of how they worked. I never modded a game before, and one of the mods was actually pretty funny. Um, you know, occasionally a bug can be pretty enjoyable. What had happened is that you're, you're playing a vampire, basically, right? So uh, the idea is people drink blood, but I was in a cutscene talking to another vampire guy, and halfway through the cuts uh the dialogue cut scene he stops talking to me walks over and starts like like he grabs a, a nearby monk and starts like biting his neck in the middle of our conversation oh. so things like that obviously kind of broke the scripting system i guess you know this mod or did something happen and that's hilarious but i wouldn't praise a game for having that bug i just think it was kind of a funny impromptu uh bug caught on stream but yeah I, I, I don't get the idea like uh, oh we need to have bugs because that's what makes the game so great yeah, and, and that's kind of the thing, too, is if you're trying to tell a serious story or show a serious world, then a lot of those glitches and bugs can really take you out of the experience. I've referenced it before. I but... have returned. Welcome back. I've referenced it before, but Vinny Vinesauce did his pl uh, pl uh, playthrough of the Nintendo Switch version of Skyrim a couple years ago, and he got Serana as a companion, and she would constantly beeline for every... NPC interact spots, like hammering on a wall, working at a, um, a crafting bench or a blacksmith. He he did the quest to get into the Dark Brotherhood, and as he's talking to the kid, <laughs> she teleports down to the uh, NPC interaction spot, then just teleports to the floor, stabbing the dagger into the floor, doing the Black Sacrament, and Vinny just kept losing his shit. And, like, yeah, that, stuff like that happening is funny, but 
it shouldn't be happening because it, it breaks the experience so much. You yeah, know, and it's not just those. There are serious ones that are like, oh, you want to complete the Thieves Guild quest? Oh, too <laughs> fucking bad. The fucking gate in the goddamn Nightingale Hall won't fucking open. So unless you know the console command, you're fucked out of luck. Go do something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's... It's kind of like uh, the whole jank thing, like we talk about your jank and just jank in general. And, you know, that's a, a game Slav that, jank. yeah, a, a Slav jank and stuff like that. And people kind of have a have a kind of uh, nostalgic or positive viewpo viewpoint toward jank. But the thing is, I think that jank games are generally very ambitious games that are an, very uh, in uh, inconsistently executed. Sometimes they're executed great. Sometimes they're executed very rough or they have bugs or instability issues uh, holding them back so i don't think people love jank because of the bad uh, things i think we love it despite the bad the bad yeah. parts like if we had a perfectly uh smooth solid version of you know stalker or something like that i don't think that'd be a bad thing i think people would, would love that you know or gothic or whatever yeah um did you get that uh lethargic kitten uh super chat yes i did that's uh part of what led into the discussion we were having Okay. Um, I do want to mention something about this video, too, but let's get this $5 Super Chat real quick. $5 Super Chat from Johnny All 14 Thank you very much. Just got Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin. It may have issues, but it still leagues better than Skyrim, LOL. Also, I'm using the rapier. Fight me. Uh, it's not the rapier. The rapier is not the broken thing. The broken thing is the club. Because, um, uh, what is it? They don't call it brute damage. Strike damage. Strike damage is overpowered as shit in Dark Souls 2. Uh, anyways. Um, in this video, remember, he just said, take out the hot takes, the the bugs, and the, the um, frustration at them re-releasing the game over and over again, and it, you're left with a masterpiece. <laughs> you literally said earlier that, yeah... The, the quests are shit. The writing is shit. And, you know, like, the mechanics you said are shallow. Yeah. You, you said the mechanics are shallow and the quests are dog shit. It's like, okay. But, <laughs> yeah. Good fucking job, dude. Again, if you take away all the negative parts of uh, getting shot with a shotgun, you know, it's pretty good. Pretty nice feeling if, without all the pain. And death. Hey, such Santier spear is best. I'm not saying what's best. I'm saying what's OP. Like you, because you can get the club or the mace really early in Dark Souls Two, and it can carry you easily through the entire game because of the strike damage. And you just need the one ring from the fat hippo in the tutorial area, and yeah, you you literally have a ring that will destroy everything. It is fucking weird. Fucking gadget. Uh-oh, what did he do now? <laughs> I'll send it to you. <laughs> Give me a uh... second. <laughs> it's Anyways. just him being a shit poster in another uh, server. Oh. Because he <laughs> always is. Anyways, let's go on with the video. We've tangented quite a lot already. Yeah. A, a great example of a, you know an axiom versus a maxim, or uh, an absolute law versus a uh, generally true law, is that generally... Stag will be mostly tangents. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not an absolute law, like gravity, but, you know, generally. Generally. Yep. All right. The hot takes and the bugs and the frustration at Bethesda's constant re-releases of Skyrim? What's left? A magic that no other game oh. has captured. A magic. Oh. Oh, got me. Yeah, I but thought he, he was going to say a masterpiece. He, he is still wrong, yes. Yeah. But no, it's a magic, not a masterpiece. But no, A it's, magic. It's Directed by M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've never that reminds heard... me of that conversation we had on stream yesterday about how fucking awful that movie was, the Avatar Last Airbender movie was. Um, fucking hell. That's the thing, though. It's like, I've never heard someone use magic like that. It's a magic. What? Yeah. Because usually, no. you, usually you would say it's magic or it's magical or something <laughs> like that, you know? Or it has a magic. Yeah, I wouldn't describe Skyrim as a magic. That's weird. Yeah. 
Um, Laliho says, the irony of magic in Skyrim being dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, it, and it's so true. Magic in Skyrim is awful. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. Yeah. All right, I need to go to Solitude to join the Imperial Legion. Okay, that's a bit of a hike, but whatever. Ooh, ooh what's this? Some bandits. Never should have come here. I could kill a few bandits. <laughs> Hold up. Is that a mod? Of course it's a mod. What do you mean? It's got, yes. a, it's got a fucking sighting scope on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not a mod. Why, does he have a, I... why the fuck does he have a gun in here? But no, it's a... Weird <laughs> also, look ass. at the textures, the rocks and stuff. That He's using a texture mod as well. To make that it might, look better. That uh, mildly looks like E and B as well. If I if I were to venture to yeah, there is some E and B in there as well. So so here here here's this video. If you patch out all the bugs and ignore the re-releases and ignore Bethesda's bullshit and the bugs and then mod out everything you don't like about this game, Skyrim, what's left? A magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure. Oh, you it can be a magical experience if you mod it to not be dog shit. If you mod yeah. it to fucking, oh hey, the magic system is broken. Let's mod it so it's not broken anymore. Man, Skyrim is a great game. Yeah. Oh my god. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. Fucking quick scoping these bandits here. Quick scoping with a bow. With a bow that actually has modern <laughs> sighting reticles on it. Why does a bow have a scope? Well, it's, <laughs> some. I'm gonna tell you right now, Cree. Some bows do do that in real life. Really? Now, nowadays, yeah. But like modern bows, not modern not, bows, not not old yeah. bows. Yeah. At Kratosis, you can't mod the awful main story and awful side quests. That is fair. That is true. Yeah. Um, and you can't mod the lore because that's what's written by the developers. You can't change that. I mean, depending on what your uh, what your uh, limits are, you could play Enderall. I mean, is that is that not a mod? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the thing. Is like if here's why oh, Skyrim is great, and then that... they just show Enderall. <laughs> yes. like, oh, I was going to say that would be an amazing shit post. That would yeah, be I'm a actually... top tier fucking shit post. Just talk about how <laughs> Skyrim is great and do nothing but Enderall or some other total conversion mod. Yeah, I mean, it might be <laughs> might kind of seem pretentious, but I I'm actually coming up with topics for a podcast I'm going to do next week um, with Patricia and Zarek. Uh, as a hacker on. Oh, nice. And uh, um, yeah, and we're going to talk about Skyrim and kind of like uh, roughly kind of Skyrim and similar RPGs, sort of uh, game changing RPGs to kind of stagnate and become more streamlined, things like that. Uh, it, it's it's a pretty co pretty common topic on my channel. But um, one of the things I thought of is a little bit of a kind of pseudo, charging battery. Uh, I guess it's a little pretentious, but the kind of ship of Theseus kind of argument at what point when you change so much about the base game, does it not become the, the is it not the same game anymore? Yeah. Like, I would argue the moment you make even a single change in terms of a game, the moment you make a single change, it's no longer the developer's vision. No, I, I wouldn't necessarily say a single change, but I like what we said before where um, the unofficial patch, which fixes tons of like bugs and just little issues like characters having keys that, don't unlock anything. It's, uh, perks not working for certain races and all that. It's not so much that it's no longer the developer's vision. It's just not what the developer released. So it's not... You're not criticizing Skyrim anymore. You're criticizing uh, Skyrim that's been modded to be a bit less garbage. We had a we had an example of this um, in MMO Grinder. We had a guy who was a high-level Patreon... And he kept wanting us to review Second Life. And it's like, <laughs> my, my dude, we, we can't review Second Life. And he's like, why not? Because it's the Second Life is a platform that's utilized for all these other people to make their visions. We would be reviewing the person's world we happen to land in. We wouldn't be reviewing what the developer, Second, the Second Life Linden Labs, put out. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming there was probably some common areas that um, had that the developers did make but yeah so much yeah. of that is user-generated content that you like, can't really 
You can't I guess the credit. entire point of Second Life is user generated content. That's like the main goal. That's how they make their money is user generated content. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah. It's 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 a really frustrating thing because uh, I, I as much as I love the community for, that can fix games like Arcanum and vampire and and yeah. you know uh re rebuilt the entire freaking uh base engine for daggerfall allowed for mods things like that like that's incredible and i can't i can't uh express my love for the community more uh, for all these things that they've done that being said that had nothing to do with the developers that was all the community kind of you know developers uh ran the foot race 70 percent of the way there and the communities dragged their corpse to the finish line you know like that's yeah. It, it, it's amazing, but uh, how can you credit? Like, it'd be different if somehow in a magical world where uh, a 100% complete and thorough uh, design document was released along with the game and a lot of the aspects of the game was unfinished. Like, sometimes they're actually, uh, they're, you know, people do data mining and stuff like that and, and find this uh, deleted content and then kind of uh, put it back in the game. It happens a lot. That, but, um, we got an example that fits within our wheelhouse. That was uh, Knights of the Republic 2, the Sith Lords. Yeah. People data mined it. They found tons of stuff. They found entire planets that were that had pretty much everything there, had the quests all laid out and everything. They just weren't finished. Yeah. Now, cynically, a lot of what a lot of companies do nowadays is just like, okay, cut it to DLC. They, you know, if it's not 100% done, cut it, make it DLC. That's what we see in Destiny and stuff. Like, people were seeing destiny uh dlcs like six months before the dlc came out things like that yeah so that's kind of more of a cynical modern viewpoint but a lot of times it's like we can't quite finish this up cut it yep. you know we got it we got a release on november we've got to hit that you know the christmas sales so uh but yeah my point was just you, you you really can't credit the base game for all of that as much as a lot of the the blueprint was there you know it Especially a lot of these things, a lot of the mods and, and additions and changes and stuff, and, and especially for Skyrim, uh, I, I you could I could guarantee you you could survey the entire hundred staff uh, team of Bethesda Game Studios and ask them about these things. They'd have no idea what you're talking about. That none of that was on their mind at the time. Some yeah. of the stuff, sure, maybe like improving. I, I I strongly suspect that there was a survival mode and uh, cooking was supposed to be a strong component of that for Skyrim and it was cut. I have no no proof of that, but I, it's it seems pretty obvious to me that that was something that wasn't finished. But uh, yeah, no, it, you can't really give the the credit the credit completely to the developers with all this stuff. That was the same thing too. We heard the other day, unfortunately, from Patrician was that. No, the the like the Civil War storyline has a lot of depth. Do you know how much it was cut? And it's like that doesn't matter. No. We didn't get any of that cut content. So it it being it oh it would have been so much better. Does not matter. It's not what we got. I hate that argument so much. Um, I I I, I don't know Patrician's take, so I can't comment on that. I'm not, I'm not saying I hate his viewpoint on it. I'm just saying that uh that that point in general, like when I was cutting through that kind of schlop when I was reviewing uh, some movies and analyzing some movies like the matrix from my cyberpunk uh, documentary. I, it was so frustrating when people are talking about, Oh, but in uh, so-and-so uh, during the original planning phase it was supposed to be that this character did blah, uh, or this character was like this in the matrix and, this, and like X outside the matrix. I'm like, that's really neat. That's an interesting bit of trivia. None of that's in the movie. <laughs> yeah. So I can't I can't comment on that. I don't care what your idea was. If it's in the movie, it's in the movie. If it's not, it's not. Exactly. It wasn't even shot. It wasn't even a cut scene. It just was never filmed. So I can't I can't comment on that. I can't say that that's the way it was supposed to be. Uh, Han Solo was supposed to be an alien, and uh, the what be, eventually became Luke Skywalker in Star Wars One was uh, Anakin Starkiller, and he was an abusive asshole. That obviously changed in the final in the final draft of the the script. Am I supposed yep. to comment? Am I supposed to comment on that and say Star Wars is bad because Han Solo is an alien and and Anakin Starkiller is a jerk? I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> no, no bearing on the final movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not to a normal, rational person's mind, you're not supposed to. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and by the same measure, it's like you take the beta of any game; it's going to be radically different, or the alpha, I should say, of any game. It's going to yeah. be radically different from the final product. That's why you don't base or you don't judge or review it based on what the alpha is when you're talking about the final 
Well, yeah. the sad part is not not until today, where the terms because the industry has become so greedy, alpha and beta are now little more than the press demos. Well, yeah, I mean to. proper alpha betas. I, I agree with you. If we go based off the definitions that I grew up with, that that I guess me and Indigo would have grown up with, where an alpha was you you have your design document you're literally like the, a lot of the models aren't finished you're just trying to get mechanics working like you're trying to get it when features. somebody yeah yeah when somebody opens a door the door opens and it doesn't like kill the person immediately like that's that's alpha yeah beta is when you've got your mechanics down but you're still polishing you're doing spit and polish and this system's not working and your bug te- your your you're bug fixing and you're testing things of like, well, this is the way we want the system to work. So let's make people do that over and over and over again to make sure that it actually works every time. It doesn't break. That's what, that's what I, uh, freaking publishers and developers are so freaking terrified that people are going to be like, Oh my God, this game sucks. I'm not going to buy it on release when they release an earlier version for like stress testing, or whatever. Yeah. I, I've seen server tests call, uh, I, I believe blizzard did this once they had a server stress test uh basically maybe a couple minor revisions after and called it a technical alpha what the hell is that (laughs) yeah (laughs) and again it's because they've moved the terms of what alpha and beta mean alpha to the modern games industry and alpha is oh it's an early access look and a beta is a oh we're just around the corner get in early and it's like that's not what they were that's not what their intention was when they were called an alpha and a beta yeah, no, I think you're. I think you're pretty much right. Um, alpha is uh, feature incomplete. Beta is feature complete, uh, not fully QA'd. And yeah. uh, when something goes gold, it means it's uh, absolutely 100% done, ready for ready for print on disc. And as we've yeah. seen with Cyberpunk, uh, going gold means basically nothing now. Yeah, so. yeah. Thanks, CD Projekt Red. Thank you for that. <laughs> and it's it just hurts so much because again. This was a track record they had. Witcher 1 launched very poorly and actually almost killed the company, which is why the author was correct, and I will die on that hill that he was totally correct. Um, And then you had Witcher 2, which again, launched in a buggy, awful state. It was still a good game, but it was a buggy, awful state. And then you have Witcher 3, which again, launched in a buggy, awful state. It's like, guys, this keeps happening. And also we got messages from people working at the company itself talking about how the working conditions at the company were awful and they were literally operating under the philosophy well 500 people with spoons and their fingers can dig a hole it's like yeah but give five people a shovel please for god's sakes yeah and it, and it just happened again it's it happened again with cyberpunk it's like wow if only we could have seen this coming yeah i, play, I played uh i think i played witcher a couple years after release um I couldn't run it very well, but that was my, I was running a laptop that didn't have a very good GPU. Witcher 2 was pretty solid, but it was like a, it was a monster to run at the time. It was extremely, probably yes. the most advanced, gra- uh, graphically advanced game that I had played at the time. You could, you could. Well, it was for everybody. Uh, remember, yeah. it, it used to be Crisis was the game you used to benchmark, and then it became Witcher 2 was the benchmark game. Yeah, Witcher 3 had a pretty solid launch. There were a couple issues, I think, with performance, but overall, uh, Oh, I, I did remember doing any of the special NVIDIA features like the hair and stuff, which is an absolute performance killer. So I yeah, did you did you want to set set your graphics card on fire? Turn on the NVIDIA <laughs> hair physics. <laughs> yeah, and, and what sucked is because the hair kept on clipping and normal, but I'm like, at least I can run the game. But, yeah. Uh, but Witcher Three was pretty solid when on launch. It had some issues. Uh, I, I think there were some kind of things cut bef- uh, from promotional material, which got some people's uh, some some people upset. But uh, yeah, no question. Uh, 2077 was their roughest launch. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, but it, it's funny because again, we got all those better business bureau complaints about Witcher <laughs> Three and everything, and, and talking about how awful it was and how the companies literally run like a big click. If you if you're not in with the inner circle, then you know you're stuck on menial labor and everything. And those menial labors are literally like, hey. We need this. And they have 500 different people all working on that one thing. And it's it's such a clusterfuck. Yeah, it's a shame because um, obviously there was some sort of vision there. It, it, it kind of gave me the idea, like if you watch a movie where the director left halfway through, it kind of gave me that sort of vibe where it's like, okay, there was a definite, there was a definite uh, concept here 
yeah. but it got it got completely changed halfway through. Like there was obviously a shift somewhere from Deus Ex to GTA. That that was my that was my take on on the game, is that it, it completely shifted. Yeah. From one idea to another idea, and it's a shame because there's actually some really good uh, lore and and story beats there. Just yeah, the game the game design as a whole is just really incoherent. Well, it's because it's because the base uh, Cyberpunk 2020 is is such a good base. It's really fucking well done. Yeah. Um. Okay. I, I we we have a ton of super chats that came in that we need to catch back up on. Yeah, I was looking for a point um, to like try and get in, but like. It, there's no point that seemed like, oh, you guys are done. It, like, I don't want to interrupt you guys. Oh, You're having a good conversation. Yeah, yeah trust uh, me. I'll, I'll get to that point where I'll be like, okay, yeah, we've been going way past. Let's. Yeah. Uh, $2 from Scoopmeister. Thank you. Mod, 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 mod. My eyes. Yeah. Yep. Well, see, um, what I said, is that a mod? That was more just, I shouldn't be surprised, but it's like, wait, what the fuck? Is that a mod? Oh, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, that's why I just snapped too. It's like they have scopes on the fucking bow. Of course, it's a mod. Yeah, but it's just that again, <laughs> just that initial reaction. Like, wait, what the fuck? You yeah. Know? yeah um, it, I don't. I don't think it. These videos. I don't know what is this title. Bittersweet masterpiece. Um, you really have to draw that line between vanilla and mod. If you're if you're trying to argue for the game design itself, you really have to draw that line. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I in the past, I've kind of made a couple of flubs where I use a little bit of modded footage here and there, but I was absolutely commenting on the, the vanilla game. Um, but 99% yeah. of my footage was all vanilla. I just accidentally, like, messed up a couple of points for some reason, either through expediency or uh, I actually worked with Patricia, and we, like, figured out why my stats were weird on one clip. Apparently, I had, I had installed a mod a while back, and... Um, it auto saved it at uh, Skyrim. Auto saved it like save zero zero whatever, um, and the, the mod had, had lowered my stats because it was a class mod. Okay. And and then later on, I turned off my, all my mods so that I could I could record vanilla footage, but I still had that zero zero save, and I was like, I don't want to do the the cart ride again. I'm done with the cart ride. So I didn't realize I was loading in a character with b uh, below base stats, <laughs> and that was the whole thing. So it was actually it was actually like. A detriment it wasn't an advantage it was a detriment to me but um yeah there's like one one clip where i'm using a, a weird bug character because i i'd installed a mod and uninstalled a mod but the mod itself saved at the end of the cart ride with below uh below standard stats so i was like oh shit mm. but it, it doesn't affect the video i played several unmodded characters it was fine but yeah just gotta be careful with that kind of stuff and and yeah if you're doing any sort of uh does the game still hold up or nine years later or whatever? I think I was watching Patricia cover a video where I'm just like, oh, God. Yeah, that's, that line. that's actually yeah. one of the videos we are considering covering and we might do like either next week or whenever is uh, Skyrim nine years later by it was like Circle Square or something. Yeah, uh, God, I don't remember. Um, or Push Square. I don't remember the name. It's not important. There was but one yeah, by, there's one by Genji. I don't remember which one that was, but. Yeah, I, that was actually mentioned earlier in chat, I believe. It's like, oh man, that that I'm not looking forward to based on uh, how it sounds. By the way, uh, did you watch his coverage of your? I didn't watch all of his coverage of your video. I but... watched. I watched it all. I was at work at the time. <laughs> that, yeah, that's I... that's where I was talking about his whole like weird thing of like, yeah, but the 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 Civil War had so much more depth. Look at all the stuff they cut out. It's like that doesn't matter. It's that kind of stuff, or the like. But Legendary was obviously not the intended difficulty. And he, he used the example of if you take a 747 and fly it at Mach 2, it's not going to do well. It'll, it'll like, rip itself apart. I'm like, yeah, but there are limiters and stuff like that. The, they physically cannot be flown that fast. Like, the, them having, allowing Legendary as a choice means they have said that it is good enough to be used. Yeah, you'd expect them to have QA their difficulty modes. Um, obviously, there's, like, I forgot who said this. It was a pretty, it was a pretty uh, uh, sane kind of outlook on it. There is like a, there is a developer recommended difficulty setting. Like I forget yes. what it was. I think Halo was like, it's like, is it hard? Not hardcore, but um, it's the, it's, like, it's like one step above normal. Yeah. Right? It's it's not it's it's heroic. A, heroic. Heroic, yeah, heroic. 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 Not not legendary. Legendary is is not there. Uh, recommended because like you can get one shot by those little 
freaking sniper guys. Um, yep, jackal snipers, maybe. I freaking hate those guys. Anyway, uh, but, Hero, <laughs> but Heroic is pretty good. You have to watch out for your health. You got to play smart. You can't just, you know, go, you know, all balls forward and just like run into a bunch of guys. You're going to get killed. So that's a pretty re- well balanced difficulty mode. But at the same time, Legendary should also be playable. Yes. And and that was the point too, was because we were talking about how Skyrim is just tedious and everything. And then he's like, well, how is Skyrim? And then he started thinking like he wasn't saying one way or the other. He's like, how is Skyrim tedious? But then stuff like Dark Souls isn't. And then I started going through the explanation of because Dark Souls is a set difficulty. So they can tailor every single encounter experience, knowing that this is the exact difficulty that literally every single player of the game will experience no matter what you have to do this same level of challenge. There's no sliders or anything. So they can all, they know exactly, this is what we have in our toolbox. These are the tools. These are the items. We know exactly what we can use. Yeah, one really weird example of that was um, another game that's super fascinating. Uh, I actually want to do a video on this because it's a really fascinating uh, case study of how you how different beta can be from the final game is Diablo 3 because that thing was in production for a long time. Um, entire feature sets and and uh, all this kind of stuff was was added, removed during development. And what's crazy about the game is that a lot of this stuff was completely available to the public through BlizzCon. They'd update everybody every year with all these things they're working on, and then it just like axed them later. Mm-hmm. But uh, one one really interesting thing is that uh, I think the game launched with uh, some difficulty mode, as like Hell or something like that. And I don't think anybody who was actually able to beat the game, like literally nobody in the world was actually able to beat Diablo on the hell mode, if I were, if I recall correctly. So this was a completely, this is a difficulty mode that, um, as far as I remember, it, uh, I'll bear back one, one moment again. As far as I recall, Blizzard themselves said that nobody had ever beaten the game in hell. So wow. how do they know that that, uh, that difficulty mode was even possible? Do they just create like an insanely difficult, like, crank up the damage numbers and the the monster spawn numbers and stuff to a point just because they know that somebody some insane person is eventually going to try to beat it like was that their viewpoint it's kind of odd to me that they would never they would release a mode that nobody's ever beaten yeah i i wouldn't mind that so much if it was literally called impossible mode with the warning this is pretty much unbeatable you are legendary if you're able to complete this because it is that difficult you yeah, know, and, and it'd, just, it'd be one thing, like, go ahead. Just for, like, the ultimate challenge type thing. Yeah, yeah, impossible mode. Like, this is insane, this is impossible, nobody's ever been able to do this. If you are, are win this, you are a god. I'd be like, okay, this is fun. This is a challenge. Like, I, I'll do that occasionally. Like, I'll um, I'll crank up, you know, Tetris to Master 15 level, which you basically have uh, nanoseconds to react to each each piece. And it's like, this is insane, this is kind of fun, because I no human should be able to do this, right? Yeah. Or... Um, or I'll, I'll create a, a one versus 16 bot match in Unreal Tournament, turn on Instagib, crank up the game speed by 4x, and uh, turn all the bots to the, the you know, absolute god mode difficulty and see how long I last. You know, this is like, no human should be able to do this, so this is kind of fun. But no. they re- they released a legit, like, preset game, mo- uh, game difficulty mode, and uh, supposedly, maybe it was just hype, supposedly nobody had beaten it, so... Is is Unreal Tournament the one where the AI was designed to learn your combat um, behavior and try to like outplay you? Which game I, was that? I don't know. Was because, that her? Because I remember reading a story on 4chan years ago where someone had a server uh, for a game like that where the bots were supposed to learn off of uh, the other player's, uh, I guess, battle techniques. But he had both teams as bots, and he just left it running for years. And That's when he cool. <laughs> when he remembered it, he jumped in, and they just weren't fighting each other. And then uh, he was like, did they break? So he got a gun and shot one of them and killed them. All the bots ran to the nearest weapons and just fucking blew him away. They <laughs> had realized the only way to survive was peace. And he came and disrupted that, so they all said, him, dead. <laughs> that's that's great i love that that is amazing that, that's created great. their own culture and shit in the game they're like you know like put, like that really shitty uh what was it like a coke ad or something like that or like it, they basically did like uh, world of warcraft where it's like 
you know what you know what we should do in this there championship we should throw weapons down and and be friends they're refusing to fight <laughs> we're just one coke away guys we're just one coke away <laughs> That's amazing. I, I have no idea. Some 4chan stories are extremely hard, hard to believe, but oh, that yeah. sounds awesome. If, if that's uh, true, that's awesome. Uh, I'm back. Welcome yeah, if back. that's true, that's awesome. Um, I ever, I've had some really cool stories, though, from just leaving AI to its own devices or or just like uh, playing a game to far, far beyond the intended extent or even possible uh, extent of testing that a game could have gotten. Like, I think that somebody was playing Civ 2 for like 10 years. And they're running into like uh, the very limits of population density in the entire world, like running into like far future problems as simulated by like a, a, a 1997 game or whatever, whenever that game came out. It was like super interesting, like every single square of the game world was like a, a metropolis and like they had all these issues with food scarcity and like, you know, uh, crime and, you know, uh, lack of fulfillment and, you know, things like that, like. Really interesting stuff. That wasn't so much an AI thing, but just an interesting concept where you can push a game far beyond what it was intended to do and find some really interesting insight from it. Yeah, I hope you figure out what that game is because I really want to know what that was because that that sounds amazing. A fucking I can yeah, the AI just learned not to kill each other when I shot one of them. They all attacked me. <laughs> That's wow. great. I remember there was a lot of cool tricks. Um, I, Unreal has always had really good bots, but a lot of it was kind of tricks. Like uh, the coolest thing was actually, uh, one of the coolest things was in Unreal 1, um, the, uh, I forget what they are, but like the basic uh, bipedal um, dudes you fight uh, would dodge your rockets. I thought that was the coolest thing back in the day. They'd actually like strafe off to the side if you shot a rocket at them. They're really hard to hit with rockets. So you had to like shoot at the ground or you know get closer or whatever but yeah they'd always like dodge right outside it uh, outside your rocket range oh quick people are saying it's quake three quake three okay, oh, okay. yeah i'm looking up now and that's one of the ones that came up so okay right. yeah unfortunately uh, how I still... far how far to super chats did you guys get uh we didn't get any further uh five dollars uh, from fantastic 197 thank you has anyone on chat seen the dragonborn dlc comic where the dragon ball Demands to ride the dragon and learns the dragon show called Booty Call. Uh, wow. No. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm... No. Um, Five dollars from Loth Lethargic Slash Kitten. Thank you. There's unintended errors. Then there's purposeful uh, bad design. Yeah. My, one of my favorite unintended designs is Half-Life 2, where... They told, um, they, they gave different threat levels and everything like that to different characters, and they gave Gordon Freeman the highest threat level. And then as a basic thing for the Combine airships, the Combine gunship, they, they told it to attack the highest threat. So, you know, if, if the player was visible, go after the player. What, what they then noticed was with just this simple line of code, they fired a rocket at it, and suddenly the gunship stopped shooting at the player and turned and started trying to shoot the rocket down. Interesting. And they were like, well, why'd that happen? And then they realized that through the game, the, the AI itself had learned the only damage it can take, it can't take damage from small arms fire, a rocket can do damage to it. Ergo, a rocket is the highest threat. Must have uh, a rocket must have had a, some sort of value assigned to it as a, as a um, a potential threat or something like that for it to actually acknowledge it as a target as well because you yeah. think a projectile wouldn't have that. Yeah. Super super interesting. Um, uh, God, it reminded me of a good story. Go ahead. I, I'll I'll try to think of the story I thought of. Yeah. So uh, they realized that um, yeah the uh, the gunships would prioritize the rockets. And so then they gave the gunship the ability to shoot down the rockets, which then led them to working on um, tightening up the control of the rocket launcher. So when you would fire the rockets from the tube, um, it would actually follow your laser pointer more accurately than it did before. Originally, it was more like the Half-Life 1 system where you would fire it and it would follow it, but it was kind of like a, a really slow kind of arcing uh, motion to it. Now it was basically like, you know, not one to one, but it was a basic. You would do really sharp turns with it and everything. You could make the you could make the rocket corkscrew. That's super interesting. 
Uh, yeah, I remember the thing I was going to mention. I, I was watching, uh, I don't know how I got this recommended to me, but um, talking about, uh, I don't even consider this jank. I just think it's uh, open, uh, unscripted game consequences um, through a game just being designed to be very open and very systems-based rather than scripted, right? Um, somebody yeah. was doing a speed run for a fairly under underdog RPG called Two Worlds. Uh, yes and uh the speed run was like five minutes or something like that mm -hmm. the guy it, because apparently the final the final boss like the the win state of the game is to, to kill this one really tough guy but he's like in the next town so what the person did is like they just run jump over a fence and run to this guy and i forget what he does exactly he gets the guy pissed and then gets him to gets this guy to attack the villagers and that triggers the entire village to gang up and then and their collective strength was able to kill him even at level <laughs> one. Yep. <laughs> I love yeah. stories like that. That's amazing. Yeah, that's and awesome. um it, it's sequel Two Worlds Two has probably The worst uh, title in the world. <laughs> yeah, besides the worst title in the world, but uh, it actually has one of the most interesting magic systems I've ever seen. Because it's like you can craft your own spells, but you go beyond that because like and they were showing like a showcase of spells so a guy went out to a beach and then he then cast a spell on it so that he would um he would create ice but instead of having it create ice in front of him he told it to create ice on his feet so then as he stepped it on the water he was creating ice wherever he walks and now he was able to walk on the water and then he decided to cast a spell in front of him that was air but instead of just casting air in front of him he told it that the air should spin he gave it a a spin effect. Well, this then ended up sucking up water in front of him, so he made a water typhoon, a cyclone. And it's like, dude, this is just so fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, I remember the I remember the the magic system being very uh, flexible. I bought that game. I never finished it. Um, but yeah, I was too busy jerking around with the magic system and owning my own house. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of cool. Um, I, I should probably go back to play it again. A terrible title, but I remember one thing being weird. In that game, like a thousand damage is very a very little amount of damage. Like they they start out with very high numbers for damage. I remember that being weird. They should have fixed that. Yeah, I, I hate all game. Uh, a lot of Asian games have a problem with that, where like you you'll be doing because for some reason they like big number porn, and I hate it. I hate big number porn. Yeah. So it'll be like, oh, you did seven trillion seven hundred eighty three thousand four hundred fifty three damage. Wow! Don't you feel amazing? It's like. No, because I saw his health bar. I shaved off a little tick of his health bar. Yeah. But they have to do it, and it's always in massive lettering. It's always in massive, massive, like, 7 trillion damage. I wonder if Diablo 3 did that to attract the Asian audience, because, like, they, the, your damage gets up into the millions. It's insane. Yeah, yeah and I, I hate that shit. Eventually, they abbreviate it to, like, 15.6M. Like that's your damage number. It's insane. Like, why would you need numbers that high? <laughs> yeah, I, I hate I hate that stuff. Just just make it make it more what it actually is. Oh, you did one million damage. No, I I did ten damage. Yeah, it's make right. it make it more what it did, and that way, when you have us, when you get a sword that then says this sword does eighty five damage, you're just like, oh, holy shit. Yeah, I know it's the same thing with World of Warcraft, where it's like. Um... At the later levels, especially with the recent expansions, it's like, oh, hey, you're getting the sword that does, or this item that adds, like, 3,000 stamina to your character. But then you get this other uh, thing that goes in the same slot that's an upgrade. It's like, it does 3,050 stamina. It's like, that's such a small increase at this point that it's basically <laughs> fucking useless. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's another pet peeve of mine. Like, proc, proc chains is like 0.5% chance of, like, what the hell? Why, why even bother? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, $8 from Get Out Here, yo. Uh, Australian dollars. Kangaroos. Thank you. Yep. Unlike Skyrim slash Fallout 4, Stalker Slavjank has charm and cheeky lore reason, the zone. Uh, P.S. Thoughts on DX's critique of objective media critiques. Keep well, boys. Uh, DX? I don't know who DX is, so I, I would be able to give one way or the other. I know I've they're... seen his channel a couple times. I know there was a video suggested to us that talks about the objective uh, criticism thing, but it's just the same shit we usually hear. I think. Not... 
it talking about objective uh, criticism, kind of like a EFAP thing. I, I, thing, I yeah, no? yeah. I, I hate when people say objective critique doesn't exist. Like, yes, it does. Stop it. Yeah, it's only become a meme. I mean, uh, I, I, I still remember one of the most irritating uh, criticisms of that was. Um, uh, Sterling. Sterling did a video way back on that. Oh my about, god, like, yes. Like it talking about the most boring video game. Yeah. It can be played with a controller or a keyboard and mouse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like that that's what objective that's all objective critiques would ever be. It's like, no, it isn't, you fucking fat ass potato. What bugs me the most is when people pull that shit, but then they go and do reviews in which they like make objective statements like, yeah, this is a bad game because all the shit is broken. It's like, how do you say that, but also still say, well, it's all just subjective. It's not subjective that these systems are broken or that the story is fucking broken or fucking whatever. Yeah, yeah and what's interesting, especially I find this a super interesting uh, method to use uh, when I'm doing kind of like trying to be a, an objective documentary. Um, occasionally, you know, you can't really help but kind of feed a little bit of your own uh, biases into anything you write, but... Uh, what I try to do when uh, I, there are like opinions, like I usually try to describe things as they are. Character does blah. Um, this is what happens, and it's not mentioned up to this point. I try to make sure I get the basic facts straight, right? Yeah. But yeah. when I do, when I do start to appraise a quality, uh, I'm sorry, quality, not a quality, quality. Um, I try to I try to reference sources, like this this critic said blah or. A uh, few people have said, have said blah, and I have citations for that, and I have sources for that. Like, you can use other people's opinions to to bring up general complaints about a particular thing, even if you're even if you're not stating your own opinion. So that's like one style I've kind of adopted because it kind of, it's almost like you're sourcing something rather than stating your own opinion. Kind yeah. of an interesting idea. Obviously, review is going to, you you want your subjective you know feeling at the end, but you can you can explain quite a bit. By just saying, uh, the movement is controlled by left stick. Uh, if you, you know, you'll need five points uh, of skill points per uh, to acquire a new skill or something like that. These are all objective things that if you get your stats, your facts right, nobody could argue. Yeah. Things like that. Well, you would think. <laughs> You'd think, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, $5 super chat from Bentastic197. Thank, thank you very Thank you. Much. Head to bed. We'll catch the stream later. Oh, hello, Mr. Lizard Assassin. <laughs> that's what you get for not continuing to obey and watch the stream. That's just how it is. Yeah, that's just what happened. And uh, three, three Australian koalas from Get Out Here, yo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mud Crab does damage. 15.8 up. I can't remember in actual parlance. Uh, to the power of 24, LMAO. I think that's to the power of 24 when you can't actually write it as a power. You do the up, uh, yeah, the up carrot and then do 20, then do your number. Why can't I buy a $5 super chat? It won't let me unless I go up to 10 bucks. Um, I should let you. Everyone else has been doing $5. Yeah. The only thing I could think of is uh, whatever message you're trying to send with it is longer than the uh, character count. So yeah, 200 character count limit. Yeah. You can't say anything longer than that. Yeah. It can be a bit annoying at times trying to word a comment. Like, I've sent super chats into like EFAP or uh, Real BBC, where it's like, how do I get this message out in this many characters, even though there's so much I want to say? Yeah. yeah, you also have to look for naughty words. Like, you know, even people who are pretty much against censorship can uh, get a lot of spam uh, comments, especially if they get a lot of a lot of viewers. And so they might put a couple words in there that spammers and just uh, nasty, nasty folks try to put in the comments just just to kind of cut down the amount of work they have to do to moderate. Yeah. So occasionally yeah. You look at you know, like naughty words or things like that. Sometimes those are just put into your your banned words because it makes it a lot easier to moderate. Yep. Anyways, that catches us up and uh, we can get back to the video. Oh, you no. Guys Okay. How excited are you to continue watching this amazing video? Well, I, I got to say this guy is not a, a 360 no scope uh, lead, lead player because he actually added a scope to his bow. So. <laughs> yep. 
Also, I think Skibs is dead. Pagan has, you know, long since departed this earth. <laughs> I've wanted to die for a while. I yeah. just don't know. I, I don't have much to say about, like, Diablo and everything just because I haven't played them. Yeah, I'm in the oh, same boat. That's Diablo why I didn't. Three, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. That's why I didn't say fucking anything about Cyberpunk or Witcher or Diablo. It's just like, there's nothing I can add here. All you, all you youngins, come on! It can't it just can't just be us old fogies keeping up with everything. Come on. Hike, but whatever. Ooh, woo. what's this? Some bandits. Never should have come here. I could kill a few bandits. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they have a forge where they were making weapons that get stronger when the moons are full. That's pretty cool, but eh, useless. Alright, that's enough fucking around. It's time to- oh shit, is that a ruin? What's in there? Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. Huh, looks like some- Ha ha ha. Modded UI. Yeah, modded UIs and everything. So uh, he just said that the world is like- Unique and can't be replicated, but he's also showing us how fucking boring he finds it to be. Yeah, this is a weird format for this title, isn't it? Super weird format. Yeah. Yep. Especially with like all yep. the shitty, unfunny jokes everywhere. He he kills a dragger. Oh, I can't believe you've done this. And he's trying to do like a weird skit in it, and it's like I get it, but it's like you can just in a video like this just explain your points. We don't need. Because he's going yeah. against his points. It's like, oh, I got to go do something. Oh, Again, this other thing's cool, but then, then he, it's just nothing. He could have played this skit off so much better if he's like, okay, I just got to go to Solitude. That's just going to be a heck of a hike. I'll get there after I visit every 15 other locations that are I'm going to stumble across along the way. You know, Just make it, make it like that. Make it more snappy in this. We don't need to actually see you going through and how your thought process works of, Oh, oh, I randomly got attacked by a random encounter. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, there's a ruin here. Oh, okay. Wow, well, there's a, you know, just don't, don't do that. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, I want to, machinima, but using stills instead. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good explanation of it, but it kind of reminds me of that format. Slideshow right? machinima. Oh, boy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. PowerPoint, PowerPoint machinima. There you go. That's a good Oh, that's a good... <laughs> God. <laughs> God, but, I remember when Machinima.com was so big, and oh, yeah, and a lot of a lot of big YouTubers were uh, Machinima um, under contract with Machinima. It's crazy. Yep, I and heard they were had, terrible too, like to work yeah. for. Yes, the contracts were were absolutely the most caustic fucking things you've ever seen. Hmm. Um, uh, God, what was it? Then you had a what Gorilla Gong or something that came out later. A bit, a big one was uh, Polaris, a um, couple other really big. Um, I forget what they're called now, but I've gotten so many offers from different ones, like full screen and whatever. But I, they, they've kind of be, kind of become irrelevant because so many of the issues that that YouTubers run into, those particular, uh, uh, I don't even know what do you, what do you call them. I, they had a name for them, but yeah, in, MGMs or something like that. Something like that. Um, they've kind of become irrelevant because some of the issues that YouTubers run into the, those particular entities can't really protect them anymore. You can get, uh, one of their big perks is like music and copyright and stuff like that. You're still going to get claimed even if you're going through these kind of people and all they are is basically, uh, ad revenue parasites at this point for the most part. I mean, maybe you'll get some special brand deals. Uh, they can probably search for sponsors for you if you're into that. Uh, maybe and maybe do some collabs. I know that, like for example, Total Biscuit and all his friends are basically all under Polaris, since they do collabs and things like that. Probably worked out for them for the time because they were so big. But regardless, if they if they broke out of the contract, they'd still be about as big and possibly make more money. Who knows? Yeah. Oh my God, I was right. Gorilla Gong was the Machinima website I was thinking of that hmm. tried to like break away from Machinima and then literally didn't go anywhere. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, no, nothing against the Machinima creators. There's actually a lot of really funny uh, Machinima creators. Like, wasn't uh, uh, a lot of YTP uh, creators were Machinima, weren't they? Or they kind yeah, of really sp yeah. spawned out of Machinima. Well, um, then you, I mean, you had you had uh, Das Bullshit as well. Who his big thing is coming? Obviously, you know, he would be probably one of the most famous ones that came from Machinima. And um, Ross Scott as well, doing Freeman's Mind. But Dust Bullshit was the big one, especially uh, Gmod Idiot Box. Yeah. Was definitely, like, the, the huge. Oh, yeah, that was massive back then. Holy shit. 
y'all don't forget about DSP and partnered with <laughs> Machinima. <laughs> Well, yeah, we, we can't forget. We, we, can't forget, we Kirby, cannot forget the, the one true well. king, <laughs> the king of hate. Could you could you imagine like being such a salty salty bastard that you adopt your they own your own title uh, as the king of hate, and then like ask people to buy shirts of like the king of hate? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, what was I going to say? I, it, it's it's almost like. I I don't know. I mean, I don't really watch uh, Let's Players, so I'm sure there's other better examples. But the the one I kind of he's not even a Let's Player. He's actually like an extremely uh, meticulous analyst, but he's he kind of has that memey format. Um, I I feel like a lot of these new creators just saw how successful and how funny. Uh, 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 what, what the hell is his name? Seth Sin uh, Sintak was yeah and are kind of kind of doing seth light like i noticed um yep. have you ever have you watched any of uh strat edgy's content he's kind of has i have been not picking... i have not watched Strat Edgy. yeah he used to be kind of like fairly serious uh analysis he'd have like his own commentary and stuff like that but he was trying to anal analyze games in a fairly fairly serious tone now he's kind of become like mimi but he's in this really awkward state now where he's he starts out super memes like oh lol you know kind of seth light sort of style but then the rest of this video is very dry analysis and then he just sticks kind of like fake sponsorship ads that are tied to the game he's covering right in the middle so he's in this really weird kind of limbo between uh very much like 4chan humor meme uh stuff but like 20 percent of that but 80 percent fairly serious uh analysis with an occasional f-bomb thrown in it's just a very weird middle ground like it's not very funny yeah. And you can't really take the anal uh, analysis very seriously either. Ironically, uh, Seth, uh, Seth's stuff is so well researched that you can kind of take the analysis as seriously as well, even though he's he's talking about insane stuff and throwing all these like fortune humor references in here. So it's weird. Yeah, I still think his um, Morrowind video is like one of the funniest fucking videos about Morrowind, <laughs> but also just trigger. on the platform. I just I just get annoyed at his Space Station Thirteen video because. One, he wasn't showing like actual rounds being played. He was all offline and him puppeting, marionetting everything and trying to recreate stories he had. The beauty about Space Age 13 is you can make new stories every single, damn near every single fucking round. Um, but he was also like telling people this is the way the game is played. And it's it's like a, a guide on how to get banned from every single fucking server on Space Station 13 instead. It's like, dude. God, the set tide was awful. It was awful in Space Station 13 because so many of them were like, oh, I watched Seth's video, so I'm going to run around and I'm going to just shoot anybody that's playing a non-human character. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I got banned. Well, this place is shit. They would just, oh, God, it was fucking horrible. I have not watched that one or played the game, so I can't comment. But, yeah, that doesn't seem like it's... Yeah, it, it, was, it was a really bad one. Like, the, the Space Station 13 community hates it. Not because... And not because they hate Seth, they love Seth's videos, but they're like, my God, that video is just really bad. And M9, who I started watching my streams, uh, yeah, I invented an entire new alloy on one of the servers called Erectrum. <laughs> 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 and it is the the most powerful um, alloy that it has the most uh, capacity of any battery alloy and recharges uh, at a very good rate. Um, of any alloy in the entire game. So uh, it, it's perfect that it got named Erectrum. And I was like, oh, that is beautiful. That's pretty great. I, I think my favorite videos from uh, Seth are videos I played uh, back in release, back in like the 90s, early 2000s. And he revisits them and yeah. breaks them breaks them so, so completely to like such an absurd degree and points out like huge balancing issues in a, in a humorous way, like uh, as heroes... Here's the Might Magic stuff, Might Magic, yes. um, and uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, personal kind of favorite of mine was uh, Lords of Magic. That game, I played Chaos, and he like completely dunks on how difficult Chaos is, is to play, and it like completely vindicated my playthrough, because I'm like, I don't have flying units, I suck so much, why is this? I just thought I was bad, but apparently, uh, uh, I think it's Chaos, the, ones that, the guys that like ride little tigers, I think they were like super, super underpowered, so I'm like, I felt vindicated by his video, because... He, yeah. he he seems to I, I don't apparently he kind of slips up occasionally with a space station or whatever but he seems to put an insane amount of hours into his videos 
Yeah, and like I said, I there wasn't anything there that is like, yeah, you could do all that stuff. It's just what was what sucked so much about it was you should show an actual round being played because they're all fascinating. Like Kratos and Pagan, at least I've shown them videos of like actual like Space Station thirteen rounds of people playing them, and they are the, fascinating to watch. The fucking snail wizard was the snail wizard. Goddamn so good. glorious. So, I, again, I will cut this tangent as short as humanly possible, but there is an antagonist type in Space Station 13 called Wizard, and this particular <laughs> guy came up with a clever idea for his wizard thing. So instead of just being a normal wizard and throwing fireballs everywhere and shit like that, he instead went to his magic mirror and he changed his race into a snail. So now he's a snail that has fireballs. But besides that, he's like, well, I now I'm a snail, so I, I'm not going to be very fast, so I need defense. So he gave himself super defensive armor, magic armor. Then he's like, well, people are still going to be able to attack me. I need some way to attack them back without just relying on fireballs and everything, because that's all going to be on cooldown. So he gave himself a spell that allows him to summon guns into his hands. <laughs> so, he's, so he went to the station, and he laid on the floor and starts crawling on the floor, and the whole thing about the snail is that it leaves behind a goop, a slime on the ground that will slip anybody that steps on it. And if you get slipped, you drop all the stuff in your hands. So nobody could follow or chase him because they would slip and fall and come right to him and he'd be able to kill them in melee <laughs> while their guns and everything were back on the floor where they slipped. Wizards have no concept of right and wrong. <laughs> they, they literally don't. That's the whole beauty in Space Station 13 is the Wizard Federation does what the Fitter Wizard Federation does. They don't give a shit about you. You are you are mortals. You are beneath them. This is all okay because it's for uh, a story about space wizards for children, so... Yeah, oh god. Uh, <laughs> if if you stick around Indigo afterwards, and Skib as well, we will watch, we should absolutely watch the snail, the wizard snail round. It is so well, fucking good. That would require us getting through uh, this video, which we've been yep. going for nearly... We've been going for over two hours and 40 minutes. We are two minutes and 36 seconds into this thing. We have <laughs> got to get on the move. Yeah, you're, that's you're, fair. You're, you know what get yeah. you 10 times as many viewers if you rebrand it to some ta uh, short tangents are good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are changing the name from, from some, you know, suffering through abject garbage. It's being changed to some tangents are guaranteed. I'm just yeah, that was, slacking that on that. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Yes. Some witch was trying to make some sort of super powerful soul gem. And a dead end. Well, that's a bummer, but I must be missing something. Oh, well, it's time to get back on the road and... Oh, shit! Skeletons! Okay, I'm... Uh, we're gonna have to be careful of copyright uh, here let me know when uh yeah this, this is yeah i i i played this song at the beginning of my halloween stream and got it flagged so yeah careful about this one yeah also imagine using this as like oh yeah see this game is amazing it has skeletons guys yeah that's just really yeah. pathetic wow, oh my never, god i've never played a game with skeletons in it before oh my god yeah, skeletons it, it, they're like a super basic enemy at this point pretty yes. much any any fantasy RPG is going to have skeleton, rat, and uh, some Spiders. sort of yeah spider. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> actually, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. Uh, shortly th uh, through one of the videos that uh, oh, Patricia was covering, I think yesterday, he um, he made a rule where basically it's like if, if a joke seems like it's going to be cringe, I'm just going to skip it. And so yeah. like as soon as like it was like, and here here we go, Did -did -did -did. he's just like right 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 right. It's five five seconds skip all the way. Through the thing. And, like <laughs> people are like. Thank you, cringe averted. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we told, uh, as we told Patricia, he's like, "No, why are you doing the entire Skyrim ad about being on the refrigerator and everything? This is too much cringe. This is too much cringe." <laughs> and we were like, "Ah, you merely adopted the cringe. We were born in the cringe." Yeah. We were explaining like some of the people that we had to cover, and he's like, "Yeah, to be fair, you people, you people cover like crazy lunatics from space clown <laughs> logic." It's like. Yeah. Uh, Good. uh hmm? but yeah this happened twice this super chat i don't know what happened there but we have three australian uh outbacks from get out here yo 
How's the journey into game design? Make an F it follow New Vegas mod? I've never... Re I've tried modding, like, years ago, but I never released anything, and uh, it's nev not... I never stuck with it. Yeah. And so, yeah, there there we go. I have no idea why his super chat came up twice. I saw it on the on Kree's uh, stream as well. It came up twice. I don't know what happened. Um, hopefully he didn't get double charged, but uh, yeah. What we might want to do is my, somebody might want to scout ahead and find the, the time code and then just skip to that, just to skip that song altogether. Well, um, um, well, well, what Cree does, he usually mutes uh, his. And yeah, then we turned... just go through it normally yeah, yeah, on our. Yeah, yeah, I play through it and then just turn turn it back on once the song's done, just for, to be safe. Yeah, yeah. I think we All did right. that in the previous video, right? You ready, Cree? Yeah, I've got it muted. All right. Well, he's done with it now. All right. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully it'll be done. If we hear it come up again, we'll pause it. Hopefully the cringe just fucking ends. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I know, it's continuing. That was pretty spooky. It's time to get some loot. Oh, God. Well, that... What? You didn't... I hate that you used this song, but it's a good song. I hate that you used it. Yeah, the Pillar Men theme doesn't belong here. It doesn't fit. No, no. You're talking about, like, a basic bitch enemy, and you're playing the theme for, like, a major, major, major antagonist in JoJo. It's like, I, I really like the Pillarmen. They're good villains. I like the Pillarmen, but I like them because of the, uh, of... I, I don't really like JoJo, and as much as that has been a discussion multiple times. But I like the Pillarmen because of the Pillar Stodies from uh, the Emperor Had Texas Speech Device, where they use the song and... They're literal. They use the the forty kified version of the Pillarman. It's so fucking good. <laughs> you know, this is starting to remind me of. Um, remember that ad that everybody hated uh, a few years ago? Actually, had starred the um, the girl that was going to be in TLJ. Uh, what's her name? Oh the, no. Uh, I cannot think of her, her name. The one with the funny hair. Um, uh, Laura Dern. <laughs> No, the other one, the other funny hair. Sorry, not the not the admiral. The uh, the kind of mechanic who had a sister. I can't remember. Her name. Oh, uh, uh, Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Both are correct, I guess. But anyway, she was start, she started there, and it, all it was was like a commercial that was supposed to appeal to the millennials or the Zoomers. I don't know what at that point in time. But all it was was like a person walks over to another person at a party, does a meme. It had the you know. <laughs> the the guy the the old uh victorian age uh guy who points to the camera and is like you know it's just like meme after meme after meme it was just a bunch of reference to memes kind of reminds me of this this has just been oh spooky skeletons oh uh pillar man oh this oh that isn't this funny yeah hmm. uh kingaroo says ectosis can you please make a stag on such not liking jojo please He's he has every right to not like JoJo. I have, I have said multiple times why I don't like JoJo as well, and it, it is very much a lot of it comes from it, the way it starts. Yeah, JoJo starts off rough, and there's a lot of like weirdness throughout the series, but I still think overall it's pretty decent. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun experience. It's better I, than a lot I, of I the other try, anime. I have tried to get into it, I just can't, and it's that that taste in my mouth. Um, the, that taste in my mouth from, from the first season was so bad, where they literally would just pull shit out of their ass every fucking episode. Ooh. Yeah, that's totally just the first season. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I know, I know it <laughs> happens more and more, like the fucking bubble shit and everything. It's literally, like, every episode, and I love it so much. I, I hate it. <laughs> they they got more consistent later on with not doing that. Like, yeah, they'd be like that, but it, it seemed more believable. It wasn't like, Oh, but you didn't know I have this breath technique, so I can stay underwater for days. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's like what? Wait, how? <laughs> kind of, kind of like a just Family Guy writing where they rely on on lol random, you know, lol random reference. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not so much reference though. It's just like yeah. characters are it... playing each other in ways that are impossible. Like that's yeah. kind of the, one of my frustrations with uh, with Death Note actually, because it's like. These two super geniuses are constantly outsmarting each other, and like, it, just 
it's it should be impossible for them to like guess some of these plans, but they pull it off every time anyways. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I, I do I do like how Death Note I, I think probably the disappointing thing about uh just law random sort of writing or oh actually I had this super superpower that's never been mentioned before is the lack of setup. Yeah. I think if I, I, I it's been a couple of years since I watched Death Note. I really like Death Note, but uh I think most of it was set up unless there was a specific reason why we wouldn't know that. Like, I think at one point, spoiler, I think he loses his memory. And so we're not completely privy on what he remembers because we never saw his his plans uh, for why that yeah. was and things like that. That kind of worked. It was a little bit of a, you know, we weren't in the know because um, we were just seeing uh, this currently memory washed character uh kind of going through this this whole thing and we're like is, he, is this an act is it real whatever but for the most part yeah i mean they were insanely intelligent that's that's kind of like how our high school students this this smart yeah but uh for the most part i was kind of on board with them, them just being like absurd geniuses that were just extremely uh intuitive and just kind of figured okay well i'm i'm a i'm a crazy psychopath who's thought of 500 ways to uh outdo this person what would i do okay he he'd probably do that let me let me counteract that or make a plan for this and so a lot of it was in their head but i i i, I kind of was long for the ride the the second half of that show kind of takes a downturn but yeah that's what people are saying in chat too and something i agree with after l um yeah after l takes an l the the show goes downhill i agree with that yeah um uh, Senator Abby Strong basically sums up my feelings on why I just couldn't get in JoJo. And I, guys, I made it all the way up to uh, Yosuke jo Joestar or whatever. Yosuke Joestar. Yep. Oh, so part I, four uh, where? Yeah, I and I was I was struggling the whole yeah. way to get there. Yeah, I think I think my my uh, my point was uh, and all that is setup and payoff. If it's just well, payoff, uh, it it it's, it just comes it kind of. Si it's just like a sucker punch. It just like, hits you, and all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, when did this come in play? Yeah. And, and, and as Senator Abby Strong puts it, it's like watching two kids on a playground playing superheroes, and they and they always come up with something new to explain how they didn't lose. Yeah, it's like, that's yeah. actually, that's how my girlfriend explained it, because we're getting, we're like partially through part two now, and she's like, it's just like when I was a kid and someone shot me with a laser and I'm like, I, I have a force field that stops lasers and yeah. But at yeah. the same time, it's just, it's, it's a fun show just to throw up. And like, but, just... like for me, it, it just hurt. It just hurts too but, much. I just can't. But yeah, no, I get it. You gave it a good shot too. You got, you got through. I mean, like, I'll be honest, part three can be a drag because it is constantly just that every episode is just up random, random stand. And I love it. I love it and everything, but I can completely understand why you don't like it. And the fact that you got through part three, like, I, got, I commend you for that and you not liking it. Yeah, I, I, and like I said, I've, I've tried really hard because I get it. And there are funny things I like. Like, I do, I, I do like the Pillar Men. It is, it is fascinating. And like I said, mine mostly comes from the Pillar Stodies, but it works because they work. Yeah. Like, uh, I came up with a really terrible example apologize for the uh, analogy but i came with a really terrible example of like what what kind of how a, a humorous uh ra random injection could be funny and how and how it just kind of comes out of nowhere and, and and superficially it could still be funny but it doesn't really make for good writing like let's yeah. say there's some, there's some wimpy kid on the on the school on the the playground who keeps on getting beaten up by bullies and he's like you know just wait till my dad hears about this he's a bodybuilder he's super strong but he keeps on getting his ass kicked every single day right um, like a good writing would be like, keeps, uh, this kid keeps on talking about how strong his dad is and, and, you know, like, oh, one day my dad's going to kick your ass. So, and so and so like that, but he keeps on getting his ass kicked. So, uh, a, a, that'd be how like, um, a good writing would be like kind of planting that seed. My dad's super strong. He's a bodybuilder. He's going to kick your ass, but then he keeps on getting beaten up. And until one day, all of a sudden, uh, right in the, right when the bullies attack him, the rock comes in and kicks their asses. He's like, see, my dad's super strong. That'd be kind of a setup and payoff. Yeah. Now, now, if the whole time that the kid just get, kept on getting his ass kicked and didn't mention his dad, didn't mention his dad, didn't mention his dad, and then all of a sudden the Rock comes in, we're like, oh, that's okay. I guess his dad's the Rock. We didn't, yeah. ha we don't have that set up. We don't have that to kind of seed planted to kind of to kind of pay it off. Like we didn't know that his 
this kid could be lying. This kid could, could just be dumb. But we have not. We have that seed, and it's paid off that his ro the rocks his dad. So it's a really again really terrible example. But Ooh. it's the difference between oh lol random to like oh we, we kind of were told that 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 could be a thing. You know so. what's a, you know what's a um, this that reminds me of Mob Psycho One Hundred is a great anime and manga. Very very good. And then the Netflix adaptation is terrible. And a great example of how to explain how terrible it is, is they ruin one of the best jokes in the early, uh, oh, early issues yeah. of the manga and the anime. And the joke is, is um, he is a psychic. He is probably the most powerful psychic that has ever existed. He is like ludicrous power levels. Um, and it's from the same, it's from the same um, writer who does one punch man. Um, and, and again, all Mob Psycho 100 is completely done now. You can get the entire story. It is it is fantastic. Yeah. Um, but he uh, so he is joining. He he has the choice of joining this uh, the Psychics Club and everything like that. And you know he he's interested and they're pushing for it real hard for him to join everything like that. And but this club is getting shut down because it doesn't have members. And they're like, all you do is you're taking your club allowance and you're just getting junk food and everything like that. You're not an actual club. This is ridiculous. We're gonna we're gonna put this space to better use. Well, um, he gets there for the final day, and the president, the student president, shows up and he's like, I just wanted you to meet the club who wants to take over this place. And it's these big bodybuilders and everything like that. And they come in and they're like, they have the menacing pose and everything like that. They're in shadow and they're like flexing and twitching their muscles. They're like ripped. These, 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 these kids have like their, their, their whole thing is that they're ripped and they are known as the body improvement club and they are fantastic. And he sits there and he's thinking about it and they're like, no way mobs joining us and we're going and we're, you know, we're going to stay as a club because we got the requisite number of members. And Mob is thinking this through and everything, and they're like, "Are you sure you want to join the join Mob and everything? This is this is a big deal." And he suddenly bright light lights up real bright, and he goes, "Yes, I would like to join your club." And he bows his head, and everyone in the room is shocked. And then the camera pulls out, and he's bowing to the Body Improvement Club. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he joins the Body Improvement Club because he thought it through in his mind and girls get bored with his psychic powers because they're like i've seen that before but what they love is a man who can take care of himself and is strong so he joins the body improvement club instead that's yeah, funny it's so good and they are great i fucking love them they are some of my favorite characters in the whole show yes i yeah. fucking love them and they are genuinely genuinely good people yeah they are so good. Like, they literally, like, try to, like, they give their lives for him. Oh, God. Yeah. Bob Psycho of... knows how to do writing and characters correct. Yeah. Like, even it's... side characters oh. like that are, and it's like, oh, my God. Like, you actually feel for them. Like, these side characters that you think start out as a joke actually are, like, actually come into play later in the series. And it's absolutely wonderful and perfect writing. Yeah. Yeah. And they get the whole, like... They do subversion correctly where, you know, you first see them and they look like these big hulking jocks and they, you know, like yes. the twitching muscles and stuff. And you think, oh, these guys, guys, you know, these guys are going to be assholes. These they're are the bullies. Like, yeah. yeah, they're going to be like, get the fuck out of our club. This is ours now and shit. And they're not like that at all. They are genuinely good people. Yep. They what, literally. What? Oh, I'm sorry, Indigo. You, you can speak. Oh, no. It, you go ahead. You're finish that point. I was just going to say, um. Is literally the episode where the delinquents of the school, you know, which again you would think is them being the muscle guys, but no, like you know, they're yeah. incredibly nice. The delinquents start shit, and Mob gets caught up and you know being too nice, whatever, doesn't want to start anything, and they literally show up and they're like, "Hey, we don't want to hurt anyone, just give us Mob." And all the other delinquents are like, "Nah, fuck you, we're gonna fight." And they're like, "All right, sure, fine," and literally use like one percent of their power just because. And it, also, no, they're supposed to be middle schoolers, I think. <laughs> and yes. They're like, they're like and six, they're having six, actual like <laughs> gang wars across the city and everything too. It's like, oh, gee. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, but it, it's, it works yeah. so well. It does and oh, I yeah. I love how how just genuine and again they play that stereotype because they even give they even give um like the body improvement club they give them that kind of thuggish oh they 
they're the stereotypical Japanese delinquent look. Then you see the actual delinquents. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Well, and I one... like that one of the delinquents becomes part of the body improvement club and he genuinely yes. gets better. And he becomes a great person and everything. Yeah. He is, it, because as he gets stronger, he starts realizing his va- what his values in life are. And, oh my God. Bob Psycho Bob Psych- 100, highly recommended. Watch yes. it and read the manga. It is great. Easily my top, like, top five anime of all time. I will be right back, guys. But... All right. And uh, yeah. uh, that is uh, definitely something we need to get Kree to watch at some point with us. <laughs> yes. We've got a lot just... on the go, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to it eventually. Don't worry. You will watch it. I was just going to mention uh, another really good comedic payoff that I thought of way better than my terrible example that I came off the top of my head. Um, old reference, but uh, Mystery Men, kind of an overlooked. Uh, yes. You know, it was. It was. Uh, it was weird because it was really ahead of its time. I think it was before both X Men and Spider Man, but it was already parodying yep. this the superhero genre, really ahead of its time. A, a lo- it's basically like the leftover shitty superheroes save the day. That's the premise, right? But uh, but I. I, I, I love the movie, but uh, one payoff that was great is that they, they recruit all these like terrible superheroes that have like a very, very specific, very useless ability. Yeah. And one of the guys, one of the guys they recruit is like the invisible boy. And he's yes, like, I, 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 it's like, I, I, I can turn invisible. And it's like, oh, really? That's crazy. And it's like, yeah, but I have to be naked and nobody can look at me. And they're like, oh, OK, that's kind of useless yeah. but, oh, so... whatever, <laughs> but whatever. And then and then like that was the setup. And like he was always kind of useless because he. He couldn't. He couldn't ever use his ability because if you, if, if, if you looked at him, you couldn't. Uh, his ability wouldn't work until the point in time where there was like a security camera, and there was some situation where like the security camera would like detect him and and or and like it, there, was, there was some. It, it there was de-atomizes some, somebody. Yeah, it, de-atomizes somebody. It, if, it, if, if it sees if you, it, it de-atomizes. Right. So it's like now's my time to shine. So he takes off all his clothes and then it's like, wait, nobody look at me. And then he was able to like sneak through there and do this amazing thing because no human was looking at him while he did it. And it's like kind of a funny setup and payoff where you think something's a power is uh, completely useless until a very specific uh, situation arises and it's funny. And then yeah. and then it's like, you know, I did it, I did it. And then they, they look at him and he's naked. But, I did uh, it, I did it, I'm invisible, can you see me? And everybody turns and looks at him and they go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to put some pants on if you want to continue fighting evil today. Yeah, good, good, a good setup and payoff and a, a comedic, you know, Way a good movie. I recommend watching it. Dude, all all of the all of their powers are great. Like the guy with unstoppable rage, but he, he gets his ass kicked all the time. Mister Furious, yeah. He's yes, like, oh, and then the guy who can only he's he's a British guy who pretends to be Indian and he can only throw forks. Isn't is he like an American guy? It, it's a uh, it's the guy who does a lot of voices in The Simpsons. He's like just an American yeah. guy, but he's he's pretending to be. He's an American guy who's pretending to be British who is pretending to be an Indian nobleman. Yeah, and he has to explain his whole uh, Blue Raja thing, even though he doesn't wear blue or whatever. Yes. <laughs> very weird. Very weird selection of people, but yeah, it, I know. It's, and they, they come up with a guy who, like, they're, they're like, we need weapons. We need to be able to fight back. So they find, like, this creative weapons inventor, and he's all talking about how everything is non-lethal. And they all go, well, this is a complete fucking waste of time. And they go to leave. <laughs> And then he throws he throws a grenade at them and he's like grenade out and he throws the grenade and it opens up a tornado and grabs the the dude and flings him in the air and he's like yeah it's non lethal I didn't say it was useless a can tornado yeah that's like the word play it's funny good movie yeah. uh, I recommend watching it. it it was just amazingly ahead of its time because by that time we had gotten Superman and Batman and I don't even, I don't think we even got Blade yet and that was pretty much like the major superhero movies we'd seen so. It yeah. completely preempted the whole Superman, X Men, Marvel Cinematic Universe craze that would happen the following decade. Yeah, it, it is incredible. Fucking uh, the, I, I just love like e- even when they meet one who has what seems to be more of a useful superpower, the bowler, uh-huh. and she's like, she's like, yeah, my, I, I have my father's skull put inside this bowling ball, and now his soul like is in the bowling ball. And she actually has arguments with her dad. She'll be like, what? No. And then she'll open up her bowling bag and look down and go, dad, stop it. <laughs> um, um, so I... And she's like, the, the police didn't investigate. And like, they didn't. 
Yeah, they said he accidentally fell down an elevator onto some bullets. Fifteen of them. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, wow. <laughs> I, I hate to interrupt the uh, conversation, but we played like five <laughs> seconds of the video and paused for two and a half hours again. Yeah, ah, we, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta push through the cringe. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm good now. I've got plenty of loot. There's no reason to keep. Oh, is that a cabin? Drellos. That's a pretty nerdy name. I wonder if he can help me with this math homework the College of Winterhold gave me. Or... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna steal his shit. Got you, bitch! Well, that guy I murdered didn't even have shit worth murdering for. Uh, come on, cobbler. It's not murder because he attacks you and there's nothing of, like, any interest or note in that cabin. It's just a cabin with a hostile guy in it. We've talked yeah. about it before on stream. Literally nothing. I, I don't want to interrupt it anymore, but like, God, I cannot get this format. What is this format? This format is, yeah. he, he's trying to cringe the audience to death. Especially when, again, your video is Skyrim, a bittersweet masterpiece. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is kind of like, I imagine the kind of nega, uh, you know, bizarro indigo gaming, uh, um, Elder Scrolls Promise Unfulfilled kind of video from that title. Like, I, I imagine like a very kind of yeah. somber, uh, serious look at how great Skyrim is and how misunderstood it is or whatever or like it's it's con it's conflicting design or something like that but this is just yeah uh what, what did we say before uh PowerPoint ma machinima it's pretty accurate yeah. yeah yeah basically it's just a montage of like oh look how this thing sucks look how everything in this game sucks and that's all it's been so far yeah this is really like ooh. all right here we go you do it for the not the money wait what the fuck that's a spooky looking ghost right there what's he oh doing oh my god here? we get it friendly? fucking move Stay on. on i'm sorry this isn't what i want i'm sorry this isn't what i want uh, uh, uh what's going on somebody wants to uh, oh, no. fucking god damn it move on all right Muted, because it's another yep. one of those, yeah. Alright, here we go. Oh, he's done. Wow, okay, so it's literally like... Alright. It, it's like he knows he can't play more than like a couple seconds, so he just does the half ass the meme. Yeah, alright. Here we go. Oh, okay, sweet. A bunch of loot just sitting here undefended. I don't know what I expected. Oh, yes. Yeah! Doesn't even fit. The memes don't even fit. No, right? they don't. Yeah, especially because it's so that the thing is one of the most obvious fucking traps in existence. Yeah, I saw the whole and and the the meme is from a fantastic show, uh, Arrested Development, where he opens up the freezer and his brother left a, a brown paper bag called "Dead Bird Don't Open," and he opens up it and he sees a dead bird and he's like, "I don't know what I expected." <laughs> it's funny because it's such like an, a non joke. Yeah, but. Like, you accidentally walk into a pit that's that doesn't fit. It'd be like it'd be like uh, the better better format would be uh, cursed chest. He opens up the cursed chest and he gets cursed. Oh, I don't know what I expected. You know, yeah, that'd, but that'd be at least the right format. Remember, Indigo, we don't have trap chests anymore or doors or anything. <laughs> yeah. Hey, remember this cool idea from Morrowind that they fucking never did again? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with Daniel mm -hmm. K. Gotcha, bitch. Would have fitted way better for there. Actually, yeah. Well, technically, there is trap chests. They're just really poorly done. There's, like, the spikes that shoot out of the oh, wall. Well, and... yeah, that's different, though. Yeah. The, the Morrowind trap chests were, like, enchanted to damage or poison you. And uh, they could really fuck you up. In this game, it's just they're pointless to be trapped because one, the spikes, you just take one step back and they miss you. And secondly, you can clearly see the trap. It's literally a rope coming out of the fucking chest and going into the ground. And it's like, OK, well, this is definitely trapped. Now, where's the things coming out? Oh, there's holes in the wall right behind it. So let me just stand to the side. Well, even then, then they even, won't... even if you get hit by them, they don't do that much damage. Yeah, they do like fucking five points of damage at most. And every single character has re mana regen and healing spells. So yeah. it's no big deal. Yeah. That goes. Sorry. And also, this is a pathetic trap because, hey, what if I'm a spellcaster? What if I'm an archer? 
That guy right there is fucking dead. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, welcome back, Skib. Also, doesn't he keep the key right next to the fucking thing where you can just reach through and grab it? <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how you get out. There's a dead body of his apprentice or something. Yep. And he has a key on his body, and he just leaves it right next to the cage. And you could just reach through and grab the key and open the door. Yeah, that is extra pathetic. Reminds me of uh, a sort of trope uh, acknowledgement, almost like lampshading. I think it was in Final Fantasy XV, where in some dungeon there was a gate, no keyhole, no anything, but the gate just won't open. But later on, you, you double back, and then the gate opens from the other side. And I think one of the characters, the kind of com comic relief sidekick guy, is like, huh, that's weird that the gate, gate opens from that side. Huh. He just kind of like acknowledges it, and it's like, that is kind of silly, because a, a lot of the gates like that will just magically open from the other side, even though you could easily reach around and, you know, pull the lever from the other side if, if that was all that was needed. Generally, you'd need a key or something like that. Yeah. I just, I, I like that acknowledgement of that. It doesn't make it any less stupid in the game, but it, it is kind of funny that they acknowledge that, because it, it is... It's something we've all gotten used to in video games is that just some doors open from the other side without any key. But <laughs> well, there's that. Uh, th thankfully, when stuff like that happens, it's in like uh, the Soul series. They're usually like, oh, you you unlatch it or something like that. Like you pull out the the uh, bar on the door, and then that's how you open it. Yeah, sometimes. But, um, Not always, yeah, but yeah, sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. Um, yes. Especially with like a grill gate, like where you could obviously reach through it if there was some sort of latch. Those are the kind of silly ones. If it's a solid door, I'd understand. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh god. The the worst ones are the ones where they're literally wide enough that if you were able to turn sideways, you'd be able to go through. Hmm. It's just like. Ah. Anyway, bring on the cringe. Yeah, it's yep. continuing. You fuck. Greed makes a great lure. Do you get it? I mean, you get it, right? I'm yes. halfway there. We, we get it that you're wasting time and you're showing why this game is so fucking annoying and tedious. Yes. I, I thought about this for 10 seconds and already thought of a better meme. Use the, you, you've fallen into my trap card. Your death awaken, awaits or whatever. Yeah. From uh, <laughs> Borderlands 2. That at least fit better. Yeah, that would fit way better. I think that one of the problems with this is that he's just, it's too rapid. Uh, it's just like back to back to back to back meme, 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 meme. It just doesn't yeah, really. It's, it's not even that. It's just that they don't fit or don't work. Yeah. Don't and fit, especially because your whole thing is you're talking about how much this game has magic and it's, it's so mystical like, and everything like that and how great this is. And it's like, and you're showing what makes it so tedious and obnoxious. I've already forgotten about that. He says this game is a magic, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But yeah, and then he's yeah. just quickly splicing these pieces together, being like, "Wow, now I'm done here." Like it, the one other thing, he's not not only are the memes coming up so quick, but each section here, he's like making it seem like he shows up to the spot, gets it done, and then he's over with. He literally says like, "Up oh, that what I'm done here," and then he just leaves. And he's like, "Oh, cool skeletons," and it's like you you're making. You're not doing a benefit towards the game that you called a magic by sitting there being like, yeah, these are cool little areas just to go in for five minutes. Get it done. It's kind of useless. Like, he literally says, like, the, the lore shit is useless. There's nothing to it. He's done there in one of the sections. So it's like you're not yeah. doing any. I don't I don't know. Like, at this point, what side are you on? It yeah. just seems more like a cry for help from uh, terminal ADHD at this point. Like he's just like, Oh, let me look at that. Oh wait. Oh, let me look at that. Oh wait. Oh, let me look at that. Oh wait. Oh, this is what's this over here. Oh wait. Oh, Hey, and, yeah. It literally does feel like that. Cause he's like going from place to place. He's like, Oh man, well that kind of sucked. Oh, something else over here. Oh, that kind of sucked too. Oh, look, something else. <laughs> oh, shiny. it's just like, it's like, he can't stop for five seconds long enough to think that, Oh, maybe this game isn't actually that you good. Know. I should just, Go play it's, something else. Uh, but then he sees something. And he's like, "Oh, something else." You know what it is? It's the it's the joke in the Souls community, but real. Oh, piece of candy. Oh, piece of candy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, piece of candy. Seriously. Yeah. It's, it's kind it's, of funny because he's also not because he's like, "Oh, I gotta go do the main quest," but 
oh, wow, these skeletons over here are more interesting. Oh, this bandit camp over here is more interesting. It's like you're almost making it seem like there's nothing more interesting than just these little, like, pointless dungeons on the side. Yeah, these literal pointless like, dungeons on the side that are just there to kind of fill up land. Yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> I bet you Wiggy, I beat you too. At, at this point, if you shaved off the intro, I would think he's bashing the game to oblivion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It, it's just weird. It's like it's like a video essay uh, written by the dog from Up. It's like, so Skyrim is a video game that uh, explores, uh, you know, uh, Norse mythology and a uh, squirrel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're almost halfway through, and this is all he's done. Like, dude, how are you supposed to fucking explain how this is a bittersweet masterpiece when you're almost halfway through your video and all you've done is shit on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's odd. Uh, I, I, one of these, um, when I, I was just kind of uh, casually watching Patricia's video yesterday and it had that same problem there where like all you have to do when you read it, I'm assuming this is scripted. Maybe it's just kind of, you know, impromptu done as it, as it went along, but look at your title or maybe <laughs> yeah. you didn't have a title yet, but just remember to look at your title and remember what this video is about. <laughs> Yeah. Skyrim being a magic. Yeah, Skyrim <laughs> is a magic. <laughs> yep. Uh, $5 from Lethargic Slash Kitten. Thank you. These random anecdotal side quests have no substance. They're brain dead diversions, nothing more. I kind of disagree with, like, maybe in Skyrim they are, but other games do side quests well. Yeah. He's, he's actually not even giving, like, I, I don't particularly love Skyrim at all, as many, you know, shocker. Yeah. But, uh, I, I think he's doing these quests a disservice. Even I think he's making them look dumber than they are than they I'm, are in the game. That's the yeah. thing, though, is I'm not even sure they're quests. I think they're just random dungeons, like the house with the guy who will attack you. That's there's nothing attached to that. It's just a random named dude in a random house in a field. If you step inside, he'll attack you. But like that ghost who's like, I don't want to do this. Like if that's actually from the game, I'm sure there's a story behind that, right? Probably <sighs> not really. There is somewhat. It's basically just uh, oh, hold on. you fight your way through. I'll, what? I'll, I'll be right what? back. I'm going to mute. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, you basically just fight your way through these ghosts, and you get you know you get to that place where you fall through in the trap and stuff, and then you find out oh, it's a necromancer who was killing people and raising the dead as like. And th th I mean that's literally it. There's nothing else to it more than that, other than it's literally just a. A camp of bandits, but the bandits are ghosts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With a necromancer at like the head of everything, being the one causing all of it. Yeah, I mean that's at least that's that's more interesting and more uh, fleshed out than than he presented it as, though. Like uh, you think yeah. that if, if he's talking about bittersweet masterpiece, I mean maybe maybe his uh, his take at the beginning is not what he's going to land at the at the end, but I'm assuming he's going to. He's this is just memeville trying to get people to laugh and like his video, and then at the end he's going to say how great Skyrim is. I, that's my assumption because I've seen videos <sighs> do that before. <laughs> it doesn't Maybe. make any sense. I mean, it's a pretty bad way to do it if your memes to try and get people to laugh literally hurt your own argument. Yeah. yeah. It, Maybe don't do that then. Yeah, that, that's why I don't gonna understand this format. This is a completely wrong format for this type of video. If that if that's what he's actually trying to do. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, we gotta wait for Kree to continue. All right. Yeah. What, what what's a good tangent? Wait, hold on. Did we get the second super chat? We can get oh, these the two waiter. super chats real quick. Um, there's two. Uh, final super chat from Lethargic slash Kitten. Thank you very much. I think that Kree got that first one, didn't he? Um, Talking about the anecdotal side quest. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Actually, well, you might have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll do Wayfarer. Then uh, final super chat from the Wayfarer. Thank you very much. This guy is a twit more focused on being funny or edgy than actually explaining his arguments. Just look at his Bioshock retrospective. Oh, I no. would be terrified. No, oh, he has Bioshock no. videos? Hold on, does he think Infinite's a good game? Hold on. Or, uh, or, Probably. Uh, okay, is it? Wait, hold on. Yeah, it's Infinite. God damn, so many games have been Infinite in it. J. <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah, Infinite is definitely becoming one of those words, for sure. Yeah, I, I guess I take it as a, a sign of personal growth that I I loved Infinite when I originally played it. Now I'm like, uh. <laughs> I was uh, yeah, well, I, we, we I talked was... about it before. Um, it, it's honeymoon period syndrome. A lot, a, a part of what it comes to getting.
better as a critic is realizing when you're going through it, when you realize when you're having that honeymoon period feeling. Yeah. And I, I was looking at it extremely uncritically. I was just like kind of yeah. in the moment and, and like, Oh wow, this is such an interesting twist. I, this is so cool. I mean, it, it can kind of see it from a million miles away now, but uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it has some cool things, but it, it, I think the, I'd say the biggest problem that the game has just it's complete incongruency that between the gameplay and the the story like the original Bioshock was just kind of like a uh, uh, anarchist nightmare where just anything goes uh, let's have gun let's have gun vending machines and <laughs> and yeah. evil magic you know uh, syringes that can give you all the all this unfathomable and dangerous power uh, while uh a thousand miles from civilization so nobody no actual nation or authority can stop you so like that it was a very it was it, it worked but the setting of rapture and the setting of columbia are so different yeah and they just they just don't make any fucking sense yeah columbia is like why does columbia exist why and, and why is it like Rapture, you can see the time and effort and putting it under the water where no one can see it. Nobody can observe it. You can't have anybody accidentally come and visit it. You you have to know Rapture exists. Well, I mean, yeah. But like, yeah, but then you get... Fu and the other thing is that it's in, what, the 60s, if I remember yeah. correctly? R Rapture compared 60s, to yeah. 1918 and having a floating city, which is... Yep. What? way more difficult and also just the resources uh yeah and how are you can... how would you ever hide it it's a fucking massive it's not like a small city in the sky it is massive if it drifts anywhere near any population center how the hell is not everybody gonna know it's there yeah i mean yeah. i guess i guess they it's both a blessing and a curse the 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 timeline because they they knew they had to set it before nukes you know, before nukes, yeah. Were, yeah. Has a, one nuke, bam, gone. But they had to, but it makes it also very difficult to imagine that the the, the logistics and the amount of technology needed for that. Obviously, there was some special breakthrough. I forget exactly what it was, but it was how, how they created those kind of gravity-defying uh, things that make the city float. I forget what, what There's a whole explanation for that, but yeah, yeah, I... Yeah, I I mean, making an underwater city would be incredibly difficult too, but yeah. it was it was right on the verge of being plausible in the 60s, I think. We've done some yeah. pretty crazy things in the 60s. We went to the moon, so it's Not to it's mention, plausible. it's perfectly hidden. You can't have spy satellites or planes fly over. No one would know that Rapture is there. You could, you could have boats constantly going over the top of it. Even submarines would pass by and they wouldn't realize Rapture was there. Yeah, and also... Weirdly enough, air like airspace is heavily defended, but uh, okay. there's that there's that kind of nebulous international waters. That's why I always got why Rapture was never discovered or threatened is because it was it was in a uh, uh, sort of continental and and national gray area. N yep. Nobody really owned it. Whereas yeah. if you're just flying around all the time, you're probably going to be over land, especially if you have to trade and get resources, which. Uh, having I've had I've worked on a uh, in the Caribbean getting paper to the Caribbean or getting just basic office supplies in the Caribbean is insanely difficult <laughs> and expensive, like way way more difficult than it should be, because it's a it's some random little island they have to ship everything. Oh there. well, that, that's because you forgot your matter charges for your replicators. Okay, <laughs> they, I, I swear to God, some people think replicators are real. Yeah. Uh, what? How? How does anyone yeah. think that's real? Because there are people that it's these same people that don't understand. They just think that food magically appears at grocery stores. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Jesus a good point. Oh, you you yeah, mean the people are... who are like, we don't want truckers in our city? Yes. Go yeah. away, truckers. We don't need you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh fucking God. brilliant. You know what? Cities, go ahead. Get rid of the truckers. See what fucking happens. Well, they're currently experiencing what's happening when truckers stop trucking. Yeah. yeah. Well, Go away, truckers. We only need resting. Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're going to find out real soon because they're currently arresting all of the ones at the bridge. So, uh. Which, hopefully, uh, the rumor is that um, the American truckers are now going to start blockading the other side of the bridge instead.
Yeah. Oh my god, I I was quiet for a bit because that one guy I was telling you guys about was trying to debate me on this stuff. Oh, and god. yeah, and I was going into it a little bit and I was like and he was talking about like, "Oh, well they should be arrested and stuff. They're they're breaking the law." And it's like, "You mean the laws that Canada literally made specifically to try and get them out of there and also the fact that one of the bridges that is closed isn't closed because of the truckers but because the guy who owns the bridge closed it in support of the protests yeah, yeah. you fucking idiot <laughs> I think Such everyone knows food in the store is on a global respawn timer <laughs> god and there are people who actually believe that oh when the fucking yeah, in 2020, when everything locked down, people were like, what's oh going God. on? Why is there no food here? And like, it makes no sense. It, it should just be here. Like, you fucking idiots. Like, you don't understand <laughs> that fucking people, you have to have farmers who grow the food and then people who ship the damn food to the stores. I have no idea how uh, you do this, but I think, I think everybody would get along a lot better if there was some sort of like a, like almost like an internship program into how the world works where you have people, you know, go work on a farm for a year, work at a, work at a, uh, you know, shipping facility for a year. Yes. Work, you I, know, kind of go through that for like a five-year internship. It'd be, an, be a, a, cool. a, a, a <laughs> logistical hell, but people would understand how things work so much better and respect the, the, how <laughs> supply chain is in the form. Yes, because Damn it. currently... Hang on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Behold! The supply chain! <laughs> <laughs> See, there's a couple I was wanting to grab, too. The truckers had their chance, true to well. Yeah. Kill out, no. no. <laughs> and uh, all food, sh food shortages could be solved if the global admin set the respawn timer to daily. Ah, oh, they should have <laughs> thought about that. I also want to get the super chat we missed forever ago. Five dollars from the Wayfarer. Thank you. No, we, we did that one. Oh, oh I wasn't no, yeah, here while you one. did it, so it doesn't count. Okay. Okay. Got... Wow. Fine. Wow. It counts, but okay. I'm not here. But no. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll just read it to myself then. <laughs> I see that. I see that the not co-host. It's only important when they're, but when oh, the actual no. stars of the show. <laughs> oh no! Did did Peach Cobbler make a Bioshock retrospective? Oh, yeah, yeah. We went, we went, we oh no! His, uh, he talks about Bioshock Infinite, but to be fair, in the little bit that I saw, he actually calls it out for not really going anywhere with its story. And All right, that's good at least. It seems. So yeah, yeah, at least he has. He's not completely brain dead. Well, but oh, only when it comes to Skyrim dead. and <laughs> Fallout well, Four. Well, Remember, actually, I, I've seen I want to read oh, yeah, Fallout Four. I want to read yeah. this real quick before we do the super chat. Uh, Admiral Tony Donning says. I've met a person who wanted to grow farm food in city environments, but was afraid that sausage seeds won't grow in urban locations. Uh, <laughs> motherfucker, <laughs> what? Fucking hell. God, and there are people, like, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm, I kind of hate this generation of people who literally don't do any work and are terrified to do what tiny amount of work they do have to do assuming they even have to do any work most of them like you, you tell them you know uh you work for you should work a job for at least like a couple hours a day and they take that as like the worst offense of all time and it's like yeah that's yeah there's <laughs> there's a reason why this generation is failing and it's because of shit like that all right fight all super chat from scoopmeister thank you very much i have uber eats ha huh? At least so long as people are working there. A Taco Bell near where I work only has two people there at a time. Yeah, a place here, um, Long John Silver's, uh, they usually do really good seafood uh, stuff. And they have really good stuff. They they can't get any workers. It's And it makes me sad because I loved going in there and, and having Long John Silver's. It was great. Uh, to your super chat from Enclave Emily. Thank you very much. Bow down to your furry owl overlord, Setch. No. I don't know what she could possibly be re uh, referring to there, because the only person with an owl icon here isn't a furry, so, you know. <laughs> $5 super chat from Adeptus Fantasticus. Thank you very much. 
I always thought Columbia was all about how idiotic the Confederate uh, traitors were. If not about that, then it makes absolutely no sense like Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, should we get back to this? Uh, $2 from Scoopmeister. Thank you. Speaking of, I saw grocery sales. Praise me. Yeah, you I, guys I, will deserve... not, I will not praise you in one sense, but I will say you have my sympathies, friend. Yeah, and respect. Because I used to do stocking as well, and I know it's the people. The people are the worst part. Quest out of my journal and just started walking. I found bandits forging unique, albeit useless, weapons. A ruin that contained a witch's journal and a mysterious dead end, I know it's because of the companion's quest line shut up. A graveyard filled with surprise skeletons. Surprise, motherfucker! You, you already did a reference before, you can't do the same exact video Fun. clip and have something different on it. And here's yeah. the thing too, this happens yeah. in fucking every Nordic tomb. Every yes. one of them. Every single one. If you see a closed casket, 95% of the time it will kick open and they'll do that stupid animation of stepping out. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, Ragnar, you can come back in whenever. We, we thought when you said you were good, you were done, done, you were done, done. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can literally just come back in the call. As long as you just don't come in for five minutes and then plug your channel and leave again. <laughs> yeah, that, that we're gonna set some ground rules. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm back. Hey, welcome hey, back. Hello. Man, how interesting would it have been if like the lid could actually crush you? Oh, yeah. That would actually be cool because I, to be fair, as like a, a two-handed weapons you know build, usually I just sit there and just wait for their animation. Like you can kill them essentially before they come out of the animation. Just so if it, if it did do damage or something, that would at least be. A little more immersive. Put a little more actual work into the game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, micro rant. I hate it when enemies aren't able to be damaged until their their arrival animations over. Arrival. <laughs> yes, I hate, yeah. I hate arrival that so much too. Arrival. Arrival. <laughs> arrival. But, yeah. Arrival. Especially, yeah, especially kind of... if their animations really long. Yeah. Like yeah. they have to look yeah. at you and then pick I up a weapon the and they swing it around a couple times. Then oh of... god. Yeah, and, that's and kind of one of my issues with Dark Souls is whenever you knock yeah. an enemy to the ground, you have to stand there and be like, oh, when you stand up, you're going to fucking <laughs> get it right in the ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and anybody's yeah, playing like that. that rule in anime, you know, when the <laughs> the enemy is going through a transformation and, you, and the hero's like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and let you finish your transformation so we can... Yeah, I'm not going to interrupt this. And, like, clearly <laughs> you're going to kill us as soon as it's done, but I'm just going to not interrupt it at all. I'll just stand here and wait. Behold, Gary Oak! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's Aaron Yeager. Exceptions with this rule, thankfully. Behold, the rival! Oh, God. <laughs> all right. I wandered into a mysterious cabin. Then I got trapped by a crazy necromancer after fighting through his army of ghost slaves. Consider the following. How do you make a world fun to explore? How do you transform what is essentially just walking to the next objective marker into an epic tale of intrigue and discovery? Do you consider do Skyrim... Skyrim did. No. Do you consider yeah. Skyrim to be an epic tale of intrigue and discovery? Because I certainly don't. And based on what you've shown us, it certainly doesn't feel like you... It certainly doesn't sound like you feel that way either. Yeah. You know, it, it sounds so boring, too. Yeah. Again, like, you have access oh, to Witcher really? 3 at this point. You're also showing Horizon Zero Dawn. And I, I haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn, but I heard it's a good game. But I mean, you, you literally showing... have the the option to fast travel in Skyrim, which takes away all, all the experience in this case. Yes. You know what would have been better if they had kept the Morrowind system. So the worst that places that are partially implemented remote would have been remote. The worst part is they partially implemented it with the carts. Yeah. Uh, but you only use them once each uh, to reach each city. Then you don't ever fucking need to use them again, ever. Yeah. Yep. Ima imagine if fast travel didn't exist in Skyrim. How much better it would be. That's well, how I play it. Actually, always, I'd say always. 
I would say how much better it would be if they did the whole Morrowind thing where you, you did the carts to the big cities and then maybe maybe the temples would have their own teleport thing so you would actually have a reason to visit any of these fucking temples. Yeah, you have the towering carriages mod, which, which I love despite it being, well, buggy as fuck, but it grants immersion. Yeah. Ah, oh, God. Fucking weird. All right, well, we need to see if he actually says that the Skyrim is a magical and epic thing, so let's go back a bit. ...just walking to the next objective marker into an epic tale of intrigue and discovery. The way I see it, there's a two-step process to accomplishing this. The first step of which is to fill your game with fun, interesting, and varied locations. It, it's so easy, game developers. Write that down, write that down! No, no it isn't. I mean... If it does, Sky, fucking Skyrim definitely didn't pull it off. Yeah, if you're using Skyrim as your example, you're already fucked. Interesting <laughs> yeah. locations. What... How are... Explain to me how most of the locations at Skyrim are interesting. Because I can tell you how they're not. You go into a Draugr cave... Um, you get a claw puzzle or a spinning thing puzzle where you have to match the picture. The Draugr will get up from their fucking tombs or their caskets, then fight you. And then you, uh, you loot, you loot some loot and then you get a word wall. That is like most of the Draugr tombs. The Nordic tombs. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, the kind of thing I've, sort of like a, um, or a common denominator I've seen with a lot of these takes are that, the uh not to sound really pretentious, but their gaming palette is just way, way too limited. Like here he's just referencing uh one of the best best selling uh PlayStation games of all time, the uh whatever, uh Horizon Zero Dawn, and then he's he's referencing Ubisoft. It's like, okay, so you play only ten plus million open world uh mainstream games. You don't really play RPGs then. That's that's your that's your point of comparison is Ubisoft and and uh Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. That, it's very limited. That's what, the and, kind of thing I get a lot. And Ubisoft has the exact same problem that that Bethesda does when it holds things. They just fill it with stuff, just stuff, not not thought through, not with like some deep moral quandaries or complexities to them, or an interesting location to visit. It's just stuff. It's stuff to do to keep you busy. That's it. No. So this reminds me. This reminds me of something that a Brazilian YouTuber that I used to watch called. Consoles e Jogos Brasil said about open world games when he was talking about Far Cry 4, you know. Um, he compared it to a duck. It may seem silly, but uh, bear with me, hear me out. A duck, it can, it can walk, it can swim, and it can fly. But it sucks at all of them. Yeah, that's how open world games mostly work, because they can't give too much attention to a single specific thing that uh, other smaller games can. Yeah. They, by trying to do everything, they have to water the entire experience down because they need to fit in all of the different aspects of it. And all of those different aspects require development time. You, you have a limited amount of development time that you have to work with. So unless you're going to like exponentially increase your development time, you just physically can't have all of these things be super intricate and complex and have a lot of depth. Yeah, and not all of them have to be. It's fine to have a cave that's just a cave full of baddies and loot, but, like, we're talking yeah. about most of these locations are like that, and that's the problem. Exactly. When, when every single location is almost indistinguishable from every other location, then what's the point? Yeah. Um, I've now... Hmm? I was just going to say, I now figured out the next... Uh... The next title of my next uh, video essay is Skyrim a magic or a duck? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here's one. What have I done? Here's one. Uh, Setch, you said a lot of these dungeons are just stuff put in the world for the sake of being stuff. So yeah. you're saying they're content, right? Yeah, it's so, literally so, just... yeah. So are you saying that uh, Skyrim is Disney Plus? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just content no substance or value put into it it's just content it's just busy work it's just keys jangling yep you know, it would be a super interesting uh comparison i don't have the bandwidth to dig into it now but uh comparing from the ground up skyrim and the latest uh ac game they're both got the heavy norse inspiration 
and more and more uh, Assassin's Creed is becoming basically uh, RPG light, and Skyrim is becoming, you know, Elder Scrolls is becoming less RPG, more action RPG light. So I, I'm curious. Um, I haven't played uh, Valhalla, but I, my wife was playing it for quite a bit. I, I've watched a bit, and I'm curious how they both hold up to each other. If they're actually like comparable from a genre and uh, uh, meaningful choice standpoint, I, I, I'm actually leaning to think that they're probably fairly comparable. Uh, comparable, I should say. Yeah. Um, Five dollar super chat from the Wayfarer. Thank you very much, Stag. It's psychotic. They keep creating new ways to celebrate mediocrity, but when something truly exceptional comes along, then it's demonized. Yeah, basically. Yeah, uh, what reminds me of a, a fantastic line from a, a an eh, ironically kind of mediocre movie. I think it was called Fired Up. It was about a movie about a couple guys um, squeezing their way into like a uh, some sort of camp for cheerleaders, whatever. But anyway, there's this uh, the cheerleader kind of coach guy said a great thing where uh, somebody did a dance at the cheerleader thing and they wasn't that great. And he's like, and everybody cheered for her. I was like, great job, you know, Susie, whatever. And he's like. Yes. Yay. Let's clap for mediocrity. How about we all surround a Ford Focus and clap at it? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. It's brutal. Damn, it's a, it's a fucking burn that works on so many different levels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, just look what they said about fucking New Dune. They oh. shit all over that. It's like, it was good. What the fuck? It, it was a great movie, yeah. Yeah, there was there wasn't really anything that like oh. wrong with it. It was very solid film. That people reminds... shit all over it. They were like, "No, it, that... it's making fun of us by how smart it's being." That it's, reminds it's me. Re... Oh, go ahead, Craig. Yeah. Sorry, um, such. I saw Dune on DVD at the store the other day. You know what that means, right? Oh, oh, is is it out out now? Ooh. It's out on DVD, but that also means uh, Cinema Sins and Cinema Wins are probably working on their Dune videos. Which no! I hope. I hope. <laughs> I want to share both of them. Just the immediate reaction from Pagan. Just... just the pain in his voice. <laughs> no! Hey. I don't... Pagan, we're introducing you to some good shows and movies. We watched Wrath of Khan the other night. How much? How, how would you rate that out of 10? an eight <laughs> yeah, it is a good movie yeah, yeah. it was really good so Pain I wonder, sorry no i was just curious i wonder if um the sins guys because uh, they're basically like i've covered both of them now on, on efap they're basically the same they they have the same format they yeah doesn't matter if it's a good or bad thing they'll they'll mention it and ding it yeah but uh i wonder if they wait because they're quote-unquote above downloading an mp4 version of the hbo max copy or or it, was it ever it was on hbo max right yeah it was on hbo max that's how yeah. i that's how i watched the movie <laughs> what was i up to by the time of it i finished it 11 times yeah damn so, uh, yeah it was a bit, a bit i a bit overdid it on dune um yeah so I, like do, do, do they wait because they know it's going to get another uh, viewer boost if they wait until uh, release on physical media? Or do they literally rip it because they're so virtuous? <laughs> well, it, it's, it's on physical media and it's on Amazon now. I can actually buy it right now on Amazon. Well, that's the thing. I don't think it's like a virtuous thing. I think when a channel that is that big, it's like, okay, we need to do these things more legally. So we'll have the DVD to tear this thing apart. Well, can't really call it tearing it apart when you're talking about cinema sins. We'll shit we all make over it in the jokes. most retarded way um, yeah. once the DVD is out, just to avoid any like legality of like, hey, how did you acquire that? Yeah, I mean, I I figured they get you know I don't know it, it, it's it's weird because like it's yeah I don't know I I guess there is a legality thing like oh well you'll. Did you buy it on HBO Max or you just have an HBO Max subscription? You have to own it in physical media. It, they, they are probably big enough that they have to ask those questions from a legality standpoint. So I guess that's probably why. Yeah. They may not even actually rip it themselves, but they want to, they want the sort of alibi that, oh, we did buy it, you know, I guess. A lot easier to just grab it off of, uh, you know, certain locations. 
Yeah. Oh, here's a comment. Cinema Wins somehow avoided most of the critique that Cinema Sins got. Mostly, in my opinion, it's because they are much smaller. No. It is not because they are smaller. All you have to do is look at the names of the channel. One yeah. is negative. The other is positive. The weird, thing, what, the weird thing is that the critique and the praising and the just lol I see a reference I can make here is so mixed for both of them that they're the percentage of good and bad on each of them is like fairly comparable like cinema uh we we covered a um cinema sins of i think it was cinema sins i can't remember now You're right we did cinema sins of uh the latest suicide squad and a cinema wins of um black widow and they're and like half of the cinema wins were bad points about the movie that they kind of like reinterpreted as good points and half the things that Cinema Sins brought up were actual, like, decent things. Or they just, like, would skip a good scene. <laughs> it's I, just I, so weird. I can explain that as well. Cinema Sins is doing it for the money. Um, they're just going to do whatever that gets their sin counter up and uh, make a decently long video enough. It's like, yeah, we could put this out and get money on it. Cinema Wins seems to be genuinely trying to say, hey, this is good. And uh, inflate the uh, ding counter, the the win counter for, you know, it's when you guys covered the Black Widow. Oh, hey, it's a thing. Ding. Yeah. yeah. And I was just going to call them like cinema things for both of them. But yeah, there's no way <laughs> that Cinema Wins isn't also getting it for the money. Got two million subscribers, half a billion views. Oh, my God. What's wrong with this world? Yeah. Uh, oh, God. But yeah, it, but yeah, this is why we get. I, I, a small clip that Mueller shared a, a week or so ago is just like why we can't have good thing, nice things. Yeah. Did you see the the super cuts of people's reactions to the later episodes of uh, the Boba Fett show? Yeah, just it's people like, creaming their pants over. Oh my god, it's Ahsoka. Oh my god, it's uh, Mando. It's Luke Skywalker. It's uh, Baby Yoda. Yeah, we're like it's talking Kathleen. about. We're talking about mature men who can theoretically father a child, <laughs> hugging their <laughs> hugging their Grogu uh, stuffed animal while while cooming over a CG character on coming on screen. I'm just like, I, I'm sorry, like I'm a fan, I'm a nerd too, I'm a fan. I'm just like, what is? Rethink your life, bro. <laughs> sorry. Degenerate you are. <laughs> Procreate you must not. Thanks the gene pool, you will. Yeah, just, I. I I, it's just weird. I never understood the crazy freaking out of, oh my god, it's Luke Skywalker! Ah! It's just like, okay, but have you looked at the context around anything that's happened in this show? And just how garbage it... Like, one of my favorite examples now is um, the Wookiee trying to kill right. Boba Fett. He's got his hands around Boba Fett's neck. All he has to do is close his hands. So just like, Dig your claws into his neck and pull in opposite directions, and you would have mega killed Boba Fett. And instead, he uselessly yeah. tosses him across the room. It's better than that. An assassin sneaks in to kill a supposed self titled crime lord who is uh, sleeping in a water tank. Sleeping and brings no weapons and immediately pulls him out of the chamber and throws him across the room toward his weapons. I hate like, plot armor. like, like, hate this plot is armor. beyond plot armor. This is, this is. Uh, like I, it's almost like a parody. Like you couldn't write a worse outcome of that situation. He, he has him dead to rights. The guy's literally sleeping. A any pointy object, the yeah. scene's over. And you you wake him up, pull him out of the thing, then throw him toward his wet his weapon rack. <laughs> it's just the, the uh, yeah mind numbingly stupid. I I don't know. It's... Oh, but remember, no gore in Star Wars. It was, uh, it's for the keys. Yeah, uh, the Wookiee also tore someone's arm off, and there's just no blood. It was just like, yeah. oh, there's an arm on the floor now. <laughs> Remember they blew a guy up with an RPG in that show, and he just vanished. He just disappeared <laughs> like he was never there. <laughs> just despawned. Too many, too many uh, player models. I could have, uh, I would be, like, the show is still. moment right there. The show is still garbage, but I could at least respect if they went full in the other direction. You blow up that guy, and there's just meat chunks raining from the sky. 
It's like, you know what? It's still shit, but I can respect that you do that at least. Yeah, I, the, the, the kid's argument is, is so incredibly misinformed. Um, I, it makes me think that people didn't, didn't actually watch the movies. Yeah. Watch Star Wars. Watch Star Wars. I'm going to call it Star Wars because New Hope's a stupid title. Watch Star Wars and tell me that's made for kids. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Just look at this scene where they were. Uh... They literally zoom in on the arm that's on the floor and blood. Yeah. Everywhere. Not just that's what I was thinking. Like, where he chops his arm off and there's just blood literally squirting out of the arm. The scorched the, the... skeletons of yeah, exactly. Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru or Beru or whatever. Yeah. When, like, that, that's horrifying. They're still smoking. Yeah, you can see, you can see the flesh on them. Uh, it uh, freaking uh, Grand Moff Tarkin nukes a planet, and yeah, like, like even with the the scene with uh, what's the guy, the butt face guy, gets his arm cut off. He's screaming in the background, and you just it's just like uh, almost like a a glamour shot of his decapitated arm. Yeah, like like but yeah. it's for kids. It's a silly Space Wizards for Kids movie. Doesn't yeah, the mind. Wampa like eat like a human corpse? I think... Like tearing flesh off of a human yeah. corpse? I can't remember, I remember that. I, I, I think that's the, that... the, um, the Tom Tom he's, he's riding. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe. There are skeletons of people in there, though, so. There yeah. are, yeah. Why do I you have a have... feeling that the, the people who try to make this kind of stuff, uh, it, well, well the, this thing, this stuff, kid friendly overnight, they just want to be seen as the, the good guys oh we must th think about the the kids uh, uh, and stuff so we just change what what the adults and teenagers like instead of making our own stuff yeah it, it's it's a it was a uh action sci-fi movie made for grown-ups that was accidentally popular for with kids that's what it that's what it was yeah and it for, wasn't for until anyone... later for anyone that has any doubt, that has uh, any, um, that is open to to debate for as for if Star Wars is or or not for for kids, if it is supposed to be for for kids or not, um, even I, and I'm not uh, the biggest fan of Star Wars. I would just tell that person, you know what a sarlacc is? Do you have any idea of what a sarlacc is? Well, search it on wikis regarding star wars read what it does to its prey and then tell me if star wars is fucking for kids or not and that's that's a completely that's for like the kid most kid friendly uh movie in the ot the third one that's when they've kind of completely embraced the to little toy things like ewoks were designed for toys at all these different locales and stuff trying to embrace the that's already like like Return of the Jedi has got some of the best payoffs in the entire series, but it also is the the most cynical of the th of the first three movies in terms of kind of made for merchandising because that's what that's yeah. when George Lucas really kind of leaned into the mer merchandising angle. But even that's got you know, uh, you know, dismemberment, uh, gore, you know, shooting people dead, all this kind of stuff. Like it, it's it's still it's still pretty hardcore compared to it, but it's it's kind of like the um, it's kind of Indiana Jones kind of went through that too. Like, uh, I, I think it was the the Plinkett reviews where he he, he counted all the deaths and stuff in the, in the Indiana Jones movies and saw that there was a steady decline. Or I think possibly the second one was the most uh, death filled. But but like, mainly it was the newest one that uh, didn't have that many deaths, and a lot of it was kidified. Like, um, oh, look at the monkey swinging through the vines, where, you know. I I will say, though that the the a fire ant ones was a pretty horrific fucking death let me tell you well 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 it's not really fair that's not really uh um fair to call Shia LaBeouf a monkey and he's <laughs> 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 but uh yeah i know it the, the yeah, it's really really kind of kidified just you know kid physics thrown a million miles in a refrigerator from a nuclear explosion a okay kind of stuff just yeah silly silliness i mean the the bug thing was kind of uh kind of kind of weird but i i i don't really really flinch at that because I, I just see oh cg cg creatures okay yeah i flinched at it because of him getting dragged into the ants uh the ant nest and you just see his oh. foot and everything as he's twitching and just like Ugh! yeah yeah that, that bit was pretty oh god 
the the worst one I, I can say of that was probably the original cut. I think they toned it down, but the original cut of King Kong, Peter Jackson's King Kong, with the huge bugs. That's like, oh god, <laughs> it's like his whole oh head being yeah swallowed by the grub or whatever. That's like that, yeah, that kind of a little bit. Ooh, yeah. That that scene when I was because I was actually a kid when I saw that film in yeah. theaters, and that scene like fucked me up as a kid. I was like, what the fuck? I remember the watching where they're her. trying to climb up the wall and like the scorpion claws come out and like grab people and break them in half as they go through the hole was like, Ooh, Ooh, that the pirates of the Caribbean movie with the crack and where people are like getting pulled through the, uh, the cannon hatches and stuff with the tentacles. And that you could like, the you guy the gets stuck. And yeah. It's like, yeah, exactly. snaps you can in half. feel it as you hear it. it yeah. Oh, yeah, that stuff's brutal. I'm back. I had to mute for a minute there too, because uh, I had a call. Oh no, you just didn't. You wanted to keep your lunch down. We got. Yeah, we. we that was good timing that you chose to be muted because man. No, we I heard that part. I, sick... I muted like uh -oh. shortly after the last thing I said. Oh. Um. Okay. Well, I, I've got to. I've got to go hop off for a little bit, but um, I'll, I'll just stay on the call and and mute myself, and then I'll come back on and whenever I'm ready. All okay. right. Cool. Okay. See you then. Um, 50 check crowns from Psycho Kozel. Thank you very much. Thank you. A bit out of topic. Uh, what are your collective thoughts on the two ongoing projects, Fallout London and Nueve Mexico? Uh, I've not looked into either of them. I haven't looked so into either of them. Neither of I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want another uh, frontier situation happening, so I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going to look into them. I'm just going to let them release and play them when they release. Yep. Uh, two euro super chat from Enclave Emily. Thank you. Thank you. Off topic, but guess who got court documents? Yeah, I saw you posted it in the Acer Thorn uh, thread. Yeah, and I oh, also mentioned uh, it. Really? Yeah, um, I mentioned it in the video I uploaded during the stream too. But uh, Acer Tired has filed a lawsuit against Enclave Emily and Echo Wilder, and also and, Google. Yeah, and Google's parent company. Uh, Alphabet, this yeah. Guy and these lawsuits. He's demanding shit. both Enclave Emily and Echo Wilder be permanently banned from YouTube, um, regardless of the three strike rule, and he's demanding a collective uh, two million from them uh, combined. Yep. Good luck with that. You have to prove damages, you dumbass, and you have Why no damages. Don't you just return. To saying crap about Fallout and the Elder Scrolls well, that make things far simpler. Here's here's one of the things he's trying to copyright over channel assets like his icon or his banner and stuff. He's claiming that showing that in their uh, videos is copyright infringement. So he's using that as an excuse to oh, there's another three hundred thousand uh, to plop on this lawsuit, and that's why uh, he's suing Enclave Emily for one point eight million and uh, Echo Wilder for three hundred thousand. Uh, it's just pure insanity. Yeah, and it makes he's no not, fucking and he's sense. He's not gonna win. No, of he course he's win. not gonna win. But it, it just shows the insanity and just maliciousness of this fucking little parasite, this fucking little insect that he's. Yeah. I I, I want these people banned me. because they criticize me, and I want millions of dollars for them because. They showed some of my vi like. Uh, they showed my icon. Well, I'm hurt. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is so fucked up. He is claiming that showing their channel art, or them showing his channel art is copyright infringement. But he does the same fucking thing. He shows images of their channels uh, and icons and mine, and anyone else he thinks is fucking harassing him because he, they were critical of him. Uh oh, look at the Discord. What's happening in the Discord? Uh oh. <clears throat> hmm. Um, for Enclave Emily, her videos described blah 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 have violated a total of 11 of my copyrighted works. In addition to that, she is guilty of the first count of infringement described in blah 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 blah, making for a total of 12 different copyrights which she infringed upon. I ask for statutory damages of up to 150,000 for each of these infringed copyrights for a total of uh, $1,800,000. Fucking yeah, insanity. He, he won't win even a single one of those. So. No, of course he won't. But it's the fact that he's fucking doing this shit. Well, no, here's yeah, the, the good fact thing. This retarded. Because, because he also brought YouTube and everything into this, this could actually get a thing where he will now 
be known as a, a, a vexatious litigant, and he will never again allow, be allowed to file a lawsuit yeah. unless the court gives him leave to. Yeah. Asher Thorne is just a disingenuous retard. I mean, he really is. He is. Well, yeah, he I also... really hope YouTube just is like, okay, well, if this is the kind of shit you're going to pull on our platform, it's clearly not a good idea for you to be here and potentially pull us into lawsuits that are obviously frivolous. We're just going to ban you and your channel. Yep. Yeah. Well, he also, I think he he either completely spelled Echo's name wrong, so he's he, he either sued the wrong person or just literally sued no one. Well, see, that's so, the thing. It's apparently he sued the wrong person in the past. So, you know. Um, what an idiot. Yeah. Um, all right. It's a shit show. $5 Five. from the Wayfarer. Thank you. Uh, a bit of a tangent, but what are each of your thoughts on the Wasteland games, assuming you've played any of them? I haven't. Sorry. I haven't played any of them. I want to. They're on the list. The list is big. But, yeah, I have not played I, I'm actually in the middle of a Wasteland 3, my very first Wasteland 3 playthrough. I played Wasteland 2. Uh, they give heavy, like, uh, early, like the first Fallout vibes. I will say that they're probably my favorite RPGs that I've seen in years. Because they're the only games that I see within the first 20-30 minutes. Skill checks that I can't complete because I don't, I didn't choose, like, skills. Like, it's the first game that it's not like, oh, but if you don't have, like, mechanics, don't you worry. We'll we'll throw a door in later, or you can go back with a key. It's like, no, you need to have some of these skills. It's like, you need second, you need multiple playthroughs, or you need to have, like, I don't know. I just enjoy it, because it's, it's finally a game that requires skill checks. Yep. And it, yeah. And it actually, uh, well, and speech. They do speech well. Skill checks go into speech, so if you don't have a high enough speech, or, or uh skill for that skill check then you obviously you know don't get that you know advantage or whatever but you might get another one yeah well here's the thing too is um fallout is actually a spiritual successor to wasteland because something happened with the rights the i think the publisher wouldn't let them have the rights to make another game so they made fallout like that was part of it yeah no yeah i think you're you're completely right um but yeah, no, I mean, I, I was around, I was watching Wasteland 2 when it was, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was the crowdfunded game, right? It was... Yes, Wasteland 2 was trying. crowdfunded. Yeah, so I was watching and I was like, oh, that kind of reminds me of Fallout. And then, you know, I kind of heard more about it and I was really interested. In it. So like, uh, I think a year ago I got Wasteland 2 and it really blew me away. That's that's why I went back and replayed Fallout 1 and 2 again because I was like, holy fuck, like finally a, a, a good like top-down RPG. And I was like, god damn, I'm getting... I need to play Fallout. Yeah. And then, nah, 3 came out, and it's also, it's wonderful. So I was just giving it a shot. Uh, $5 super chat from Adeptus Fantasticus. Thank you. According to Sid, Acer Thorne is also limited to one lawsuit per three months in his district. So he's going to try to file these lawsuits in other districts. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the one he filed against Enclave Emily oh and uh, Echo Wilder are in California. Yeah, he's using in that as an excuse. Like, he's using... <clears throat> He's using YouTube being uh, located there as an excuse to do these lawsuits there because he can't do them in his own state or district. Um, There's also another comment here I want to grab. Why do you waste your time on Disney Star Wars trash? Uh, I get that you don't spend any money on um, on pirating it, but Disney Wars has no positive aspects. See... That's the thing, though, is it's still something to learn from, where it's like, oh, hey, look how fucking retarded this uh, writing is. Maybe we wouldn't, maybe we won't do that with our own thing, you know? Yeah. Acer making noises in his room is disturbing. Um, He claims that wasn't him. Yeah, he claimed it wasn't him. So. Yeah, so don't worry, it's not disturbing anymore. You can laugh at it. It's, It's funny. Well, it also yeah, which is weird stuff myself. Am I laughing myself hilarious. for it? Keep in mind, uh, he can't he can't claim that's not him, and then also claim that he has ownership in <laughs> any kind of claim to it. Then, it, which means he can't go around having it banned on places <laughs> like Vimeo. Yep. <laughs> you fucking retard. Well, what it really means is he perjured himself in his court case. Yeah. yeah. So he's fucked. 
you know, I may not be, I may be far from an expert in uh, the, this, legal, this legal stuff, but from what I've dealt with Acer Thorn when it came to Kyrim Civil War stuff, I know that on pretty much anything that he takes seriously, no matter how much research he, he does, he is likely to just keep distorting what he brings to the table and ignore aspects and facts that uh, are not convenient for his narrative. So yeah, there's that. We, we, we have a we have a live example of this when Skib did the debate with Acer Thorn, and they're like, How did you think he was in the enclave? Well, it's a star versus an E. It's, you know, it's very easy to dip, to make a mistake that the star and the E are the same. It's like, but it's a big fucking star and it's a big fucking E. Well, move on. Move on. We gotta move on. Yeah, yeah. Just like every time I I finally cornered him, he's like, uh, uh, next point, next point, or just ad break. Cut me off with an ad break. Oh no, I accidentally oh, did a three minute ad break. <laughs> oh, no. I need to go. Oh, no. I need to go. I didn't. I didn't tell you we've been going for a minute and a half with an ad break. The whole point of you destroying me here is just completely cut off. Yeah, and then when the ad breaks over, he's like, okay, next point. But yeah, you're, you're, dude, Acer yeah. Thorn is a literal fucking piece of shit. Yeah. The, the entire said. world would be better off if he was locked in a mental institute. I mean, he would be what better off if he was that, locked that. in a mental institute, because at least yeah. he'd be getting cared for him, getting treatment yeah. for his fucking cocktail of uh, mental issues yep i also want to grab this comment quickly i want to start a shitty channel just so i can get on stag don't do that yeah um, no. if like what you should do is make a channel with the intent to make good videos that's the thing that's going to get our attention if you're like a decent person who makes decent videos you know yeah yeah the only reason i'm on here with a shitty channel is because i unfortunately dealt with acer and Ah, uh, your channel great. isn't shitty. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> my my my. Uh, shit, since we my watched shit. again, we watched the. There's debate. a channel here that is shitty. It's mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Skips. We watched you during the debate. You were fine. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's more the argument that got me. Not my shit post of New Vegas that I just made so everyone wouldn't think I was an Acer spy. <laughs> <laughs> everyone still thought I was though. No one, no one liked me until the debate was done. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's let let's get continue. back to the cringe. Yeah. yeah. Just had to try harder. You're welcome. That's a free game design tip from the expert himself. Oh yeah, I. Oh, Trust me, off. Bethesda. If you were trying to make that as from the from the vaults and wisdom of Bethesda, yeah, I know he's he didn't do that. But even if we took you at face value and you were trying to do that at it was Bethesda. Doing this, Bethesda's game design is fucking dog shit, man. Modern Bethesda, it, where they where everything needs to be watered down and milk toast, and like nothing can be, nothing must stand out. You know, we got to make sure everything is as bland as humanly possible. That's not a good idea. That's horrible. Yeah, the way Bethesda is currently, um, well, going makes me really not not keep my hopes up. Or whenever uh, the Elder Scrolls Six comes out, that is, if I'll still be alive when the damn thing comes out. <laughs> Again, Starfield, everything is is weighed in Bethesda's favor. Everything is. They don't have any previous lore to fuck up. They don't, you know, it's going to be an entirely new world and everything of their own creations, their own design. And yeah. It's set in space, so that there's a lot of freedom you can get when you don't have to worry about magic and things like that. Starfield just doesn't have to contradict Starfield. That's all you need to do, Bethesda. Yeah. Well, you need to do a little bit more than that, but you know what I mean? Yeah. It, everything right now is in their favor when it comes to Starfield. So if, if they fuck up Starfield, well, <laughs> yeah, that is with this, the deck stacked in your favor. My God, you, there's no way I would expect you to do anything good ever again. Will Todd ever be fired? Todd isn't the problem at Bethesda. He is a problem, but he's not the problem. We, we call him Todd the Liar Howard for very good reason, because of his, his hype manning. He, he can't help himself. But he genuinely seems to love his company... 
and he genuinely cares that they are well looked after the employees and everything yeah it's a mill a mill is the problem a mill is the problem well we don't know what else is going on behind the scenes at bethesda there could be numerous people there who are part of the problem but ml yeah. is the big one as he's the lead writer he's got a lot of control over where these games go and when he has opinions yeah. like oh don't make a detailed uh, well-written story because players will tear up the pages and make paper airplanes yeah that's, that's a little bit fucked when he revealed that effort is a dirty word at bethesda yeah that's uh, again uh um, it was funny when we brought up, cause I, when we were talking to Patricia I was telling him like a mill is the problem. And then Patricia goes, you know what? I wonder if Bethesda realized that a mill is a problem too. Cause I've noticed that he hasn't been speaking like ever since the whole <laughs> thing. Cause I, it's like, as if the people at Bethesda realize, Hey, every time you talk, things get worse for us. <laughs> but what well, Bethesda should have like realized. I haven't seen Pete Hines around very much either. Yeah. Because <laughs> Pete Hines is the other one that, that people point out of like, this dude is, huh. is a toxic piece of shit who is, who is ruining our PR. Point. I'm not interested <laughs> in talking about how things work in a game with talking ghouls and mutants. Yeah. yeah. Keep on, you fucking dickhead. When you burn down the windmill in Riverwood, it will affect all the price of furniture across Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, tell, us, tell me more lies, Pete Hines. Like, again, you can under... Todd Howard lies, but you can understand his lies through um, great ambition and dreaming of what could be. 16 he, times he the is detail. Stuck, he is stuck in hype man mode at this point. Pete Hines lies just to just to lie. And he oh, literally hates... just works. He, yeah, he just hates the co consumer. Pete Hines yeah. literally hates the customers. Oh, he really does. That shit of, like... Oh, it's just mini DLC, and oh well, we're not gonna sell you stuff from previous games that you already had to pay for. And then they did that, and his response was, "Well, it's our fucking games, not yours. Deal with it. We're yep. allowed to do that." It's like, okay, but you're, you said you wouldn't do that. Well, it doesn't fucking matter what I said. It's our product. We could do whatever the fuck we want with it. Yeah. Okay, fuck, dude. dude. I once dealt with a with an indie developer. Uh, who acted exactly like that and well mm. let's just say that community didn't exactly like this very much so <laughs> when someone from a big company does shit like this they are they're trying to co to commit fucking seppuku yeah. all right let us go forgot that's actually and I have no right to sit here in my internet armchair and tell developers that they're just not trying hard enough. But I don't think that's the only ingredient in Todd's secret sauce. Because Skyrim didn't just fill its world with interesting places to explore. Well that's right, the thing is it didn't, it really didn't have any, any interesting of them. place to explore, yeah. That was yeah. the problem. Yeah tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Two electric boogly. Yeah. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, the, they didn't just fill the world with interesting locations. You mean they didn't fill the world with interesting locations. Yeah, it, it's not they didn't just, it's they didn't fill it. Yeah. Uh, five pounds from Scooty Booty. Thank you. How bad is it this time? Just got home from a grueling shift and so glad to see y'all suffering today too. Oh, we're suffering. Um, yeah, it's really fucking bad. There were several minutes of cringe, and he hasn't really made a point yet, just claims. Which, with yes. a video this short, is probably mostly going to be claims. Yeah. Were. There where everything is in a game is actually a really important design decision. In an earlier video where I played the original Fallout, the game basically kicked me out of the vault with only two pieces of information. We need a water chip, and there might be one in Vault 15. I went to Vault 15 and couldn't go deeper to look for the water chip, so I searched all over the map for a rope. Because that's all the information I had. No objective markers, just... Okay. Which is a good thing. Look, look yeah. at the thing on your screen behind fucking... Why am I forgetting this guy's name? Uh, John Travolta. John Travolta. Yeah. It's, it's... You had to have seen it in your own footage. 
The vault is a green circle, okay? The other yeah. vault is another green circle. What's right in between? Oh my god, it's a fucking green circle. It's almost like the game's trying to tell you there's something there. This yeah. is something H Bomber guy actually pointed out in his own video. You're given the uh You're given all the information you need. Well, not not just that. The point he made in his video, um, in his Fallout 3 video, was in Fallout 1, you're only given the piece of information of where the vault is, but dead center between your vault and this other vault is a town where you could stop and, you know, explore, talk to people, and, you know, buy a fucking rope. You searched yep. all over the map, but you didn't think to go back to the green circle, clearly indicating there's something there. That's so your yeah, fucking problem, my dude. As a game design trick, this is a beautiful trick. If you leave the vault, you leave Vault 13, you're told to go to Vault 15. They give you where Vault 15's location. As you are traveling to Vault 15, you go past the city. They don't know words that need to be exchanged, but now you realize, huh, we just passed the location. Interesting. I've, Again, seen, I've seen the video it, let him end, but that's a problem. He already said something insane. I searched all over the map and couldn't find a rope. While well, we're explaining that this is clearly he missed, like the town in the middle. It doesn't matter yeah. if he found it later. What matters is he's saying an insane thing. Yeah, he already fucked it. Yep. All right. Just a few locations I needed rope. This essentially broke me completely. I spent most of the game running from rad scorpions. It, it broke you completely because you're a fucking moron. Got it. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I don't know how yeah. to brain. Please give me a quest marker. I can't think. What's one and one? What's that, mate? I don't, I don't. You need to spell out. Is that a six? Like, dude. Yeah. No wonder. Peach Cobbler. You are going to be like prime evidence for why your entire generation is completely fucked. Yeah, I hate to say it, but yeah, it's. How was your first instinct not to go back to the place that you obviously discovered in between the two places you visited? Like, literally, it should be the very first place. Why would you go searching all over the map when you know there is a city in between these two places? That should be the first place you check. That yep. should be, like, a natural instinct. And the fact that it wasn't, is honestly kind of worrying. Yeah. yeah. And he's saying that it, like, mentally broke him and stuff. Like, my like, dude, this is fucking pathetic. I thought yeah, this, this is, is literally like shit. This is literally kindergarten level shit, man. Come yeah. on. And, like, yeah. if you talk to an NPC, the barter button is, like, right there. It is very hard to miss. And, like, I don't get it. I, I really, like, it's just really sad, you know? Yep. Um, <laughs> King Aru says, Acrotosis, I have no brain and I must think. <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure I uh, think it was on the schedule for him if he couldn't figure out how to find a fucking rope. Uh, $2 super chat from Peace is Never an Option. Thank you very much. Damn, now I feel bad for being a Gen Z, LOL. See, that's yeah, the you, thing. Uh, you work Don't... for a living. That's the thing, too. When we say, like, oh, yeah, this generation is fucked, that doesn't mean, like, everyone is doomed in that generation it's just like most people like like people like cobbler here who fucking can't brain i don't know how to brain please give me quest marker yeah because oh, and I, I was too stupid to stop at a, uh, a clearly highlighted location and look for a rope it's like sure yeah. he yeah. didn't know before going into the vault that he would need a rope but the option to go back was to there, and he didn't take it. And my thing about this is, like, these people... <laughs> God damn it, hold on. These people are the ones, like, if something happens, if if we have, like, a power outage or something, like, some disaster happens, and where he lives, there is just, there's no power, <laughs> everything goes to shit, he's gonna be one of the first people to fucking die. Because he doesn't understand basic shit that you should know what to do in, a, in any kind of emergency situation. He would be the guy just kind of walking around out in the open while people are, like, murdering each other and just be confused 
and just not know what to do and would just walk right up to people and ask them like well, what's going on what should i do it's like um, dude what the fuck so... these, these are the people who get to vote so, damn it so um such sent me an image and it highlights a certain um problem that amazon has now created a certain implication that yes. Amazon Lord of the Rings has created for uh, the franchise as a whole. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, oh, not Lord of the Rings with this. <laughs> what happened? Uh, being targeted by uh, this. Jeff Bezos, what happened between the second age and the third age? Could you tell me? Like, yeah, man, that. <laughs> Oops. Rip. <laughs> I like the sad face. The emotors. Uh, oh, and here, here's a good one for here's a good one for. Uh oh. For those of us that um, aren't uh, part of the cult. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit! That is fucking brutal. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's not okay hold on hold on i can save it oh, oh god, god it's on the it... wrong layer uh uh oh god <laughs> the most annoying uh... little bitch on earth meets with greta thunberg <laughs> i felt that i felt that <laughs> oh, it's so good it's so uh... good I need to I need to share this. Do it. Yo guys, I'm gonna pull a indigo and also meet myself just so I can go for dinner for a little bit if that's cool. Yeah, it's no, fine. That's fair. I went course. I went and grabbed a submarine sandwich. So. <laughs> All right. I'm eating right, dinner so right now. I need I should go get something <laughs> to eat as well, actually. I haven't really had anything. Alright, I'll be back in a little bit. Right, I hope the people who Huh? Like, all right, cream, resize all your stuff. <laughs> yeah. I hope the people who dislike uh, the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings will keep the same energy for Amazon Lord of the Rings. Uh, hopefully. I will say, yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, let's go on with this shit. Let's see where this goes. Yep. And forgetting to quick save. Seriously, if you haven't seen that video, it's just me losing my mind for 20 minutes. But, I also stumbled into two dudes selling human flesh to an iguana meat stand. After that, I basically just messed around in that quest, trying to extort money from its owner and then later trying to turn him into the cops. My time with Fallout was frustrating, to say the least. What yeah, because you're playing the game like a fucking moron, what do you expect? Yeah, it-, it You don't use critical thinking, of course you're gonna have fucking trouble with a game that expects more of you than just fucking mindlessly following the arrow. Yeah. Fallout 1 was created in an era where they expected that a human being that could think for themselves was going to play the game. Which you're very clearly lacking in, so... Genuinely, I'm sorry for your loss, Genuinely lost reminds me of me when I first played Skyrim. That's not a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Wow, this sewer should... Hey, Interplay, can I have a flashlight? Of course you can. Um, okay, uh, where is it? What am I, your fucking mom? You can use it if you find it, bitch. But the fact that I was stumbled- See, that that's- That's incredibly uncharitable, because it's like- Yeah. He's treating it as if the game- Like, the developers are being malicious about it, when, again- They're not. The, the, the developers expected you to use, like, the most basic amount of common sense and- Yeah. Hey, problem can, I, can solving. I use a flashlight? I mean, can you use a flashlight in real life? Yeah. Well, yeah. Where, where is it then? Well, do you have a flashlight? No. Okay. Go get one. It's like, again, this isn't hard. Uh, like, it's weird that someone is having this much trouble with basic problem solving and logic. Like, it's just yeah. pathetic. Stumbling around blind little adventure. If the game just showed me where the rope was, I would have never explored. And just, just point me at the thing. Just give me a quest marker. 
Fuck. He's, saying, he, he's partly saying it's a good thing that the game didn't show him where the rope was because he made him explore. He would have explored anyways. That's part of the game. I know, it's game. part of the game. But again, this is just... We gotta, we're going, I'm going with his crazy logic here. Crazy person logic. Uh, final super chat from Peace is Never an Option. Thank you very much. There's a bit of background on Cobbler here. He's chair force. Also, I meant to say being 20 on that last super chat. Ah, fair enough. Yeah. He, he's part of the Air Force. That explains so fucking much. <laughs> it really does, doesn't it? Oh, it man, really that's sad. Does. The, the... Those spoiled, overfed pieces of shit. <laughs> wow. You are fucking ruthless. Dude, fucking chair force drive eh. for eh, there's the eh, angry cops did a great um, TikTok thing uh, real quick of him of uh, an army guy walking into the accidentally walking into the Air Force mess hall and he's like holy fucking shit and he starts calling like everyone else over all the other branches because they're <laughs> eating like lobster dinners and stuff like that on silver platters and shit he's like these fucking chair force pieces of shit are <laughs> are eating good. <laughs> if the game showed more cutting people up it wouldn't have felt like a discovery skyrim struck a balance yeah. sure it still holds your hand and you'll never get lost but you know what i like it when todd holds my hand you want to proceed in skyrim go here but while on the way there you can choose wow. to explore any of these icons could hold anything there but not no they can't they can't hold anything. They, the icons literally spoil what the fuck the thing is going to be, all right? Yeah. Jesus Christ, my dude. That's actually one thing I'll agree with many a true nerd on. Um, Fallout 4 did the same thing where it's like, here's the icon of what's over there. Whereas Fallout 3 in New Vegas just had a little tick on the map saying, there's something here, but it didn't tell you what it was. It didn't tell you, hey, there's a vault over there or there's a town <laughs> over there or whatever else. Oh, here we go, here we go. All right. Find out a super chat from Chris Ellinger. I gotta do this properly, because now I know the truth. You wanna go, Dragon Boy? I'm Air Force. By the way, Kessler, AFB best d back. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Sorry, Chris Ellinger, I had to. You, you revealed me... your Air Force. I'm sorry, I had <laughs> to do it. This usually makes me feel bad about the estates army right now. Well, they had an ide they had an ideology purge um, recently, where if you didn't obey and submit, uh, you got kicked out, and that's uh, that's not a good thing. Oh, oh fucking shit! Yeah, okay. I'm wished. glad you know, Chris. I'm just taking the piss. <laughs> rock bottom. Rock bottom. <laughs> no, we haven't hit rock bottom yet. We haven't covered cinema sins or cinema wins yet. Yeah. That's rock bottom. Oh, we haven't covered that game theory video yet. Wait till we get oh. to that. Yeah. yeah. Game... I remember when game theory made, made a video about For Honor uh, uh, talking about who <laughs> That's the win. one we're going to cover. That's the one we're going to cover. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Some of the entirety of the, of the medieval enthusiast community. You yeah, know, it is. Scala, yeah. Scala Gladiatoria, Metatron, all of yeah. them debunked the shit out, out of that video. It was insane. Dude, he couldn't even get basic shit right. Like, he called fucking... He called fucking gauntlets sabatons. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, but yeah, uh, Chris, I know. Uh, like I said, it's an ideology purge. But yeah, it was entire Department of Defense-wide, I know. It's not... A, it, it is not a good thing. Trust me, it is not a good thing that just happened. Wait. <laughs> wait. In entirety of the Department of Defense? Yeah. So every, every part that's underneath it needed to submit to it as well. So if you didn't submit to it, you were you were ousted. But the Marines? Yeah. But hey, at least the Marines have their usual based uh, advertising where, no, we're not going to talk about, like, two moms. The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, at least that. Uh, some light at the end of the tunnel, at least. Uh, five Canadian maple leaves from the Gabo Jones. Thank you very much. Just spent 15 minutes thawing the lid off my trash can. Still more enjoyable than watching Game Theory. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. 
Sticking. It your... is kind of it is kind of satisfying when you get that nice thunk when the ice finally get, leaves, uh, gives way enough. I mean, sticking your dick in an active microwave is more enjoyable than game theory. Yeah. Um, it, it, what makes it different is that it's untested and unproven. And what actually got shown, Chris, was, uh, there are some courts that have now decided that we need to see the entire full unredacted stuff along with all the statistics. And now that the courts have ordered that we need to see the full unredacted stuff with all the statistics, a lot of these CEOs are suddenly jumping ship from their company. That's not a good sign. Yeah, they're pulling their stocks and banking out all their money and going yeah. on the run. Yeah, it's, it's, that that does not inspire confidence that we're going to find out that there are good things on all that redacted documentation and everything. Sunlight's the greatest disinfectant, as they say, right? Yeah. Yep. Like, the CEO of Moderna literally um, cashed out $400 million of his stocks, deleted his Twitter, and is now going on the run. It's like, uh, that's not a good sign. You're telling me that's yeah, not no, a good that's... sign? I thought that was some vote of confidence. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and, and now um, uh, Pfizer has to reveal the stuff, uh, of the actual like death statistics to their vaccine, and they are trying to fight hard against it and make it a 55-year reveal date or something like that. Like, keep it hidden longer than the British government hides its special forces activity? Holy shit. That's, uh, yeah, things are not looking good. So I guess Watch Together, uh, hated this video so much it just sepicued itself rather than play it more, so... Uh, well, didn't do that for me. Yeah, we're still here. Must have just been because I was at, uh, idle for a while. It'll Maybe. Probably start, it'll probably start again when we play, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever that is. Sometime in the future, undisclosed. <laughs> okay, here we go. There is no tower in Skyrim. Points of interest appear on your company. Because they don't need to, because your fucking heads-up display does it automatically. Yeah, there's literally <laughs> no reason. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What the fuck, dude? Alright, here we go. Points of interest appear on your compass only when you get close to them, and you only know what's actually in a location by entering it. No, as I said, you know based on the icon. You know before you've ever come into eyesight of it, is it a mine? Is it a tower? Is it a dragon nest? Is it, the, you know, you, you get all that information tomb. right there. There tomb. may be sometimes a few unique items, but, well, they're unique, so they are the exceptions to the rule, so there's that. Yeah. Although sometimes it can be a nice number, like, for example, everybody calls Moria a mine, but really, it's not a mine. That's laughable. Mm. Lord of the Rings reference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to do the, a mine. <laughs> a mine. A mine? Fly. Kill fly, it. you fools. What does he mean? None of us can fly. Should we stick around? No, <laughs> stop. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I've only... Uh, Funny tangent. Um, I've only been in the theater and heard unintentional uh, laughter reaction to a movie twice. Uh, uh, the, first, yeah. the second time was, uh, I don't know why, but I was watching New Moon and the uh, sort of whatever her face is who has these visions of the future. She touched, I think, Bella and, and saw the future where, uh, what's her face? Um the main character of Twilight and uh, Edward were running through the forest and she's a vampire. Oh my God. Um, it was so corny and kind of like tonally inconsistent because they're like running happily through the forest mm. that people, uh, people laughed out loud literally at the theater. But the first time I'm very, very disappointed. It was actually during Fellowship of the Ring uh, because people are dumb and don't know that uh, words mean multiple things. Oh, Basically, no. uh, oh. the, the scene where Gandalf is at uh, Frodo's house, I think, for the second time, and he's uh, figured out that the ring is something messed up, and he's uh, showing, he's asking if Frodo still has it or whatever, and he's like picking up the ring with tongs Charge to not complete. touch it, 
and uh, he puts it into uh -huh. the fire, and Frodo's just like mystified. Oh, so in break? No, oh. um, charge complete. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> charge with ten. Uh, and he 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 puts it into the fire, and then he pulls it out with the tongs, and we're distinctly weirded out that Gandalf doesn't even want to touch it. It's like very weird. Then he then he's like, "Hold out your hand, Frodo. It's quite cool." And people thought that he meant it's like, "Hey, this thing's cool." Oh, not, oh, not. It's cold to the touch. It's cold. Uh, and so everybody laughed, or not everybody, but a certain portion of the audience laughed. And I'm like, I don't want to be human anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Humanity was a mistake. It's nothing but trash. This is why genocides happen. <laughs> yeah, that was disappointing. Yeah. Wow. I'm trying to remember, uh, there was one of those um, where it was a scene that was supposed to be taken entirely serious, and then everybody just busted out laughing. Like, literally everybody in the theater started laughing. And yeah. I just can remember what fucking movie it was. Damn it. My brain immediately jumps to that scene in uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, where they're trying to do the fight, the, the bar fight, and, like, none of the animations are lined up properly. It's all off-timed, and people aren't even sitting <laughs> in chairs. They're literally hovering. Their ass is hovering over the ground. It's amazing. Oh, God. Oh, well, that reminds me of Skyrim. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. Here we go. This is happening in all of their games, but Skyrim, to me, is the ultimate version of this due to the strange things you'll often find inside these locations. You'll often find... Uh, I'm gonna need a citation on that one. Yeah, I'm pressing X to do super fucking hard on that one. Isn't this such a weird shift uh, from the meme intro to this? Or, no, they had, like, the ser serious intro. The, the meme times were, like, every five seconds is a new meme or a new joke, and now it's like, Bethesda's done this for since the beginning. It's always their navigational so and so. It's just like, isn't that such like, a weird disconnect? Yeah, and it wasn't always their navigational thing. Again, we, like in fucking Morrowind, where you actually had to listen to the instructions people gave you and make your own navigation thing. It was part of the journey, part of you doing your your plans and preparations for the journey ahead. And what's funny is I, I, I didn't realize until I replayed Skyrim years years later that they actually do have occasional signposts that you can read. And I was like, oh, I had no idea because I never, ever, ever had to use that because a big fat arrow on my compass told me where to go all, at all times. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of funny how uh, even though the compass is technically optional, it's so in your face and it's ever present on your UI that you basically never, ever have to look at your environment for the yeah. most part because you always know where to go yeah yeah that, that's the part that's kind of weirding me out right now is you said there are signs in skyrim and i know you're right i know they're yeah, there they're, they're but i trail, don't recall ever see there. like it, it's weird that i remember that they exist but i don't remember ever seeing one yeah, you like know? I said, I, I didn't discover it until years later when I replayed. I'm like, oh, wow, I had no idea that they had signs here because I was replaying all the games in sequence. Yeah, um, you know, Arena, Daggerfall, all those. And I was like, Morrowind is like, you're you're glued to those signs. You're constantly trying to figure out which way to go. Yeah. Yep. But, that, but like, uh, yeah. That's the thing. If you hadn't said there were signs in Skyrim, I, it would have been completely out of my mind. If you had asked me if there were signs in Skyrim, I would have said straight up no. But now that you mentioned I do... Again, I remember they exist. I just don't recall where I've ever seen them. The only yeah. ones I remember are the ones next to White Run, where they're, the bridge—they're on like forks in the road and everything too. There are those exactly. Yeah. I think of those. Yeah, that's yeah. the most obvious one. But because the the world is so, uh, like you might as well just bird's eye um, every every place you go to, and then just fast travel between them once you've done that because. The, yep. the, the trails don't really matter. Like, it, it, you kind of had to follow the trails roughly in Morrowind. You, you could venture off, obviously, but it was pretty... There's a lot of rocky mountains, and, and I mean, you're on a volcano island. There's going to be a lot of uh, rough terrain. Yeah. So you kind of had to follow the trails somewhat to know where to go, unless you really want to brave it and go off the path and not, in, you know, maybe climb over a cliff and find your own way. But in Skyrim, it's so... Uh, quite often, it's, it's rocky, but it's very... Uh, traversable. Yeah. So why why bother following the path? You know the you know the arrow where to go. 
So. Yep. Yeah. Um, Climbing a mountain just by spamming the jump button. Well, actually, <laughs> that's part of the exact reason Acer Thorn had so much trouble with both Morrowind and New Vegas. He tried to beeline every quest marker, which led him yep. into jumping off cliff faces into water or trying to climb up like sheer cliff faces to like, oh, hey, I could just walk straight there with no critical thinking. Yep. <laughs> and that's something he complained about more when in New Vegas is, oh, you can't just do this. Well, it makes sense that you can't just do this, you fucking idiot. Yep. Um, $5 super chat from a guy under a bridge. Thank you very much. Thank you. 99.9% of the time, it's either a stronger Draugr or a Dragon Priest with an enchanted item less powerful than what you can make, or six Meridia's Beacons. Yes. I still love... That was one of the best stag moments, I I, I gotta say, was uh, me telling the story about the Meridia's Beacons and how, like, I refused to pick it up at the in the treasure chest of one dungeon. I go into, like, two dungeons later, and I notice there's one in an urn. And I go, okay, that's weird. And I made sure I didn't pick it up. And then I walk into the next room and there's one sitting on the table. I'm like, that's ominous. And then I open the chest in that same room and there's one in the fucking chest as well. And I'm like, what the fuck? And as I told that story and we had a good chuckle about that, the video then cut to the the idiot we were watching talking about how great the loot he found was. And he opens up a, he opens up a chest and he picks up the beacon. <laughs> yes. It was like, God <laughs> damn, I called it. See, I thought you were going to lead into the picture Daniel K drew of... Uh... Well, after that, remember, it was after that stag moment, Daniel K then drew a picture um, for me uh, of me with this and how much Meridia um, apparently wants me. Let me see if I can go find that picture real quick. Well, I can't put it up on screen because of the whole image thing not working for whatever reason. Yeah, I can at least show the chat. Um, people in the chat right now. A new hand touches the beacon. Mm. God damn it. <laughs> this pisses me off. Oh. Uh oh. What? Uh, so, he, some. We oh, talked I, about it man, on the. Hold, 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 hold. What? What's going on? Made a small. Hold on a second. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to download and then fucking. So, we talked about it on the stream earlier, on the, uh, the other stream I was on with uh, Sid Alpha and stuff. Yeah. Some fucking retard. Decided to DMCA claim a bunch of Acer's videos. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, even though he had, like, no copyright or anything. It was literally just, oh, well, you're false copywriting people, so I'm going to false copyright you. And, of oh course, that was such a dumb fucking thing to do. Because guess what? Oh, don't don't let a fucking thing go to waste. Because, uh, yeah, he's literally now being like, you're all a bunch of hypocrites. You say I'm using DMCA, but you're clearly the ones false DMCAing me. You're all a bunch of hypocrites, and this just proves my point even further. Well, it's like, yeah, this whoever did that, but, you're a fucking idiot. Hold on, hold you, on, hold you on. You just before, caused so much more issues. Before you get too upset about it, it's probably a troll who is genuinely trying to cause more shit. Yes. Like, obviously, this is something we disagree with. We fucking disavow and all that. Uh, we don't condone that in any way. Uh, that goes without saying, or should. But, you know, Ace of Thrones is a fucking retard. But, like, I, I don't think anyone who's been affected... Like, I know that, you know, Artemis and Enclave Emily and Echo Wilder and all of them, I know they would not false DMCA Ace or like that. So, it's yeah. either some actual retard who heard the story and just decided to jump in and do that, or someone who's intentionally just trying to cause shit. Uh, yep. the, the guy is trying to to go on full vigilante mode, and he's just making everything worse, basically. Yeah, well, again, we, we don't know that for sure. It could yeah. just, it could literally just be someone who's a shit stir. That's yeah, it. but of course, yeah, Acer it... Thorn has taken the opportunity to say, "Oh, it's everyone who uh, he's DMCA'd. It's them being hypocrites <clears throat> for doing that to him, even though he doesn't know who actually did it. We don't yep. know who did it." Yeah, and, be and because totally the actions of a single individual always necessarily represent what the whole group thinks and supports. Well, that's yeah. what he that's seems to believe. That's why the truckers are Nazi racists, duh. Yeah, oh god. Uh, this is a kind of poison the well thing that happens a lot. Um, like, remember the events of 2013 where that whole thing blew up and then um, you get up all these, 
you know, some some are probably just complete idiots, and other ones are probably just false flag or false flag kind of people who just uh, poison the well on both sides, where they just come in and, and harass people, and and then uh, there's certain people who have this mindset that they'll just latch onto any example of their enemies and say, and paint everyone with the same brush, and it's very frustrating because individuals are individuals. And no matter how much you say, don't harass people, don't harass people, that doesn't help. There's going to be somebody who's going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The best you could do is say, don't do this, but there's always going to be that person who does do it regardless. Yep. Yep. It's just humanity. Yep. Yep. Um, five, sorry, $10 super chat from Rage versus the Mill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Got called into work, so I'll be listening to you in the background. Hopefully this video doesn't get any worse. Oh, I'm uh, sure I'd... it gets worse. Probably. Yeah, let's I'm continue. genuinely curious if he will actually talk about this area, like the thing he's looking at, like if he'll actually go into this, or if he's just going to say, this is interesting, and then move on. Well, I... he doesn't have much time. He's already halfway through the video. He doesn't have much time to do Yeah, that. which makes the whole thing pointless, because if you're not even going to explain what makes it interesting, then why are you even making this video? Yeah. Look you at fucking the... idiot. Look... Look at the texture, those textures in that lighting. Damn, look at how I don't, I don't, unless, unless uh, special editions way better than I remember. No, he modded uh, it. Uh, yeah, those we were look talking like. About, we we're talking about it being modded textures and everything before. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that looks heavily modded. Yeah. At Kratos, says, trolling is the art of chaos and chaos is fun. I will neither agree nor disagree with that. I disagree because what trolling used to be. Trolling used to be a way of showing who is the outsider, who is the other, who didn't know what they were doing. Well, not just that. Trolling used to be an art, too. It wasn't just, yes. haha, I'm saying stupid thing. Oh, you're mad. You're responding, yeah. so you're mad. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. It was showing who was the outsider. So you would say something that had kernels of truth in it, but something was wrong in the statement. And then if people were like, yeah, I totally get that, then you'd be like, ha ha ha, I showed you. You're an outsider. Exposed. You know? It was a way. And there were there are a lot of trolling. There were different methods to the art form. Like, wordplay was a fantastic ability of trolling. Like, holy shit. Yeah. I miss I miss old school trolling. It was so fucking good. I, I remember back in 2014, uh, more or less, I played Battlefield 4. <clears throat> and I genuinely called myself a troll there because, <laughs> to be honest with you guys, it's kind of retarded. <laughs> and I, and I love to kill people with the defibrillators. So I called <laughs> myself a fucking troll. Yep. And also, each time, each time I did it, I laughed like if I was a fucking retarded bonobo on crack. I even appeared on, on Game Sprout, and <laughs> yeah, you you could just feel like... how how of an idiot I was. But yeah, it, it was kind of, kind of an art because it was not the easiest thing in the world. But if you if you go to today um, and say something for for someone just to make them mad, it's <laughs> anyone can do this shit. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing special about it. My the thing the modern day trolling I like the most is stuff in in the Souls community where like dude you, you know there dude leaves a like item and you're like wait there's just an item sitting there is it near a ledge? No, it's not near a ledge. Well, I'm going to go pick it up. Then you go pick it up, and they cast dead again, and all the bodies next to the item explode and kill you instantly. <laughs> <laughs> or the other one is like, like, huh, there's no there's no bodies here. Um, there, we're not really close to a ledge or anything like that. Uh, you go over there, and you get it, and then the guy pops out of chameleon form right next to you, and he casts force, knocks you on your ass, and you bounce back enough that you hit a slope that a part of the geometry and slide down into the void slowly until you die. <laughs> It's like that shit. That is just great. Again, that's trolling, but that is trolling with a, a great setup and a real snappy punchline to it. <laughs> he it's just slides slowly into the void. Style. Yeah. Uh, oh, I love. Yeah, there was more to it than just being a fucking retard. Yeah, my favorite are the, the bridge trolls, the, the especially in Dark Souls 3, because there's a couple bridges you can use, and if you know the exact timing to where they're fucked, no matter if they if they run towards you, you're going to smack them backwards and off of a cliff, or if they try to run back, they won't make it back to the other side of the bridge in time. 
Hmm. <laughs> uh, five dollars from the Reaper Enjoyer. Thank you. Hey, furry EFAP. Um, no. I don't know if anyone has asked yet. Pagan, how much of a certain New Vegas LP have you seen? Um, uh, a certain New Vegas LP. Yeah, you're gonna have to be more specific because I don't know what you're referring to. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to keep it oh. out in chat for the comment. Oh, oh another, yeah. another great troll are the people that hide themselves as the NPCs in, in Dark Souls. Those are fucking great. <laughs> they pretend to be they pretend to be patches or they pretend to be one of the mobs because there are certain areas where you can stand that are near mobs, but they won't aggro. And if you're dressed up in their entire uniform and everything like that and using the weapons, you can just kind of sit there. And how many times watching people run by looking for you when they're trying to gank you is fucking hilarious. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, $5 from the Reaper Enjoyer. Thank you. Spoilers ahead. After he missed the sniper and Kimball's head popped, he looked up a guy to find him in his blind let's play. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we knew that. Uh, yeah, Pagan was uh, going to try and watch that. And then it... The psychic damage was real, and Pagan didn't mm. finish it. But <laughs> numerous people on the Discord server got into a call and watched through the entire fucking thing. I don't yep. know how they survived. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I watched a few episodes with them, and then I was just like, I can't do this anymore. This hurts too much, and I bailed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um... Yeah, Johnny Off 14 says, at such trolling is meant to be harmless fun and teasing, not blatant harassment. Yeah, basically. That's, again, trolling has an art form to it. Uh, $5 uh, from High Speed Tacos. Thank you. What is your opinion on people who follow sheep quests in games? I personally don't mind when it happens if you take it in grace and don't spaz out. I don't mind if people take the sheep route in games. If they don't say, oh, this game is shit because I can't think critically and didn't uh, take the non-sheep route, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and, and as Senator Abby Strong puts it, uh, yeah, such, I encounter some invader hackers like Mr. X and Armstrong himself. Yeah. When you get hacker, when you get trolls that are also hackers, but they know the art of trolling, so they're not there to ruin your experience. They're not there to corrupt your game save or anything like that, but they're like, come in and... The guy looks like a weak little twig when he's wearing armor and everything, and he comes up to attack you, and he hits you, and he does one damage, and you smack him back, and he runs away, and then you see him strip his arm off, and all of a sudden his muscles are enormous. He's like, boom, boom, and he comes running at you, and he starts, like, swinging away, and he starts knocking you around all over the place. That shit's funny. Yeah, <laughs> I love it when they do shit like that. Those videos are great when you see people doing shit like that. Yeah. When they're they're doing it, they're they're putting on again. They're setting up the they're setting up the joke, which is here's this guy. He he literally modified his armor so when he's wearing this armor, it gives him little twig arms and everything like that. He's using a broken weapon that does no damage, so he hits you and it's just like. Bing, bing, bing. Then you hit him back once, and he runs away. He strips all his armor off, and he's the biggest buffest thing ever. Like his model is breaking because his <laughs> his abs and his arms and everything are huge, and he runs back at you. <laughs> and he starts just punching you. <laughs> he turns into the fucking tank from off. Left 4 Dead. <laughs> what you're saying reminds me of Mordhau. You, you, you know, that's not Mordhau, right? That the the meme is there's a somebody made a meme recently talking about the the zombie apocalypse survivors, and it shows the guy in like full full armor and everything like that. The first one to die. And then everyone else is like various different levels of naked and they're different like great oh, yeah. leaders. The By the way, fun fact. That who made that shit is me. Nice. Here. <laughs> yeah. Here, this is um, a, this is another meme that's like that. Also want to grab um, this comment. I don't mind the sheep wrote as long as they don't brag about how it's the right choice. The NCR yeah. ending is the objective best ending. Even though it kills Good Springs. I still can't believe that fucking idiot. Holy shit. Oh, wait, imagine the levels as being their level of experience in the game, by the way. <laughs> it's, so, yeah. it's so fucking true. Yeah, it is. It really is. <laughs> uh, 
changing the, the subject just a, just a little bit, coming back to, to Mordhau, just so we can have a little laugh about it here. Uh, you mentioned the guy that was all bloody, right? Remember? Mm. Oh, you guys might actually like the, the video. It's from a YouTuber called Lara, by the way. Lara BTW called Eat Joggers. Worst player in Mordhau. Guy was le legit an archer with the dodge perk. No secondary weapon that killed himself every time someone got close to him. Wow. I didn't know how you do that. <laughs> this is why we love Mord How this way to death and glory. <laughs> yeah. And in Mord How, rolling is still an art. Definitely an art. If you. And if you don't think so, you don't know who Dergri is. Yeah, I I, I kind of get your point, Sech, in that um, there was kind of like an unspoken uh, art of coding, or sorry, art of trolling, where yeah. essentially, like, there was obviously some bad apples and, uh, at all times, malicious actors, things like that. But for the most part, trolling was uh, goofing, you know, yeah. mostly harmless goofing. Oh, oh no, you got got. <laughs> Well, he got he outsmarted you, kind of thing. Where yeah, the, was... the follow me in Ultima Online. Follow me. I know where all the good stuff is. And then they knock you out and they take all your stuff and they put it on the other side. All of your stuff is literally on the other side of a locked door. You can see it. You can visibly see all of your gear sitting there. They're like, <laughs> ha ha. Yeah, it's that's like... a little that's mean, but like, yeah, it's not gonna not gonna ruin your life. The, the problem with a lot of trolls now. I mean, I don't even know if it's necessarily like trolls or something you could probably more accurately label them as something else but like yeah. uh people take the internet interactions a whole lot more seriously like back in the day it was like forums and and uh you know website posts and whatever what uh, what have you right but now with social media being tied to your identity and verification and also the thing like you can you can ruin somebody's life <laughs> if you if you uh you know mess with them enough or you know do that kind of thing so it's it's yep. because because things have been taken so seriously and cancel canceling people has become a thing it's it's very difficult to it it really it really hurts the internet community when people take it too far i think and i i, I don't does. think people have the same Absolutely. restraint as they used to yeah ain't that the truth which is just sad it's really yeah. sad i i will say there's here's, here's a spicy take i think teaching when we when we taught kids what self-esteem was was the start of the downfall yeah now i hate i hate self-esteem as an entire concept jesus christ i mean you, should, also the... you, you shouldn't be depressed and hate yourself but at the same time uh a over bloated self of uh over bloated idea of self-worth and yes. your ability uh, you should be realistic because, in your expectations. Yeah, because self-esteem came along with the participation awards. Yep, that's and exactly what I was going to You should treat up, your, right? your self-esteem the way you should treat I your your body. It. You, because, you shouldn't, uh, okay. shouldn't uh, starve it. You shouldn't not eat anything so it gets completely weak. Yeah. But you so, shouldn't also feed it uh, too much to the point where you you turn into a human hippopotamus. Yeah, yeah. That's so here, here's the reason why self-esteem is so bad it's because you then are, when you're taught the concept of self-esteem you're the top the concept of having your your esteem your self-worth hurt by every little thing so that started the slide towards well everybody needs a participation trophy because everybody showed up and it, it's again and... it was a huge mistake you shouldn't have taught people self-esteem you should have taught people the value of hard work that should have been the thing we kept focusing on yeah and i was going to bring up the participation uh trophy too or the particip participation award um i for a long time i didn't think it was a big problem just because when i was a kid i got one i was like so fucking what everyone got one like obviously i didn't say that to the teachers or any like you know when i was a kid but like Internally, yeah. I was thinking, everyone got one. What's the value in this? I don't care. 
Yeah, I remember participation awards and everything started becoming a thing later in my yeah. schooling. And it was like, I fucking hate it. And that's when we stopped teaching critical thinking as well, which is just... <sighs> it's a combination of uh, lack of personal responsibility and uh, the complete and utter mispreparation and uh, mis misinterpretation yeah. of how the world works. Like, in the real world, only one person's getting that job, so you better make sure your resume looks good. You better m make sure you nail that uh, job interview. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. not everybody who applies to that job is going to get the job, you yeah. know, participation job. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't work out that way. Uh, so. Snoogan, I'm sorry, this, this might hurt a little bit, but Snoogan 11 says, in regards to participation medals, I disagree. I think they're important because I suffered from respiratory issues in my youth. I couldn't compete to everyone else's level. Should I just have been excluded? Yes. You should have been excluded. I'm sorry. That's the way the real world works. We, it should be meritocracy. What should have happened instead is you were told no, and you would have driven yourself to prove them wrong. That should have been the lesson that well, you should have been taught. There's there's also the... He, he did say he had respiratory issues. We don't know how bad that is. It could be I mean, like that's true. a legitimately if you're serious thing where well. he can't like do sports or whatever. In which case, like then, then I'm sorry. Then yes, you still should have been excluded. If you physically could not have done it, then yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. But that's the thing too is there was a zero percent chance of getting an actual award. Anyways, getting a particip uh, participation award is still like nothing. It's it's an award for showing up, which is like the yeah. bare minimum. Like. Yeah, I I'd guess that's the thing nothing. I'm I'm taking for I'm taking what Deus of Volt Infidel is saying. You wouldn't have been excluded. You would have l only lost. Yes, you should have been. You should have lost. Yeah, like, exactly. Excluded. If you're saying you couldn't participate at all, then yeah, th w what's the trophy do? It literally didn't give you anything. Yeah. So. Yeah, because I, I yeah I was always the kind of person where I was like I would rather just lose and not get anything. That and literally everybody get the same fucking trophy. Like, yeah, that's fucking pointless. That's the that's the thing that uh, Mike Burnfire and uh, Zach Hazard discuss, where like there there are tr there are awards you get for just being in the military that mean nothing. But Zach told a story about how he got a challenge coin that was given to him by the um, Op Four forces at one of the forts that he was stationed at. And there's an entire company who their entire job to keep everyone on their toes and and thinking about all security things um, and thinking about security and all that stuff like that is to have this other unit on the base at all times actually constantly try to steal shit and harass people and like knock people out and drag them off and stuff like that. Be like, I oh, should have better security. That's their entire goal on the base. And again, it's to keep people always on their toes, always on alert. And he talked about how because he quickly, he, he got all of their, their rifles gauged and everything like that for them, no questions asked, he just did the, the work. The commander of that entire company came to him and gave him one of their challenge coins. And so Zach Hazard gets to tell the story of how I got awarded for aiding and abetting the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> and that means way more to him than his than his stupid. Oh, you were you were in the military during Iraq. Here's your little medal. He's like that medal is meaningless. I've threw it away somewhere. I don't know where it is. But that challenge coin is important to me. That's interesting. I didn't know they went that far. I know that there's um, uh, for like you know cybersecurity and stuff. There's white hat hackers. There's also um, professional uh, penetration testers who will actually like use lock picks and any anything at their. Uh, you know, any skills available to them other than, you know, physically attacking, knocking people out and stuff like that to get into uh, high security businesses and things like that, like lockpicking, you know, yep. pulling data off of servers, all, thing, all things like that. And it's it's a pretty crazy job because these people have to like break in at night and potentially get caught by security. <laughs> yep. They, they can show their card and say, hey, actually, I'm employed by the company. You can double check, call your boss, whatever. But it's got to be pretty, pretty nerve wracking to be in that situation. <laughs> I can imagine yeah. how much more that is to do that for military folks, you know? 
Yeah, but what I'm saying, Wolf of Fenris, it's the same basic concept of they're doing it there to have actual opposition. They're the ones that, um, as Zach Hazard specifically uh, specified, that they actually have tunnels that they personally dug all over the base so they could pop up during a training mission at any point. So, again, it's stuff like that. That is such a great idea of having a counter force to constantly test your forces <laughs> and keep them on edge. Anyways, uh, we could get back to the video. Yeah, sure. I want to get this over with. Yeah, 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 let's do it. I definitely want to get to the point where I can show uh, some of the guys in here that other video. Oh, uh, Snail Wizard, yeah. Yes, Snail Wizard. That that video is the fucking best. Holy shit. A getting wolves to fight. A man trying to remove a necromancer from his ancestral tomb. A flooded prison filled with the ghosts and journals of prisoners left to die. Maybe you'll find a nice old lady in a cabin before going into her cellar and learning she's a witch. Maybe you'll just find a headless horseman out in the middle of nowhere. Maybe you'll walk by a cave only to find a man bleeding out, asking for a help. So, uh, these are just like little things that pretty much any open world game would probably have. Yes. Like pointing out that they these things exist. This, I'm actually getting cinema things vibe from this. It's a thing. Ding. Yeah. yeah. These have no depth. There's nothing more to them than literally what you're describing. Yeah. Literally the very thing you're describing is also where it ends. Yeah. Like the flooded prison, for example. Okay. There's notes and journals from prisoners. What does that like? What information can I get from that? That's actually useful. Oh no, I've been locked in prison. Now it's flooding and now I'm drowning and now I'm dead. Oh, okay. It's just not that yeah. compelling. It's just praised by it's praised by spreadsheet. Just like there's a man without a head. There's a man in a cave. There's a man doing this. There's a woman doing that. It's just yeah. The, I think you, I think having a few really good examples that are well analyzed and put into context would be way more uh, compelling than just saying that there's different side quests in the game. <laughs> I that, kind of expect that in a sixty dollar uh, open world RPG. You know that should yeah. actually be a bingo space such. Praise by spreadsheet. <laughs> that is actually an amazing phrase. That is an amazing phrase. You know, I genuinely think that uh, examples like those are actually nice in Skyrim. But as you said, it's uh, uncommon stuff, in uncommon instances are common in every open world game. So it's not unique yeah. as he's trying to put it. Yeah, I'm not even criticizing these particular quests. I'm just saying that he has no he uh, elaborates on none of them and provides yeah. no compelling reason why that makes this a bittersweet masterpiece. Yeah, you didn't even talk about the thing as that P I mentioned before. As PTR D forty one says in chat, the game has content. Please clap. Yeah. <laughs> that that's, yeah, that's really cool. what it comes across as, because you're not talking like if we were to sit down and talk about something like I don't know, Deep Space Nine. We could talk about, like, yeah. here's why all these stories work, or here's where this doesn't quite work here. Here's why Julian Bashir is a fucking obnoxious horn dog in season one, but later on in the show he becomes a really good character. Yep. Uh, you know, Quark demanding the Golden Babel, um, the Cardassians <laughs> being right in that one episode with the uh, Bajoran terrorists. Like, yes. A lot Dude, of those things so work, and we could talk extensively, and will talk extensively about all these things. But, like, he's just saying, oh, here's a thing there, there's a thing there, there's a thing there. It doesn't tell uh, us yeah. anything. That'll be he's completely he, substanceless. That'll yeah. be on the 27th, by the way, guys. If so, And that goes for our guests, too. If our guests want to join on the 27th, uh, when we talk about Deep Space Nine, feel free. But yeah, on the 27th, we will be doing another stag, and it'll be all about Season 1. Season 1 only of Deep Space Nine. Yeah. But yeah, he didn't even talk about the th the fucking, the other thing. Like, he didn't even give it a summary of what it was. He just showed a corpse on a bed and just moved on. And it's like, yep. th that's literally fucking nothing. And you could have at least talked about what it was. It's not that great, but there is more to it than literally nothing. 
a lot of people make the mistake of when they go in there, they just assume, oh, he was killed by the skeevers. He no, they were his pets. You could see the food and bowls and stuff on the floor. He 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 had a bunch of rats as pests and he lived outside of town because he was socially awkward and didn't like being around people and he was depressed and there's poison on the nearby table. He killed himself. Uh, exactly. As much as I love Deep Space Nine, it only got better once the Dominion War started. That's such. No, I disagree. Uh, it starts off really good. There are, there's, there are some definite sore spots in Season 1. But it starts yeah. off really good, and it gets better and better as they go along. Yeah, I have to agree, because I've only seen like three or four episodes, and I have really liked it so far, we're, even with the, uh, the issues that it has. We're actually 9 out of 20 episodes <clears> in. Which, by the way, anyone interested in the Deep Space Nine stream... You have until the twenty seventh to watch all of season one. Yep. Um, highly, highly recommend. But well, anyway, something. Uh, uh, you want to con you want to continue the video? Well, yeah, I was going, but you could say something there if you want. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what he said about these, uh, uh, these. Uh, uncommon scenes that you find throughout Skyrim really makes me uh, wonder if he mostly talks about Skyrim's, you know, gameplay or story. Well, that's many the thing. Many people don't know. <laughs> many people don't very much know the difference be between the two. They, they confuse gameplay with lore a lot, and, you know, yeah. I'm gonna say it. This is fucking retarded. <laughs> yeah. It is. It really is. Yeah. I'll give a concrete example here, just just for the lols, just because. Just because. Yeah. Um. You know. You, you know. When you walk um, past a Talmor patrol or uh, an an Imperial patrol escorting a Stormcloak prisoner. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people say that. Um, that. For, for example, the, the Imperial support the, the Thalmor, because if you do so much as punch w w one of one of those justiciers at the patrol at the patrols, get a bounty. And that's technically true, but the thing is, if they get hostile towards you first, you get no bounty. It's a game mechanic issue, not a lore issue. Yet many people are, are out there acting like if it was something something that it was established lore. I mean, first an RPG. I, I, I don't know if, it all, if all of you know that this channel. He showed, um, he found uh, an Imperial patrol in Whiterun, who, by the way, was still neutral at, at, at that point. Fred, he hit, no, he didn't free the Stormcloak prisoner. He attacked one of the Imperial guards. Got a bounty, neutral Whiterun, and the Stormcloak prisoner and the Stormcloak prisoner started attacking him. So, yeah, if you think that's anything close to the lore, then I don't know what you have in your head, but it's not brains. Another point I'd like to point out is that um, <clears throat> this is an interesting contrast to uh, that video uh, uh, Patrician TV was covering yesterday with uh, Jinji. He had a very different style. Instead of just like, you know, there's a man without a head. There's a person in a cave. There's a dead person here. There's a woman there. Like, yep. just, like, extreme, like, one-line uh, uh, summaries. He would spend, like, two or three minutes describing the an entire quest pretty much dry, uh, just, like, all the options you can do in that quest. And then move on to another one. <laughs> just, like, no commentary. Just pretty much, this is how, this is what this quest is. And he did, like, three three to five examples, and it was... It was just odd because, uh, like, it's not it's not obviously like copyright infringement, but it kind of reminds me of the um, uh, how uh, the how basically how a lot of YouTube works is that uh, what you make is transformative content. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it's it's not it, it's it's fair use, and it has nothing to do with this. But basically, it just reminds me how like if if this was. Uh, a movie and you just like show the movie and describe exactly what happens in the movie. That's not necessarily transformative, even though I, I guess it technically would be since you added a voiceover. So you have to kind of add some spice opinions. 
more information, how they do this, uh, how this camera angle communicates, blah. You know, uh, it's just odd that it's completely non-transformative, uh, essentially a regurgitated uh, fandom article on that quest. You know, this quest has this NPC here, that NPC there, you must go here first and talk to that person. And then at this point, you have a, have a choice to either do that or this, which will lead to the next section, which then you have to kill this guy or find the item here. And it's just, it was extremely weird to just see uh, an entire quest just explained dryly without hardly any commentary or uh, critique or or any transformative uh, quality to it. It's just, well, just reading the script pretty much. A, a lot of that, the reason it's transformative is because the individual play, the, the work, the movements, the shifting of the camera is all on the player. It's why game companies can't stop live streaming or they can't stop uh, those no commentary walkthrough videos because they are transformative by their very nature of being played. It's the thing that got upheld in court quite a few times. Like, okay, so show us, show us you playing it. Oh, it's different. Show us them playing it. Oh, it's different. Show us them playing it. It's different because yeah, everybody does things differently. They'll look at one thing for longer periods of time or lesser periods of time. It all becomes a transformative work. It it gets into a, an absurd thing of like that's why every. Basically, every single DMCA claim against YouTube channels from big companies is bullshit. Because it's already been upheld in court that the very act of playing is you becoming the director of your own movie, essentially. Um, also, a comment in chat that reminds me of Game Maker's Toolkit versus Ahoy. Yeah, that that's another... Uh, channel EFAP has covered a lot Game Maker's Toolkit where they just describe things but they don't really do like a good job of it you know yeah um, it's, it's extremely well presented and everything like that but he basically describes very basic concepts um, like and says a, just well, weird things too like um, my favorite is versatile verbs <laughs> <laughs> But uh, uh, I, one of his videos is like, for example, um, give a specific was uh, just describing how the bosses in uh, Cuphead work. And uh, the t to be fair, the title was not clickbait. It says how the bosses in, Cl in Cuphead work, uh, paraphrasing. That's basically what he said. And the video is just describes how the bosses in Cuphead work. And that's literally all he does. He describes it in the and this boss, you know, moves up and down and then does blah, blah, blah. Until you hit him, then he goes into this animation, blah. And it's like, cool. I could also just watch a Let's Play and get all that information <laughs> myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, at, at least it's not on the level of the secret of Mario's jump, where he doesn't actually tell you what the secret of Mario's jump is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wonder if that argument still holds up if the game is like The Last of Us or Telltale and purely narrative. It does, because the only way you would have to claim that, oh, you know, it's this, because this cutscene plays out the same every way. But if you cut out all the other gameplay, you are making directorial decisions to cut out all the rest of the gameplay that gets you in between those cutscenes. Therefore, you are directing your own. You have already transformed the work. Because you are cutting and editing out things that existed. Uh, again, it's it's why, um, as much as I hate him as a person, H three H three won his or was H three H three or was it Sargon who got the lawsuit against him? Because they Sargon. took Sargon. The, it was Sargon. Both. Okay, good. It was both. H three H three had a lawsuit against him over a video um, he he had criticized. Uh, yeah, it's this, it's this almost one, similar to the Ace of Thrones situation. This was Sargon one then. Uh, Sargon took someone else's video, in fact, two of them, and put them together, showcasing them being a hypocrite and being wrong and basically fighting against herself Yeah, the entire time. But he had no commentary himself. He had no voice work himself in it, nothing like that. But it was still, it was still transformative work because he, as a director of this new content, cut up and edited that what he was given and made something new and different. Even though he didn't add his own voice work, he didn't add subtitles, he didn't do anything like that. Yeah. Because the two clips presented side by side told a story uh, uh, themselves that you wouldn't get from the individual clips being played in their original context. 
again, the the exact wording of the language has to be um, the what is it the uh, the heart of the work. So, it, what if I upload a movie and cut out a couple of scenes? I ain't getting away with that. No, you're not, because the heart of the work is still there. You haven't changed the heart of the work. That's the problem. And they can't make the claim for, on video games, you can't claim the heart of the work is the cutscenes. No, it's a video game. It's an interactive experience, so the heart of the work has to be the gameplay. And the gameplay, by its very nature of being played, is different. Per person. Yeah, it gets really difficult when you get very, very cinematic games with not a whole lot of variation, though. Like, you play the kind of... Uh... No, I, I like the game, but like you know, until dawn, uh, it was pretty c- cutscene heavy. Had a couple interactive sequences, um, uh, or anything like David Cage has made in the last ten years. Very, <laughs> you, you could pra- you could practically, uh, you could practically play uh, put up like five uh, let's plays of that game and put it in a con- content ID, and ninety percent of the playthroughs would be tagged because there's only like certain variations, but the the cutscenes themselves are identical. So yeah, it, it, those kind of games get get a little bit tricky because there's only so much you can actually transform about it. Yeah, but, if, we're, so if we're literally talking like basically barely barely interactive movies, yeah, you can argue for it's a gameplay. The heart of the work is the experience and the interactivity of the of playing it, but it becomes harder when it's something like a say. Metal Gear Solid 4 that had that 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 cutscene that was what uh half hour long or something. Well, there's been yeah. some longer ones in that series, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's hard for you to say that showing that entire cutscene without anything else is not taking the entire heart of that particular moment. Because law is fucking weird. Yeah, uh law is like good 20 20- 20 years or so uh, downstream from culture, so they just not have not caught up from this at all. They really need to optimize it. I mean, fair use is, is pretty damn solid in, in uh, concept, but extremely flimsy in practice. Yes. Like, it gets abused all the time, both ways. Like, there was a time where I, I was uh, petrified of using more than a couple seconds of, of uh, uh, movie footage but yet I'd see, remember, remember, I think they finally clamped down on them, but remember those like 24 seven South Park streams that never get took, uh, taken down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was up there for a while. So it was just weird how certain things were able to dodge it and cer- certain, uh, mediums were being very punished. And we're actually seeing that a lot in Twitch where Twitch users have kind of gotten a free pass for a while because, uh, live stream content's a lot har- harder to, co- uh, har- a lot harder to clamp down and Twitch as a platform just didn't nearly have uh, as uh, exhaustive of a system as YouTube does in, in terms of content ID and stuff like that. But now we're seeing Twitch users like, what, I can't watch movies on Twitch? And it's like, no, you can't. That's copyright infringement. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyways, are uh, we um, good to get back to let me the get video? This, let me get this super chat real quick and then, yep. yeah, we'll go back to the video. Um. Five dollars from Dark World XL. Thank you very much. Thank you. One of the best videos on YouTube in regards to copyright law is YMS, your movie sucks video. Basic enough to understand while providing examples. Yep. I haven't seen it, but probably it's good. Um, also, of... uh, yeah. yeah uh, we can do this real quick. By the way, Kratosis, I disagree with what you said in your other video about yeah, how this drama yeah, will hurt. Yeah, I know. I read that. Um, oh. It, that's the kind of thing that's best not to say it loud. Yeah. Because we don't want... Because you don't want what? Him finding out. No. Well. You know? We we already talked about it multiple times. Like, what? This specific thing. Okay. Let, let me write Fair. it in chat. Um, also, just want to say I'm I'm back. I apologize. I forgot it was the Super Bowl and that there were so many people on the road for me going to get my food. So I apologize for my tardiness. Yeah, no Not what happens. Don't uh, worry. I'll tell you the same thing though. Skibbity bibbity. Um, skibbity bibbity. Uh, on February 27th, we'll be doing a Deep Space Nine season one stream on Stag if you would like to. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you said the 27th. Yes. And we'll uh, be doing only season one. All right. 
that is uh, um, so people can have time to watch uh, season one and if they would like to come in and again you know, you're more than welcome you have an open invitation to be a guest when you would like so yeah yeah no i'd, I'd totally love to uh as long as i'm just not working that day yeah right. it's a my sunday work, my work yeah. oh oh well i i work with dogs and everything so they don't ever have a day off so my schedule oh. is like i only i have two days off a week but it's always like floating it's very strange <laughs> You're not but, a moderator. Uh, yeah. uh, I was a... gonna say, I was gonna say, it won't help him though, Cree. It won't. In fact, it, it what he just did is guaranteed death. I, I know that, but it, it matters what he thinks. Okay, All right. that, that's what I'm trying to get across. Fair, fair. Okay. Because if he thinks it'll help him, then he'll do it more. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. All right. Um, oh my god, you guys only made it two more minutes. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, I resent nope, that you know statement. <laughs> you know what? I, I knew what I was getting into when you guys... I get it. I You know what? I, I retract the statement. <laughs> well, damn it, we were trying not to prove Sid off a right here, okay? Yeah, I was just about to say, this is why Sid it will never come on. <laughs> hey, he can yeah. come on even if it's only for ten minutes. And yeah. that's what I told yeah, him. That's what we told him, yes. But this is not... <laughs> This is not evidence towards the contrary of his statement, all right? <laughs> all right, here we go. Health potion after he was mauled bear inside of it. Modern open world games, with the exception of Breath of the Wild, which was coincidentally influenced by Skyrim, tell you exactly where everything is and give you a rough idea of what's there. Side quests and enemy outposts and challenges. What? what? Which, which open world game does that? What? From the get-go? No, no. Yeah, I can't think of a single I game. I've played very few open-world games, and even I yeah. can't say that. What he said is bullshit. Like, like, he, bullshit. He showed he showed Red Dead Redemption Two, and this is, I believe, one of the Far Cry games. I'm not positive though. Yeah, that's a big fucking no, citation needed. Games, yeah. Okay, no, no. Okay, this is such a stupid statement. Look at that mini map that he's showing on screen. Look at those grayed out parts. You have to discover yeah. the area, and then it auto marks for you. The only difference between and then a, even a, and a, a Ubisoft game and Breath of the Wild is that Breath of the Wild you have to mark it yourself. And even look at that. Notice how there are a bunch of just squares, just generic squares. They don't tell you what's there. Yeah, that square tells me nothing about what is in each of those locations. Yeah. And there's it's... tons of fog of war and stuff like that. Uh, uh, the Ubisoft games generally, you have a radius, and if if something of note is within that radius, it'll highlight it on your map. But Skyrim d essentially does that for you as well. It's the same. The yeah. only different the only difference is Breath of the Wild kind of was counterculture on that, in that you have to mark towers yourself, you have to mark dungeons yourself, and that's just like a kind of little added mechanic where you have to look through your little scope thingy and and mark it. Which that is, kind of... is not what he's saying, Zen. Jesus fucking Christ. You climb a tower, it marks everything. That's what he's saying, idiots. No, it isn't. He is not saying that. He has not said that. He said, look at every single modern one, and from the very beginning, it shows you everything that's there, which it doesn't do. Well, yeah. And one of his back. examples is Red Dead Redemption 2. Fucking Peach Cobbler is just a dumbass. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's just a scripting error or whatever, but that's just a, that's a huge, it's a, a demonstrably false statement that he shows on screen how demonstrably false it is. You look at the gameplay he shows, they show how that, wrong that is. You see, you only see what you've been near, and in traditional Ubisoft fashion, your normal exploration radius is greatly enhanced if you go to a tower, which creates a greater exploration radius around the tower. So yeah. it reveals the things around that. I don't, sometimes, I, I think a couple games might have had like small regions that get revealed if you do that tower, but generally it's like a, it's like a circle radius as far as I remember. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't literally show you everything from the get go. Jesus no. fucking Christ! Like, sorry, Zen. I'm sorry. You're gonna have to wear the dunce cap now. I actually, you know what? I, I I'm gonna fuck this guy. I'd say the reverse. <laughs> Skyrim shows you the whole map, not all the items in it, but it shows you the whole map from the beginning. Skyrim doesn't start with a uh, a fog of war, so you get to see the entire terrain of the map, if I recall correctly. From the very get go, you just don't know yep. what's what's in it. Yeah, so and anything, they also show and, this, all the cities, but they're grayed out. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, main cities. The, I should. Exactly. You see the cities, and you can only transport to them once you've been there. But you see where the cities are. Hold on, you hold see on, the hold on. Terrain of the map. Yeah. 
All right, let's get into the insults, bro. Respectful debate, my guy. You're the one who threw insults first, you, you fucking retard. You started the insult, you fucking dumbass. If you climb a tower, it marks everything. That's what he's saying, idiots. Yeah, well, fuck you too, cunt. Yeah. Blow it out so your again, ass. You're just a fucking dipshit, Zen. Jesus Christ. All right. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't I don't usually try to do ad hominem attacks, but I, I just recalled now that you see the entire map fr from the beginning in Skyrim. You don't, and, get, you don't get Fog of War. And by the way... Yeah. Even uh, Oblivion doesn't show you the terrain. It's it's done as a paper map. Uh, it's been a while since I played Oblivion. How does Oblivion do their maps? Uh, I believe you. I, I just haven't seen it for a while. Let me uh, get it up on screen. Well, I can't share it with uh, chat, but I could grab it for you. Um... It gets colored in, right? Uh, no. It is... Uh beige or not beige but like browns and uh where's there it is that's oblivion's uh default in-game map without any of the actually no there are the map icons on there so even the map icons kind of blend into the map a bit yeah i remember we uh they actually had fast travel to cities you hadn't been in some cases in oblivion which is yeah. kind, of, kind of weird now, there are... I think it does. It does. It does get colored in when you explore it, though, right? That was my point. No, that that, that is, uh, that is the map as it is in game all the time. There are mods yeah. that will uh, give you a color version of it, but okay. um, what I posted in our chat there is what's in game. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Brown yeah, paper. But... Yeah. And yeah, no, the uh, I remember the Skyrim map specifically shows you a 3D version of the entire, the entirety of Skyrim. It yep. doesn't show yeah. you. It doesn't show you all of the obviously all the caves, dungeons, things like that. You have to discover those yourself. But it shows you where the cities are, relative ge uh, geography, and you know it, it's not a not difficult to guess where the things are going to be. You know, you can see. I think you might even see uh, low poly versions of like the trails and and uh, mountains and things like that. So you can kind of see where things are going to be. You just haven't. You don't have the icon there. So I would say that, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, Ubisoft games show you less at the beginning than Skyrim does. Yeah. Well, yeah, Skyrim, that's fair. I think, is a 3D, is a render of the entire world because I think there's videos showing that if you kill a dragon and then go to your map, you can see the dragon in real time on your map. Yeah. yeah I heard of that before. Um, so that's, I'm. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I've heard that. I mean, too. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I've seen multiple videos on that. So Skyrim does just straight up like have a render of the world as the map, and and it's kind of counterintuitive to use the two examples as he did, because again, like if the stuff we're looking at now, it's again, it's just there's the fog of war, and again, you have to climb these towers. But his argument is that oh, all these games just tell you where they are. It's not even on the map. But for the Red Dead map. It's it's a brown map. Like yes, it does tell you where the strangers and the quests might be, and to be fair, Red Dead does tell you where everything is. But it also like again to defend a game that I don't necessarily like agree with everything about. It doesn't tell you where everything is. You still have to go find the secrets. There's still quests randomly out there. There's so much that you don't actually see on the map. Yes, there's a lot on the map, sure, from the get go. But on top of that, there's so much more that isn't on the map. And he's saying that, oh, you get to see everything just because, yeah, there's markers there. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. His his arguments are... Every every argument he puts, his his uh, footage kind of counters it. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing. Look his here, whole point title... is how different Skyrim is, but it's not at all. Yeah, I don't think Skyrim has those towers, but you if you get near enough to something uh, within an X meter radius, you're going to it's going to be revealed on your map. That's yep. just how the game works, and that's how most games work. Uh Ubisoft just saw Ubisoft just saw that kind of popular and successful uh game mechanic in in Assassin's Creed and decided to put it in all their games. I don't know. If, I think Assassin's Creed was their first. I think they started putting it in a Far Cry after that, but yeah, it and I, and I don't, I don't find an issue. And in, in if if you're in a civilized and charted country, it's not too difficult to imagine that you have a map of it, but you wouldn't know where everything is. You know, you wouldn't know a hidden cave or a caravan or something that isn't a permanent uh, structure in the world. You probably know where major cities were, where ro roads were, and things like that. That's fine. It just depends on what kind of. Uh, what kind of environment, what kind of uh, 
world are we talking about? Is this an uncharted world, not uncharted the game, but an, uh, uncharted by you know the adjective and and that you don't know the terrain of the or the lay of the land and you're kind of scribing this map yourself any game can kind of take a different angle but yeah you know you know where everything is at the beginning in skyrim roughly you just don't have all the details until you get close just like uh far cry but in, and as as they showed in whatever game that was you didn't even know the terrain yet so yeah, yeah. well That's same fun. thing in red dead redemption 2 you don't know the terrain yet like you don't know where the boundaries of the map actually are until you start exploring that way or you find a map yeah it's a very sparse a very sparse outline of the of the country but not or but not really a very detailed map you're, you're yeah it, you're it doesn't show detailed. you uh hang on i think i got a good way to show this um here we go this will work uh maybe it'll work open image a new tab. um while you're doing that uh, Nathan Gordo, welcome to Owl. Thank you for the membership. So you see how, like, some of it, it literally is just the background color? Because he hasn't explored it anywhere near that area. Yeah, Fog so, of War. Yeah. yeah. So, again, when you actually explore any of the areas, you see it starts putting in the roads for you and the, the different creeks and rivers and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, on I... top of that, because yeah. of the colors of the map, it doesn't tell you, for example exactly where it starts knowing but Kyle's yeah. map does yeah again it was a really bad choice for him to put red dead redemption 2 in there <laughs> yeah i don't know why i mean really it, it, it it gave us so much room to 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 talk about this whole stuff this honestly reminds me about um the first video i made debunking acer thorn Uh, Zen's going off in chat, and he says, you know, Ubisoft Yeah, he could keep going off. But, like, even saying Ubisoft games have every side quest marked, that's not even true. Like, and I, I personally dislike, you know, Ubisoft, you know, open world games. As, I as really do, good. too. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll have to defend it, because, like, you literally have to walk into an area. You have to walk into a certain area for it to be like, oh, here's a, clo a close side quest. You know, it's not... And again, there's the fog of war, and all that stuff. So as much as I don't like defending something I dislike, you're kind of, you're being disingenuous when you're making that argument. Yeah. Yeah. Exception of Breath of the Wild, which was coincidentally influenced by Skyrim, tell you exactly where everything is and give you a rough idea of what's there. Look, also, look, his own fucking, God damn it. I had it. All right. Tell you everything so, that's there. Look how much of the map is revealed. And, yeah, you know, there's and not a couple all of icons it. here. There's and a couple icons there. That's everything the world... Like, you're... If what you're saying is true, uh, DJ Dick Gobbler... Um, oh my god, I just realized how the mental gymnastics that are going on in chat. In Red Dead Redemption 2, you can literally see the entire map if you have two brain cells and log into multiplayer <laughs> and then look at the map at once. It's like, so you have to go you... into a completely separate thing from the game itself, in this case multiplayer, which came out later, by the way, and then look at the map and then go back, leave multiplayer and go back to single player and remember everything you saw in multiplayer. I mean, I could also just it. Google the map, so I guess that means the game's map is fucking garbage. Yeah, so I guess I guess by your own fucking shitty gymnastic logic, I can just go onto Google and look at a map, and bam, I've got all of Skyrim and everything put out. What a yeah. dunce! That, that's insane. Uh, this man is literally showing a picture. I mean, not literally, but figuratively showing a picture of an apple and calling it an orange. Yeah, yeah. That, ma Jesus that map is not revealed. That, that map this isn't revealed. Zen guy, he he insulted us before we insulted him, right? Yeah, yes. he did. Yeah, he was the one that started it. Oh, yeah, that was that is fucking pathetic. Yeah. I'm, it's... Like, again... I don't know. <laughs> what I was starting to say is, this map here, he's saying everything is revealed. Or it tells you where everything is. I see a map with a few icons on it. If what he's saying is true, then this is a fucking dead, empty world. And I, I know that's not what Red Dead Redemption is. Sorry, Red Dead he... Redemption 2. He has cut out ent the uh, entirely end part of the game, the post game, and Mexico, which is quite large, which is essentially the entire map of the first game, uh, uh, that's down mm -hmm. south from that point, like so that red section. Yeah. 
that's a that that he that's an entire section almost as large as if not larger than the section you already see up north right there. Jesus. And on and he's not even showing the rest of the map. Like if you I guarantee if he went more to the east, then there's probably more of this, you know, fog of war over there that's gonna show that he didn't even probably get all the way up north. I I don't know. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you Again, you can even just look. Look right next to where we are. We're looking we're right next to Strawberry. His cursor is slightly southeast of Strawberry. Look directly northeast. Notice how all that area isn't filled in with a lot of detail correctly? Yeah. Wow, it fact, doesn't show you any of that. In fact, Wallace Station, right where my mouse cursor is on screen, um, you can see the path fading out there. Yep. And in the middle, you can see a path fading out here. So it's likely an I'm... area that he hasn't really been to. It is I'm... saying that we have to do this. That we have to do this because notice how it's not showing you where all the people are or all the little stands are, or all the hunting huts or everything are here. My fucking God, man. I've never seen a video defeat its own point. So obviously on the same exact in the same frame of, of the video where he's talking about a we point. Have. We have. Like, okay. <laughs> this is the most obvious one I've ever seen personally, but. Why would someone keep proof of their own criminal activity while on screen reading the note? If you keep this contract and uh, Boone's wife delivers her baby healthy and, uh, you know, we'll strong. We'll grant you additional money. We'll grant you additional money as you as long as you keep this contract as a receipt. As proof that we have made a concord, a pact. <laughs> This is just blatant. It'd be like saying uh, Skyrim's a bad game because uh, you can't punch people while punching somebody. <laughs> I'd like to see that, actually. All right. See where everything is and give you a rough idea of what's there. Side quests and enemy outposts and challenges are clearly marked, usually popping up on the map automatically after you've climbed some stupid tower. As we've gotten to the point where every game is an open... Okay, so I know a lot of people should talk to tower thing, but that actually does make a bit of sense as a mechanic. Like, oh, you see yep. something off in the distance, so you mark it down to check out. I would assume that most uh, cartographers and explorers would probably find high ground so they can see the lay of the land. Yeah, yep. that makes sense. That's to how me. that's how the original maps were first created. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Oh, to the brim with activity. No, he wasn't saying that. He said usually. He said every other game except Skyrim and Breath of the Wild, which was inspired by Skyrim, do something different, and they don't. And every other game doesn't climb. You don't climb towers either. Should... Again, clean the junk out of your fucking ears, Zen, and listen to what's actually being said. You little Should brainlet. Just... Should we just replay it just so we can prove it? Yeah. Holy it's, shit! It's, Might like as, well. it, as long as we as long as we don't pause it, it's not going to be. It, it'll be like fifteen seconds. Yeah, yeah. Whoops, too far back. There we go. Tell you exactly where everything is and give you a rough idea of what's there. Side quests and enemy outposts and challenges are clearly marked, usually popping up on the map automatically after you've climbed some stupid tower. As we've gotten to the point where every game is an open. There you go. Actually pay attention to what's being said, and you won't look like such a dumbass. Uh, $5 super chat from Elmo Bentley. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Welcome to Stag. Plucking our feathers, criticizing others, and making fun of Bethesda in the process. Fuck yeah. Uh, I guess kinda. Yeah. All right open world activities, I want you to remember the difference between an activity and an adventure. Walking to solid Oh, fuck an off. activity and an adventure. Going into a random what fuck off fucking... cave with generic enemies isn't an adventure. I went into a guy's house and he was hostile and attacked me and I killed him. What an adventure. Jesus Christ. Wow, what a fucking stupid statement. That is retarded as shit. Yeah, that is incredibly dumb. Oh. The Imperial Legion is an activity. It's Wait, going 
to journeying to solitude to join the legion is an activity not an adventure he's made that clear it is not an adventure how is that not an adventure because you're actually he's... adventuring your way over to it yeah. i hope he's, he's... going to explain I, how this works. I think he's trying to make an arbitrary divide between what an activity is and what an adventure is. To say that, oh, adventuring is uh, this great, awful, amazing... Sorry, this great, awesome, amazing thing. Whereas an activity is like, you're just doing stuff because whatever. Yeah, like a bad oh my thing. God, man. I mean, if what he said was... When you go to Solitude to join the Imperial Legion, the process, um, what you did, wherever you were, um, when you go to Solitude, that is an adventure. But when you, for example, you take the oath, that's an activity. If that's what he, he said, then I would agree with him. But yeah, say, if it's literally like if you're talking about the moment you show up there and talk to them. And you're joining as, oh, you want to join? Well, you are now a scout or whatever. It's like, yeah, okay, I can see that. That's pretty simple uh, doesn't, and everything. But doesn't, wouldn't the adventure being the getting to solitude? Yeah, like if anything, I could see a, a differentiation. I mean, the, the terms themselves doesn't make any sense. But if you wanted to make the differentiation, you can make a differentiation between a static, a static quest where you enter a cave. All of a sudden, you're in a cave, you complete the cave, you're done. Or compared to like a multi-step quest where you have to go to White Run and you have to go find this person out in the woods and you have to go and collect this item and then you have to defeat this dragon and then you come back to, you know, Riften or whatever. Like that could be considered an adventure, maybe. But again, yeah. they're arbitrary terms, and and if you're making up terms, you kind of have to define them. And... Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping he's going to explain the difference. I don't yeah. think he will because he just listed off a bunch of dungeons earlier and just said fucking nothing about them. Yeah. yeah, so I'm really hoping he's gonna try to define what these terms are. So I don't think know. he will, but let's see. Uh, Two dollars from Nathan, Nathan Gordo. Thank you. A Skeletor would say, "What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You're not making any sense, you man." <laughs> <laughs> Walking to Solitude to join the Imperial Legion is an activity. It's nothing more than another box on the to-do list that is Skyrim's. Um, Wait, so if the if the act of going well, somewhere is just an activity to join something, what the fuck is an adventure? Wait, so I know he says this is meant to be bittersweet, but like everything he's said so far has, if you just cut out the intro, like someone said earlier, this is just a negative review of Skyrim. <laughs> Yeah, I think I said that. Just cut off the intro and yeah. so far it's been very, very negative. By his own logic, by his own logic, there are no adventures because every yeah. class in the game is is exactly so, a to-do list. So, so like, maybe, I, I, I doubt this person's played more than a couple RPGs, uh, let alone ever made one, but, like, everything, every RPG, every, honestly, every quest in any game whatsoever is a checklist. Sometimes it's a branching checklist, but it is a checklist. You must trigger this event before that event can be triggered. You must trigger that event that can be triggered. Some games are pretty cool in that you can actually do it backwards. You can find this like creepy uh, thing that has this item before you even know the significance of it. And when you find the person who's been looking for the item, you're like, oh, wow, you know what? I did find that creepy person out in the woods. Here's the item. You know, uh, uh, my, my go-to example for that is uh, Divinity Original Sin that lets you do... A lot of the quests backwards. It's pretty cool that way. But yeah. um, it, it, it is all essentially the same format, whether you want to call it an activity or an adventure. Uh, the only difference, I guess, is that what the activity is in terms of uh, do you have to kill a thing? Do you have to collect an item? Do you have to go to a specific spot? Do you have to talk to a specific person? Uh, I mean, there's different triggers for different quests, but they're all it is, it is a checklist no matter how you cut it. So I'm yeah. wondering how he's going to differentiate these two things especially now that he said the act of traveling to a location to do something is not an adventure <laughs> see and yeah, someone it's made just a, an activity someone so made, like uh yeah someone made a comment saying jokingly that oh frodo and sam's journey in lord of the rings was an activity not a not an adventure it's like you can have you can be told to go do a thing 
and have it be an adventure. Like, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like an arbitrary splitting of things to say whatever he's, whatever point he's trying to make. Uh, yeah, this this makes me flash back to one of the uh, really really old before uh, his podcast Muller's uh, video about somebody I forget his name, but he did a video uh, contrasting horror with uh, was it horror and terror or horror and I think it might have been horror, horror and terror. Yeah, something like that, or horror and fear, one of those. Something like that, and he arbitrarily defined both when they're essentially the same. They're essentially. Uh, Synonyms. The same thing, but one is a bit more intense than the other. It's like the difference between being mad and enraged. They're both yeah. anger, yeah. but one is more in intense than the other. Yeah, but the weird thing oh, was... Like is the like the difference he... between a, a puppy and a full-grown dog. At the end of the day, they're both dogs. They're both canines. Yeah. But not ne but not even necessarily. Uh, but he, he did this whole thing where, like, it almost seemed opposite, where terror was like a lingering, almost uh, a, a lingering discomfort, uh, whereas so horror was like, dread. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean that that honestly would be a better a better description because dread is is not so much like a oh ah, I'm scared, it's more like a oh I'm not feeling so good, you know. Yeah, you this. get that that feeling of butterflies in your stomach, which comes from your body literally preparing you for fight or flight where it literally sucks all the blood away from your torso from the non-essential parts. Like your stomach isn't going to be essential, but man, your muscles, your, your, your limbs, your legs, everything like that, your heart and your head are all going to need all that blood. So suck it all up. And that's what gives you the butterflies in your stomach. That, that sense of dread and anticipation, that buildup of like, what's going to happen. And then it triggers and then your fight or flight response kicks in. Yeah. Uh, it's so weird. And, and honestly, like, if for whatever sort of rhetoric you're trying to or narrative you're trying to craft, you have to come up with some terms to find them. You know, if these are completely made up things, you got to kind of you kind of meet got to meet the people halfway and kind of define what your terms are going to be and say in the context of this video, I define blah as blah. So anyway, I guess we should see. I guess we probably hear them out before we completely. Yeah, judge. I will. I will just grab the super chat real quick. Five dollar super chat from Adeptus Fantasticus. Thank you very much. Thank you. What does this have to do with effective tax rates, He-Man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, before I continue, um, I saw... No, we, can, of... we can't use the New Vegas fanboy straw man argument because Zen is the idiot saying it. It has to be the video saying it, not not some dumbass in chat saying it. Yeah, if for the bingo. Like, uh, it, it, yeah, you can't uh, use chat it messages Zen. for bingo. Yeah. Now we can say that Wow, he's using the the New Vegas fanboy straw man to to try to claim some moral superiority when he got proven to be a dumbass this entire time. Like Notice, you can just point and laugh at him and then how, move on. How, how many times have we brought up New Vegas during the stream? Aside from um, mentioning Acer Thorn's New Vegas video, which we did a couple times. Well, besides this, right now, um, yeah. one other time. That's it. Hmm. Damn, I think we should turn this into a Fallout New Vegas stream. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should yeah. just repeat the word on uh, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout New Vegas, and then somebody can go back in the, uh, the uh, <laughs> whatever it is, the transcript, and say, oh, you mentioned it ten times, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quest, but by only showing points of interest once I get close to them, and by filling those points of interest with engrossing and varied stories engrossing and varied you're going to very much need to we're gonna need some fucking i, uh, I know exactly i know exactly what this cabin is so i can describe it to you there's a guy in there who got a disease rock joint which will eventually kill him and by the time you find the cabin has killed him he has a dog the dog will follow you it's your dog now engrossing mm. story yeah that's that's really mm. fucking lame I love my advent my my engrossing story taking me to the same looking cave twenty times and then to the same looking Dwemer ruin twenty times and the same looking town twenty times. Yeah. It's it's really engrossing seeing the same thing over and over and fighting the same enemies over and over. Yeah. <laughs> uh Forsaken we do have a bingo. Um it is actually I believe it's the top yep, it's the top link in the uh, description. We have a stag bingo. Yeah. 
I just hope that the uh, all the different clans and and thieves guilds and and uh, bandits and whomever else you find in the in the same caves over various different radiant quests get a good deal in their rent because they're sharing it with so many people. Yeah. <laughs> there, you know what? There is one good joke that made me chuckle in Skyrim though. And that's when you go and you... It's bandits near Whiterun, because of fucking course it is. You kill the bandits outside, you go into the cave, and there's a dude sitting in the chair, and he he hasn't seen you or anything. And you kill him real quick, and you realize his name is... For like, the blind. Yes. And then you grab his book, and it says it's his book, and you open it, and it doesn't have a single thing <laughs> written in it. And I was like, okay, that is funny. <laughs> Wasn't he like also the uh, the watch guard and he's blind? Yes, which is what again it may it falls apart on that, but it's a good joke that you pick up his favorite book, with, like his name is literally on it, and then you open the book and there, it's doesn't have a single written word on any page. Like okay, yeah, that is kind of funny. That is mildly funny, yeah. Mute turns into an adventure. If you took out the open world of Skyrim, that commute. Wait, wait, wait. But you just said the commute to go to Solitude to join the Legion was an activity. It, it literally is an arbitrary splitting of things. So if it's something you're sent to do, that's an activity. If it's something you do on your own, that's an adventure. So That is incredibly dumb. So yeah, the comment from earlier in chat was right. Frodo taking the ring to Mordor, that was an activity, not an adventure. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. So now I said... Uh... Oops, sorry, you can go on. No, I was just going to say, uh, now I'm confused. Is it paranormal activity or paranormal adventure? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. Um, the Battle of Helm's Deep and uh, Minas Tirith are uh, <laughs> activities because there are things they had to go do, not things they uh, decided to go do on their own. Um, I'm sorry to bring bring up the attention seeker again but zen says because the dungeons in morrowind all look so different and there are tons of enemies right right I mean, wow what about for... is that's hard wow for what about ism Jeez. yeah that almost, is what about ism almost like there's an entire difference compared you know like more than a decade or i guess about a decade in between the games and the engine and the technology and, and not only that, that there are far ahead. more tile sets for morrowind too where you had far more variety in Oblivion, you have caves, you have Imperial Forts, you have Alien Ruins, and I think that was it. In and Sky... the Oblivion. Oh, and, yeah, the, the and the Oblivion Gates, yes. Yeah. Uh, in Skyrim, you have caves, Nordic Tombs, Dwemer Ruins, and... The forts. The Forts, the Imperial Forts as well. So that's four. In Morrowind, again, you've got caves, but you've got Dwemer Ruins... Um, ancestral tombs, uh, Velothi towers, Dunmore, uh, Dunmer strongholds, Daedric ruins, Dwarven ruins, which is six that I counted just now. Yep. Yeah, uh, and my, my, I think my point, if I didn't make it clear enough, I apologize, but my point was that uh, I don't think in Morrowind anything's reused. I think every every location has a specific static purpose. So if you go into this cave, it's or in this this particular uh, establishment or crypt or whatever, it's uh, if it's you know you find sleepers there, that's all you're going to find there. It's not going to be regenerated uh, through the radiant quest system where Skyrim is. Like Skyrim was kind of trying to have its cake and eat it too, where they kind of kind of wanted to do essentially what Daggerfall did way back in '96, where you could find a uh, you know you, you could talk to a, a an innkeeper or any any NPC that might give you a, a quest, and that would generate. A location on your map sometimes like a dungeon or something like that where you had to go to uh but the problem was is that skyrim's world was too small they they couldn't generate new lands in between areas because there's just a finite amount of space and that'd be weird to see like a, a a cave to literally pop out of nowhere so what they did is they just like had these these locations that could be recycled for new quests and it's just kind of silly to to find that, that you know everybody uses the same cave that's all that was just my point that, that i made there but I don't think that it, I don't think that's an issue in Morrowind because it doesn't have that system, right? Uh, yeah, Morrowind doesn't have radiant quests or anything like that. Um, I, I think some places multiple quests will lead to. Um, yeah, but those are like hand-built quests, so they're designed to. Uh, but as we, 
as we've been trying to hammer the heart here, it doesn't fucking matter to Skyrim. Even if Morrowind was Control C, Control V, Skyrim is Control C, Control V. Yeah. It doesn't it's... change that fact at all. Also, it's really it's you go you're going full retard and being like, well, Morrowind compared to Skyrim because well, back then Bethesda literally is betting everything on Morrowind. It was with a... less team members, with yeah. less money, with on less a desperate, yeah, desperate to survive. It's it's re- like you your argument fell apart immediately when you compared skyrim and morrowind because it's like you're being disingenuous when it's like well look the game from you know 10 years ago is is techno you know technologically worse it's like yeah no shit and on top of that it's not even worse because it has even more actual variety through the world i'd say that there's so much more variety in yeah there the, is the there's more how many daedra how many daedra are in skyrim versus how many daedra are in morrowind there's a lot more and Morrowind, in terms of variety, a fuck ton more. Skyrim only has four. Um, the three Antronachs and the Dramora. Now, I don't remember every Daedra in Morrowind, but I can list quite a few of them off. You have, a much you have bigger... the spider one? The, no, no, the no, 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 no. Let... The spider one isn't in Morrowind, but let me do this because I remember it better. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the Winged Twilight, the Golden Saint, the Ogrim uh, Titan, the Scamp, the uh, three Antronachs, um... That's four, five, six, seven. You've got uh, the Dramora. You've here? got the Hunger. That's ten right there. And that's still not uh, all of them. There you go. What? Skyrim was not focused on Daedra. Okay, God, what, what other part of variety do you want us to bring up? Do you want to bring up the weapons, the weapon variety? Or do you want to talk about the character variety? Do you want to talk about the location variety? I mean, there's so much more variety. you want to talk about variety. the factional variety? How many types of dragons were in Morrowind? Okay, this guy's just shitposting now. But Daedra are part of the lore since the beginning, and they're, there's little Daedric lords. There's, like, actual quests dealing with them, and guess what? There's no actual ones in the game, which is kind of weird for a game that's based on fantasy like it has been in the last like you can also meet up with daedra i think in oblivion too if i remember correctly but you're, well, you're sitting here and being like dragons it's like yeah wow dragons were put into skyrim late as a as a general gotcha or a, a snag for bethesda okay yeah i would i'd say how many types of dragons are yeah. in skyrim because trust wow. me you don't you don't want to go that route how different is every dragon compared to each other? Not at all? Wow, you want a brown one? How about a red one? An orange one? How about one that has more spikes ice? on it? Do they all fight the exact fucking same? Yes. That Do they all share the same AI? Too. Yes. Does the final boss have the same AI? Yes. And also compare the the variety of dragons in Skyrim, or better, the lack thereof, with the various dragon cards that you have in the Elder Scrolls Legends. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, Ooh, actually, this reminds me, um, Patrician actually brought up an interesting idea for how to make Alduin actually an interesting fight instead of literally being a reskin of every other dragon you fight in the game. What if Alduin, as you're fighting him and you're about to get the death blow, suddenly the game paused and you went in reverse and he got full health back and you got your full health back and you started the fight again and he started laughing. Because, again, Alduin is the son of Akatosh, the, the dragon god of time. That would have been fascinating. Just that moment. Just that moment right there. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be kind of rad. Uh, actually work on the lore and implement it in your game. But I think you guys are overlooking the, the, the one thing that Skyrim did offer us, which is a, da- a Daedric dog that you can talk to. <laughs> Yeah. Remember, it's completely exactly... unscripted. It's uh... that looks exactly so... like the current dog we're seeing right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually not seeing a dog right now. It went back to the thumbnail for me. But oh, yeah, here, oh, here you go. Hold on, watch this. Uh, Bam. Rim. Now you should be seeing a dog. Um, Thank you, dog. Yes. But anyways, yeah. Uh, oh, it's completely unscripted. I ran into a talking dog. No, Joe. That is absolutely <laughs> scripted, you moron. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah, I I wasn't a fan of uh, Barbus and Clavicus Vile and pretty much any game since Daggerfall. Actually, if you look at the, the 
the, you know, it's it's like low low res pixel art, but in I actually really like the aesthetic of the uh, Daedra and Daggerfall. I know it's shocking, but uh, even even the stupid dog uh, Daedra guy, kind of cool looking. Um, let me find a high res image. Uh, no, he's kinda... yeah, I'd say the design in Daggerfall is actually probably where they should have stayed at. <laughs> Yeah, they're kind of interesting looking. The the dogs like very, uh, very big red eyes, you know, frothing at the mouth. And this image is taking way too long to post. But uh, yeah, the guy's got like horns, it's like eh, kind of threatening. Instead, you see a little pupper, and it's like, I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me see. I could probably get that up on a um, a new tab. Are you, are you, uh, yeah, you can drag and drop to your, if you're sharing your um, browser full screen or even your window full screen, you can sh drag and drop to your browser. That's how I used to do it on podcasts. Well, that's the thing. I'm not. I've got the uh, screen uh, made smaller to fit the exact frame of uh, watch together. So anything is cropped to, the, that, to that space on the screen. Oh, yeah. Watch together. You can't do full screen, yeah. I prefer not to because I have to be doing other things too while streaming. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I'm gonna spoil that guy three monitors. So, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah I've only got want? two. I will have three, eventually. Nice. Zen, what are you talking? Oh, not even Morrowind is popular for you. I see what kind of dudes you are. What? I'm. Wow, I'm, we don't I'm think sorry, actual you crazy like fucking you. person. When? We yeah. say that Morrowind was guys, popular. Guys, let's start just ignoring this retard. Because yeah. at this point, we, I'm we sure have to. He's we trolling. Have to. No, he sorry, has to be I trolling. Keep, no one is as stupid. I say yeah, that, but he's, he's literally it. too stupid to be real. So, yeah. No. And it's not worth ra uh, arguing with this fucking rando in chat who's just. Yeah. Every message is just stupidity. So let's just yeah. move on and ignore him. Yeah, sick him. What would you have? Action RPG with a shitty story and lackluster combat. Do you think Todd could have really- <laughs> Wait, are you saying that's what Skyrim is? Because yeah, I agree with you. That is what Skyrim is. Yeah, Skyrim is a shitty action RPG with shitty combat. With a terrible story and lackluster combat. I agree. Yeah. Hold on. Points of interest once I get close to them, and by filling those points of interest with engrossing and varied stories, that commute turns into an adventure. If you took out the open world of Skyrim, what would you have? A shallow action RPG with a shitty story and lackluster combat. I mean, even even don't... with that, you still have even with the open world, you still have a shitty story and lackluster combat. That doesn't change just by the by it being an open world. So he's no, like I really mean, the story with you regarding the, the story being shitty because I because I genuinely like the story, but well, that's just me. Yeah, no, well. We, we can definitely go deep dive on that because, no, the story is absolute shit. Yeah, we'll be it doing just, that. It in... doesn't make any sense from any angle. <laughs> oh, God. It, even the opening tutorial, it, it, the story already shoots itself in the head. Alduin is there to kill the Dragonborn, and instead of just outright roasting every idiot standing out in the open, he has to shout and sit there and watch as his slow-ass fireball meteor storm forms and falls from the sky. It's like, dude, Alduin, if you literally just opened your mouth and used any fire attack, you kill every single person there. And hey, you probably got the dragonborn. And then people are saying the other one is, well, he wanted to save him for the, so the Civil War could continue that he literally yeah, save all for didn't it. know about. Yeah. Oh, God, it, it is so bad. And it starts off bad, and it just gets so much worse as it goes. Well, saying that Alduin wanted to keep the Civil War going is just next level of stupidity, if you ask me. Yeah, I have no... If that, if that's the argument, because people... Because the argument is, well, if he wanted to kill the Dragonborn, all he has to do is literally roast everyone there. Like, it literally, they're all, everybody's standing out in the open to watch the execution. All the soldiers and everyone are there in the open. Nobody is behind cover. Alduin has a clear line of sight. He literally could roast everybody. And so then when, when you bring that up, and then the people go, oh, no, he, he wasn't trying to kill the Dragonborn. He was there to save Ulfric so the Civil War could continue. That's why he really did it. It's like, what? 
Oh, it's yeah. just, they realize they've been defeated on that point, so they make up some entirely other random fucking thing that he must be there to do. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'll do in the destroyer of worlds that wants to protect the world a little longer so he can destroy it later, right? Yeah. And why is uh, Alduin going in a specific order of waking up the dragons? So the plot can happen. Yeah. That's, the, that's literally the only reason. It doesn't make any fucking sense. How did she get the horn if the back door is still sealed shut? I have my ways. <laughs> yeah, Literal oh explanation. My... <laughs> I hate that line. I hate it. Yeah, it is so... It got everything. The... It is so shit. The Civil War is even worse, but Jesus Christ. The only time I have my ways is an acceptable answer is when you see that way. So, like, if you're the player and you do something, if someone asks you, you say, oh, I have my ways. Or if it's in, a like, a movie or TV show, you see the perspective of that character doing the thing, and then they tell someone else, oh, I have my ways. When it's used yeah. like it is in Skyrim as a hand wave of, hey, how did you do this fucking impossible thing? I have my ways. It's just literally saying, don't think about it. We need the plot to keep, uh, keep I... moving on. I, uh, so, Angry Danish Viking. And I agree with you on this, by the way, Angry. Um, such, Alduin doesn't need to do anything. The Dragonborn is about to get beheaded when he interrupts it. Yes, I agree with you. However, if Alduin can't tell exactly who the Dragonborn is, he just kind of is drawn to the area. The other way to get around... Because, again, this is the thing. Well, he can't tell... Him he, this is what we get as the defender. That when people defend Skyrim at this point, they say, well, he can't tell exactly who the Dragonborn is. If he would have known you were getting beheaded, he wouldn't have interfered. So obviously he can't tell who the Dragonborn exactly is, but he knows the Dragonborn's there. I'm like, okay, so open your mouth and burn everybody there, then. If you can't tell that the Dragonborn's the one that's literally about to be beheaded, just burn everybody alive. But, again, then <laughs> then they then they switch and they go, uh, no, he's actually there to stop Ulfric from dying. She reminds me of those uh, really complicated plots that the guy spills at the end, the villain spills at the end after everything is like, well, then why didn't, why didn't so-and-so die? That's because I uh, secretly, uh, you know, slipped him an antidote of the poison. So he fell, he fell on the table, but then the antidote kicked in 20 minutes later and then he lived. And it's just like this whole advanced plot. And it's like just kind of stuffing, <laughs> force stuffing those plot holes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Oh, God. She got it in the same way Colonel Autumn got in Vault 87. Yeah. Yeah. God, imagine if Alduin had actually opened his mouth and burned everybody instead of casting a spell and then watching as his slow fireballs fell to the ground. Imagine if he'd actually roasted everybody. He would have gotten the leaders of both Civil War factions instantly, destroyed their generals, or their, their right hand, aid and assistance, and kill the dragonborn at the same time. He, he literally would have done everything all at once. Oh, it would have been great. But no, he wanted to be cool and show off his... Voice. He wanted to be cool, and as he's landing on the tower, have people tell him, oh my god, he's in the clouds! <laughs> <laughs> uh... God, that annoys me so much. General Tullius says, what an oblivion is that? And his fucking... the. The silver plank of wood says, uh, <laughs> sentries, what do you see? What? Why aren't you asking okay. the general who clearly just screamed, you fucking idiot? Sentries, what do you see? They don't say anything. Then Alduin swoops around and lands on the tower, and then, the, and then only as the dragon is literally on top of the tower, it's in the clouds! <laughs> Oh my god. It's also, so it's bad. like a 20 foot tower, if that. So it's like. Yeah, it's a very it's small pretty, tower. It's pretty sad. Dude, it really is. I'm getting uh, Destiny flashbacks uh, of uh, the famous line from uh, Dinklebot, your little um, robot sentry, where he like was given, I don't know, he must have been given really, really bad uh, voice direction because he's a great actor. I mean, uh, uh, Game of Thrones and everything can prove that, but it, just yeah. one of the lines in the early game is just like, they're in the walls. <laughs> 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 uh, 
And then as far as bad plot points, uh, I was reminded of, uh, I don't have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of that. That reminds me of that game. There's no time to explain. And you think, okay, it's going to be one of those ones long drawn out thing. The dude literally kicks into your front door of your house. He's like, there's no time to explain. Take this gun. We got to go. And then right <laughs> as he says it, the giant crab monster busts in the window, grabs him and snaps him in half and is like causing him and he's squeezing him and he's bleeding out. He's like, oh my God, he's already got me. And you have to run from it. <laughs> and you realize that the person that kicked in your front door is you. That's pretty wild. Yeah, that whole game is, is, a, is a whole time fuck. Where you go through the entire game with this gun, get back to your front door, kick it in, and say, there's no time to explain! You throw the gun to your next incarnation as you get grabbed. But now something is slightly different, and the crab is now, like, a mecha monster crab instead. Anyways. That, ge that game is wild, by the way. If you if you want a hard platformer that it, it kind of uh, is kind of humorous, that's a pretty good game to play. Uh, there's no time to explain. It sounds pretty funny, actually. Do you think Todd could have released times to fund his magnum opus, Fallout 76? Do you think modders would have put in the time... Oh, I didn't hear that shit. It, it fucking skipped on me. His magnum he, opus. He's making a dumb joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, shit. Whoa, that went way back. Hold on. Energy and passion to create schlongs of Skyrim. If you took oh, out the yeah, open that... world... Okay, there. If you took out the open world of Skyrim, what would you have? A shallow action RPG with a shitty story and lackluster combat. Do you think Todd could have released that enough times to fund his magnum opus, Fallout 76? Do you think modders would have put in the time and energy and passion to create schlongs of Skyrim? Yes. Yes. Because modders are people, and people will do random things just for shit's sake. There are people that, that do these kind of mods for like things you just wouldn't expect um like horror games for example and they do like he underestimates the power of rule 34 he underestimates the power of weaponized autism that is the internet yeah i was gonna say just the internet <laughs> in general there's like most great uh, games that could be modded have porn mods there's fucking porn yes. mods for terraria there's porn mods for half-life for god's sakes well i mean i think terraria is more extreme than half-life just because like literal tiny pixel art characters well there's there's ones for starbound as well where they do entire porn, dimension though as well porn races well there's i hate that i know about this um in tweed's videos talking about how shit starbound is he downloaded a bunch of like weird fucking mods as a joke and there's there's a fucking vor mod for starbound of course there is <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Okay, no. there's ones for Minecraft, there's ones for, like, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just about to mention that I, I was just about to mention that I think most world problems could be explained by the existence of Minecraft Rule 34. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. All right. Oh, yeah, and these cares about. What about the arrow in the knee, or Dova Bear, or the insane number of game... Arrow in the knee would have happened irregardless because it was just an annoying line Such. that happened over and over again. Such. Dover Bear? I don't Such. know Dover Bear. Good. Such. Yeah. Irregardless isn't a word. It's Fine. Regard regardless. You killed Skibs! I killed Skibs. You fucking Skibs killed him! Dead. He's like, I can't take this grammar. I'm out. <laughs> I can't take it. He's making up words now. Uh, regardless of... Of if it was just a, a shit story with lackluster combat, you still would have had Arrow in the Knee. Because Arrow in the Knee is said by so many fucking guards ad nauseum. It doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, sorry, just quickly. Sad Demon. Uh, what's the Starbound uh, video called? I'd love to hear someone shit on it. The channel is Tweed versus T-W-E-E-D-V-S. Um, yeah. And he has several videos on Starbound throughout its early access, uh, final release, and a post... Um, Final release update. Um, yeah. I think there's playlists with, like, all the videos in order, so just turn that on. Very good watch. Um, but anyways, yeah, so, you know, fan animations, uh, all the awards is one. Like, the awards doesn't mean it's good. Having an active modding community, like... <sighs> oh, it's an appeal to popularity. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. Ha <laughs> ha 
I know where <laughs> I know where you got that message from, Senator Abby Strug. That yep. such Minecraft proves that abolishing child labor was a mistake. The children yearn for the mines. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> What's That's funny like... is that the tweet that I saw that on had this picture of like a frog from like an old timey looking book. And that just made it look even more fucking hilarious. I think the worst part about Skyrim is the fact that Emil said it was the most biblical story he's ever written. Uh... Oh, look, see, hey, look, when I when I atone for my sins of making up the word irregardless, we got Skibbity back. It's the most biblical story he's ever written, yet he wrote The Dark Brotherhood, which was basically just, hey, Catholicism, but Catholicism, bad. but evil, <laughs> yes. And it was the Catholic Church, but evil, in his own words. That is holy what he said. Shit. You know what? I never realized that, but holy shit, that is so... Stupid. On so many levels. Stupid. <laughs> Especially so considering stupid. he changed what was already there to make it happen. Yeah. Like, what is the time span? Like, w the difference in years between Morwen and Oblivion. Isn't it only like five or ten years or something like that? <laughs> JT. <laughs> JT. Cree, all words are made up. Irregardless can be a word if we just gaslight the human race. No. No. We do not. <laughs> We do not. Uh, dude, it is... It, a fu fucking Emil's speech is a gold mine of digging up dirt against Bethesda. It is insane. It's bad. Uh, Kree, it's six years after Morrowind the Oblivion takes place. Six years? Okay, so... Obviously, that's enough time for a corpse to wither the way the Night Mothers did, but you actually kill the Night Mother in Morrowind. She's a part of the, uh, a Dark Brotherhood group that is, uh, come to Vardenfell, and the local assassin's guild, the, uh, Morong Tong, not too happy about that, and they send you on numerous missions to, uh, start taking out their members, and, in, uh, including killing their leader, the Night Mother. So, <laughs> man. I love this super chat. Two dollar super chat from peace was never an option, thank you very much. Wait, the Catholic Church isn't evil? <laughs> <laughs> oh god five dollars super chat from terra 24 catholicism but bad so catholicism <laughs> yeah, you know what joke, i didn't know the line <laughs> oh, i am god. glad that uh our chat is based most of them yes most of them all i gotta say is degenerates like you doesn't belong on a cross <laughs> <laughs> oh but by saying that very word you are one of the toxic uh cd pro city and fanboys there i'm All sorry right. indigo oh no i made a, I made a new vegas reference no yeah you have now driven rainbow hawk oh. into the arms of bio Thesda so that he will be forced forced because of your actions to buy fallout 76 and mass effect andromeda and because they're bad games it's your fault <laughs> is that their argument? Uh, are you, you, yes, you're... that is actually their what? argument. Yes. Because yeah. because we like uh, New Vegas, we're going to drive people to playing a terrible no, game. To he, New said, Vegas. he said the, the New Vegas fanboys, and he lumped in CD Projekt Red for some reason. Yeah, it's pure it CD insanity. Pro -Sidian. CD Pro Sidian fanboys drove him into the arms of Bio-Thesda, which is Bioware and Bethesda bastardized together. Again, for and some reason, we thus, don't know why. Yeah, and it was thus their fault, the fans that drove him into the arms of bio -Thesda, that he, of his own volition, bought Fallout 76 and Mass Effect Andromeda, and they were bad games, so he made a bad choice, and it's all the CD Pro City and fans' fault. Oh, and okay. keep in mind... So... Keep in mind as well, he didn't provide a single solitary fucking example of anyone on the uh, CD Pro Obsidian side being toxic. It's just yes. a claim he made with no evidence. So yeah. just to be 100% serious and to be clear, because you mentioned that you liked a good game, he bought a bad game. Yes. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. And it, apparently he hates gray, gray morality too like it just it just hates it because he 
he played the NCR path, and because he got the thing, Good Springs thrives, but the high taxes mean those who could not keep up begrudgingly had to leave. And, and that means like, the entire town died. Good Springs! <laughs> it's like, dude, you are literally seething because Good Springs is thriving, but the old timers who couldn't keep up with the taxes had to leave. Also, Jesus Christ. Close to the end of the video, he points out, like, oh yeah, people make all these positive videos about New Vegas, and then they make these horrible uh, criticisms of Bethesda Fallout, and he shows um, H. Bomber Guy's video and two of mine, and says, uh, and these people want Bethesda to fail and Todd Howard to burn in the pits of hell. No, it's well, like... We want Todd, Heyer, <laughs> Todd Howard and Casey Hudson to die. Literally die. We want them to kill themselves, is what he said. Yeah. Because like, Jesus Christ. Because we're critical that Fallout 3 and 4 are not that good. Uh, pretty bad, actually. Yeah. So the funny thing is, like, I don't hate Todd Howard. I think he's actually kind of a likable guy. I just don't yeah. think he's a good director, and I don't think he has much uh, of a creative hand in the games anymore. I think he's become more of an executive, kind of like how Peter Molyneux did. Yeah. So that, that's my criticism of him. I think he's actually kind of a kind of a fun guy, and I kind of like how he speaks. I kind of like his sort of... Uh, he bold, he bold, plays... Like, he plays the hype man well, and you can tell he's yeah. genuinely passionate. That's why I said he, he's Todd the Liar Howard because he lies, but he is not the problem Bethesda has. No. He, he genuinely cares about the company. He genuinely cares about his employees, and he wants to succeed. What the, the problem is is a mill. Yeah. Like, again, like similar to what Indigo is uh, saying, I think if we take all the like Elder Scrolls Fallout stuff out of it, Todd would probably be a chill person to sit down and have a beer with or just chat yeah. with you know yeah if you get him unfiltered where he's not trying to hype the next game and just talk about some cool stories about uh morrowind and oblivion and even skyrim and these other games and how they're made i'm sure you'd have a fantastic day yeah. just like talking to this guy but i just don't think that uh him and whoever he's running and whoever's running him have what it takes to make a good rpg or maybe they do but they choose not to because that doesn't have uh mainstream popularity yeah and, and accessibility i i think i would hope that todd will be able to assert more control now that microsoft is in is in command of everything that todd can assert more control and he can do a passion project for himself yeah i get i kind of get that that's what uh starfield was because it, it will be because Emil is the head writer and not he's just probably... that. Not just and, that. No, but... He's not the head writer. He's what, also director as well now, too, or something? Because like, when you think about it, um, imagine his career. He's He joined Bethesda and for, what, 25 years has made nothing but other people's games. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of got to be kind of sad. Like, he wants to make something in his own. That's fine. He deserves it. He should make his own game if it, if it has a uh, good pitch and, you know, potentially can make a lot of money for the company. You should be able to do that. He's 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 definitely earned his keep. I think. Yeah. I yeah. just don't want to play it <laughs> if it's going to be <laughs> what he, what uh, him and Emil are, are wanting. Based on their, you know, maybe it'll be great, but based on their uh, past, uh, their, their current record. track record, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't think it will be great. But everything is stacked in favor of it being good, so we'll see. I mean, yeah, I would love for uh, Starfield to be an amazing game. I just don't think it will be. Yeah, that's that's the yeah. thing I'm I'm betting on. The, the thing we would have to hope for is that Todd Howard would put his foot down that, hey, ML, this is my passion project, and I'm not going to let you Fallout 3 it, or Fallout 4 yes. it. Well, well, here's the thing. Like, I, I think ML is definitely, or Emil, whatever you want to call him, uh, is definitely one of the big problems. But here's the thing. Todd could fire Emil. So it, it really does kind of, you know. He could, but Todd revealed that he can be pushed around by Emil. Well, that's it, was, it, was, it was Fallout 3. That's why I said hopefully, well, that's, because that's, if this is his actual passion project, hopefully he can stand up to him and you know, assert himself more. Part of what I was trying to say when I was saying maybe he could, or hopefully he could put his foot down with ML, because if ML pushes him around again and he concedes on things, then it's no longer really his own passion project. It's yeah. ML's game, not his. But that's just being a poor leader, though. I mean, he, yeah. he can decide yeah. who, who he listens and, to, who he... And again, he, on the project or he, doesn't. he very well could be bad leadership material. That could be a thing. That doesn't, he could just be a passionate dude who in a different role, like if he gets, if he was able to be 
demoted back to where he was, I think he'd be more successful. Because he legitimate that could just be legitimately his his problem is he's a bad leader. He's a weak leader. Yeah, under the right pressure, under the right uh, small team coordinated uh, professionals, he was able to make something really really good called Morrowind. But as the team yeah. got bigger, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, there's a lot of people in in place. It, no game is just you know a one man show unless it's literally a one man show. But yeah, yeah I, I I just I see the same kind of thing with him as uh, Peter Molyneux, who used to, again, used to make really, really good games with a very small team, and he was passionate. He would program it. He would design it. He'd be in there day after day doing everything. But over time, he got to be a hype monster and a big-time executive. So, And with that, his games got worse and le uh, less ambitious and, and achieved less of what he promised it would. And yeah. Oh, it's we have another example. Um... Uh, no Man's Sky. Um, what was his name? Shit. Oh, uh, Sean, Mur Sean Murray. Sean Murray. Sean Murray. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. yeah, Sean Murray. His comfort zone is he didn't like speaking in front of people. He didn't want to be the PR hype man. His comfort zone was getting down, getting in the code, being a code monkey, doing QA, stuff like that. That was his passion. That was where he thrived and what he enjoyed doing. And then what, what happened was he got pushed into a role he didn't want to do and he had did he said it himself he didn't want to disappoint people when they asked him oh oh that sounds really exciting can i do this then he'd say yeah because he didn't want to disappoint the person right there that he was and talking he, to and he genuinely probably wanted to do it but yes. he just and when push came to shove he couldn't that's why i love the fact that um when when everything went down he told his team to go radio silent and they just they just fucking busted their ass to fix no man's sky yeah that's respectable did he make a mistake that he can't take back absolutely but eventually he made uh roughly what the game he promised i mean was it ever yep. what everybody dreamed it would be yeah. some people are still disappointed some people still won't play it but yeah and people are saying in chat yes woman's land yes yeah, go watch it the historian's video. video it's amazing yeah Yes, Woman's Land is a great internet historian video that goes through all this detail. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, let's get back to this. But, We're fairly close to being done. We've got four minutes left. Five minutes. Right? No, no, four minutes. You're right, you're right. Jesus Christ. My brain. Yeah, five minutes. Of the yeah. Year Awards. I was right. Just Jesus. capture my imagination. It captured just about everyone's imagination. It was a watershed moment. The reason I think every game has turned into a go-anywhere-do-anything sandbox, and the reason I'm asking you not to forget... Skyrim... Every game? Oh my uh, god. No. Skyrim is not responsible for the amount of open-world games we have. Did it influence <sighs> some of them? Sure. Sure. All of them? No. No. And not every game became a go-anywhere-do-anything yeah. game because Yeah, there's so many... So many issues with that statement. Just like, yeah, not every game went went open world. And in fact, a lot of games uh, responded yeah. to that. Yeah, a lot of games responded to what was kind of known for a while as open world fatigue. People are yeah. tired of having all these options and all these nonlinear things and just having to travel between each and every objective. They just kind of wanted a a concise, uh, linear, um, you know, progression of levels and campaigns and stuff. Well, here's the thing so. too. Just because something inspired other things to do something similar doesn't mean the thing that inspired it is good you know yeah it's like yeah. again someone you can there could some, be something super go ahead go ahead Sorry. someone could be inspired by absolute fucking garbage like the last jedi or book of boba fett to make something that is genuinely really good because hey that thing is fucking garbage i want to make something i have a real example when you're when you're finished i have a real example so like uh Let's take Mando quickly, the Mandalorian. Space Bounty Hunter, right? It's like, man, I would like to see a really good Space Bounty Hunter uh, show or game or whatever. And, you know, Mando didn't fill that um, craving I have, so I'm going to go make my own. You know? So something, like, inspiring yeah. something good as a result doesn't make it good in itself that it inspired something good. Yeah, so, like a... Oh, go ahead. A real world example of this is the thing from another world. It was okay. 
it wasn't the best movie ever. It, it was kind of rough and everything like that. But the thing from another world inspired someone else who saw that idea and, and saw where they could take it, what they could do with it. And he created the thing. <laughs> John Carpenter was inspired by that, and he saw what he would do differently and how he could turn things around and make things better. Like I said, I'm not saying The Thing from Another World is a terrible movie, but it's just, it's okay. But what it ended up doing was inspiring someone else to take that idea and make something legendary from it. Yeah, yeah. it's one of the few, re few remakes that has completely overshadowed the original. Yes, you could argue that uh, the 1970s remake of uh, Body Snatchers did the same thing. It was so well received that people, it, when people talk about the movie, they generally talk about the 1970s version, not the 1950s version. Yeah, I'd argue most people don't even know that the thing wasn't uh, the thing was not a, not the original movie. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, it, it you can do that where you can inspire to when you take a concept that has potential and then you're inspired to do better. Or you can take something that's absolute garbage and it makes a ton of money and everybody decides to emulate that because, hey, it made a lot made a lot of money. Uh, the whole uh, Battle Royale craze could be attributed to that. Um, yeah. there, a couple, there were a couple Battle Royale games and, and then uh, PUBG makes a uh, gazillion dollars and then Fortnite makes, makes three gazillion dollars. And now all games are now Battle Royale. <laughs> and that was a trend for like three or four years until they realized that you can only really have a couple of really successful ones. It's oh, a, do you remember? Market. Do you remember the funniest speech ever, Cliffy B's speech? Oh, there's really only room in the market. There's really only room in the market for three games to really be successful at any time. And would... and he was talking about Lawbreakers, and Lawbreakers is going to be one of those games. Yeah, that was a uh, a hero shooter like fucking Overwatch, right? Yes. Yeah. And I would I would say maybe uh, that might be true per multiplayer genre. Yeah, and he was but, talking about everyone else is kind of fighting for scraps. You have, you have three that are going to be the really big ones, and then everyone yeah, else I don't, is fighting for scraps. Yeah, he, he's he's done some great things. He's also done some really stupid shit. But uh, <laughs> I I would kind of agree with that in terms of like the big players in any particular multiplayer genre, like MMOs. I could see three big MMOs. Yep. Uh, you know, for online shooters, sure, that's kind of applicable. Single player is different because people consume single player uh, campaigns and generally drop it and then try to go for another one. So there's a constant need for more single player games. Multiplayer games have a, a considerably higher uh, shelf life in terms of gameplay you can put into them. You can put thousands of hours into the game you like the most. Oh boy. Wait until you see what is my, what has become my addiction and obsession. We're going to, we're going to try and watch that video if you have time after this. Yeah, we are, uh, taking a long time on this video yeah let's do it is because todd told me to he barged in my door and told me that if i jerked off skyrim on my channel he would finally give me the contemporary wood floors in fallout 76 and i would finally be god it just reminds <sighs> me of that joke uh, only so much worse. It reminds me of that joke. Light wood laminate. Light wood, light wood laminate. <laughs> I saw a um, music remix of that. That was amazing. <laughs> I forgot where I found that. One with the top. Wait, that didn't happen. That was a wet dream I had. No, the reason I want There's you to not forget so Skyrim is shit. because I don't want you to throw the baby out with the bathwater. All modern Bethesda games are shallow, from both a story and gameplay perspective, and Bethesda has been shamelessly milking Skyrim since release. But Skyrim shows what I an open world pay. game should be. An open shallow? In b both terms of mechanics and story, it should be shallow? You you yourself admitted that the story is shit, and the mechanics are shallow, this... and the combat is lackluster. Hold on, what? this is one of the weirdest fucking videos ever. He's yeah, I, done nothing but say how this. shit everything is, but then saying, "Oh, that's a good thing." But but I, guys, guys, I, the cowboy the cowboy bebop Netflix show was supposed to be bad. <laughs> yeah, we're actually getting an "it's supposed to be bad" unironically again. Oh my wow, god! I didn't think I was going to cross up that bingo square. Oh my god, it's amazing! I didn't even know about that.
I, I don't play that your bingo game, so I, I'm I'm just rattling off what's the top, what's the top of my mind. So, it's amazing. Oh, dude. <laughs> I, I don't get it, though. Hey, it's shallow and boring and shitty, and, oh, look, there's a bunch of things to do that don't really lead to much, that don't have much impact, and they're not that good, and they're lame. And this is exactly what open world games should be. What? Yeah. The uh, only uh, the only argument I I can find where that might apply to is your main character. Um, I can see the case of having a boring and generic kind of pair of boots or pair of pants, whatever you want to call it, well, main character thing. that you that you can kind of fill your your fill yourself into because it well, the character doesn't speak. You can kind of you can kind of make it you you can kind of make it assume it's you. That's fine. That's yeah. a, that's a type of game. But... Yeah, because you're the blank slate pr uh, protagonist. That's the entire point of a blank slate, is that you can fill anything in on that character. But yeah, then... and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But but, then... but I, I've never heard the argument that oh, open world games or RPGs should be boring or bad, <laughs> or, or, or poor story. That's yeah. just that's just silly. Yeah. That is actual insanity. Holy shit. Open world isn't just about anywhere, it's about wanting to go anywhere, because you have no idea what you'll discover. Okay, why the fuck will you want to go anywhere if everything is shallow? Yeah, you... If I shallow go into a and cave, the combat is lackluster. If... Like, why would I want to engage more with it then? Yeah, if I go into a dungeon and I see a bunch of skeletons and I kill them, and I get two gold off of each of their bodies, and then I go into another dungeon and I find another bunch of skeletons, it's like... It just goes back to the whole Gmod thing for me and the Radiant Quest in Fallout 4. If I'm going to do Radiant Quest after Radiant Quest after Radiant Quest of the same shit over and over and over again, kill these super mutants, kill these raiders, how is that any different from me loading up a random mod in, or a random map in Gmod, spawning a bunch of combine sh uh, soldiers, and then just shooting them? And then doing that again and again. Yeah. I just I can't believe he's unironically saying bad is better. That's just nuts to me. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Skyrim will let you just chase objective markers, but its world was designed with the knowledge that following instructions isn't an adventure. A to-do list. Wait, what? The world was designed that following instructions is not an adventure it's a to-do list i don't think ml would describe his most biblical story ever as a checklist and not an adventure and, and, but he said the game knows that's why it does all the rest of the stuff but the game holds you by the hand and points you in the exact direction you got to go all the time like a checklist but there's also the retardedness that oh the game uh knows this that's why there's all this other stuff Mate, it's a fucking open world. Of course there's going to be, like, caves and shit in an open world. Like, Morrowind was an open world with caves and dungeons and shit off the beach and trail. That doesn't mean, like... How is this different from any other game that does the same thing? I hate these fucking arguments. It's like, hey, this game does this thing, and that is super awesome, amazing. It just ignores uh, all the other games that have done it. It's like... When many a true nerd tried praising the fuck out of Sky, uh, oh, Fallout 4 for, oh man, it's unique and innovative crafting system when it's something that's been done a fucking thousand times already. Yeah. And it also wasn't the first time, oh god, that reminds me of the other video, was the first time that Bethesda had done a crafting system. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, you could even argue it's kind of like low key, uh, it's kind of like a re reskin and very well presented enchantment system, essentially, or yeah. alchemy or whatever. It's yeah, common. It's which is weird about MATN. Like uh, I disagree with him a lot, but uh, he's at least played a lot of games because at least he streams them and covers a lot of different games. The, the thing I noticed with a lot of these other uh, creators is that they just they don't have a very large uh, amount of game references to base their opinions on. They just they know Skyrim, they know Ubisoft, and they know Breath of the Wild, I guess. Like it, it, they just haven't played enough games. It's kind of like the uh, old meme, like where everybody references 
all the world's goings on is in Harry Potter terms is like read another book, play another game. Yes. Maybe, maybe I'd be surprised. Or in Star Wars terms too. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like guys, yeah, the original trilogy was really fucking good, but you know what? <laughs> Please get, get more media to consider. <laughs> oh, uh, apparently the Lord of the Rings trailer is uh, coming out shortly or soon or right now. I just got Man. a notification that uh, Nerd Roddick went live, and they're doing a oh, watch boy. party of the trailer. So nope, that'd be kind that... of fun. I, I don't know if we'd have to pause it every few seconds to avoid copyrighted music. We but... we would have to, yeah. So we could probably do that after we finish up this video if we do this quickly. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's go. We yeah, got we're four almost minutes. There. We may not be able to to follow you in this because it's getting kind of late in here. So oh, that's fine. That's, don't, don't worry. That is totally understandable. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I I think I'll just uh, get out now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's no obligation to stay for anyone. Um. Have a good oh. one, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me again. Don't worry. Don't... The the lizard assassins have been told that you're leaving. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> Anyways, All right. yeah, let's blast through this and see if we uh, can uh, get to that trailer. Well, uh, he's, he's, he has he has enough time to make fifteen more insane statements. So here <laughs> yeah, we go. but he also but he also has enough time to do a four minute Patreon plug. Please, for the yeah, love he of has, God, he, he can lean some more. Yes, <laughs> for once, Please. Patreon. Yeah, here we go. Is not this the most basic thing a piece of art is supposed to do is make you feel something. That something doesn't need to be particularly deep. That something can just be, holy shit, this is metal. <laughs> what if that feeling is, oh my god, this is fucking boring, please kill me. Yeah, then by your definition, that would still be a piece of art. I was about to say, I thought he was going to be like, it doesn't, yeah, the feeling you feel doesn't need to be good. As long <laughs> as it makes you feel something, then it works. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, all right, number one, let's go. You really think I could go a whole video without talking about Doom Eternal? Skyrim, huh? Okay, it's time for my spicy, spicy take. Doom 2016 is better than Doom Eternal. There. 100%. 100% agree. Um, $5 super chat from Nathan Gordo. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Seethe. I intercepted your message. He's gone forever. Oh no, you intercepted my message to my lizard assassins. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, Ragnarok, you will be... I'm well, sorry, Ragnar, you will be missed. Wait, Stag and Quick don't go into the same sentence. Cree instantly pauses the video. I had to. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Well, I know way he can drag Doom Eternal into this video. Guess again, idiot. Games aren't excluded from needing to incite some sort of emotion in their audience. Please, for the love of God, don't tell me you defend Last of Us 2. Oh, probably. you better fucking not. He probably does. Okay. This is about to get a whole lot more painful. More yeah. painful than getting hit in the head with a golf club multiple times. Yeah. Due to bad writing. Because we, cause we, we got to continue on. At least his suffering ended. Yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Some make you uncomfortable. Some make you sad. Some. Okay. It was... I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable. I would say it's annoying for... The way it handles Joel's... Oh, God, I fucking hate that game. It's it's more insulting. Yeah, it's, not... it's more insulting to the fan base. Yeah. Just he... so they could literally check off a box. He on... has the Last of Us 2 video. Oh, my God, he likes the Last of Us 2. Of course he does. Uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Senator Abby Strong. Hey, that's me, Cree. <laughs> I st <laughs> you know, sometimes I forget that one of our moderators is literally <laughs> Abby. Not not Abby. The cross between Senator Armstrong and oh, Abby. Oh no! Ketosis by showing this two seconds of footage of me, I can do an Acer Thorn for slander. Oh no! <laughs> it's over. <laughs> our mods are turning <laughs> on us. We are doomed. Yeah. Some excite you. There's got to be some emotional through line. Not even thematically. It, there's got to be some emotional through line? I don't think... That's oh. not a true statement. 
That's not a true statement, but isn't that a polar opposite where he said it was supposed to be boring and it, the the story is okay because that is terrible and and the awful. story is shit. The combat is lackluster, and then he would go on to say like it would. What would they have? Uh, no, yeah, such a story and lackluster combat. What did he say before that? Because he also was talking about how bad it was before that too. He said that um, Skyrim is shallow. Oh, it's quest. He said, yeah, he said Skyrim is shallow and it's quest or shit. Uh, shallow in both in terms of story and mechanics, and that's exactly what an open world game is supposed to be. Yeah, but he originally said that um, Skyrim is mechanically shallow and its quests are shit. Yeah, and then he went later on to say it's a shit story and lackluster combat. But that's so. but that's what's so weird about this. It's like, man, Boba Fett is a great show. He's a fucking idiot who does stupid shit, and everything that happens Never in the show is fucking retarded. That he has. He's uh, defended by plot armor. An assassin <laughs> tried to kill him without any weapons and has the strength to tear a man's arm off, but won't fucking kill this guy when he's got his uh, hands around his neck. Man, it's such a great show. Like, it's insanity. <laughs> How do you yeah. say nothing good about a thing, but still say, yeah, and that's great? Yeah. Oh, god damn. Alright. A consistent feeling that the game always returns to. What does... Just to what? Just tonally. It has to do these things. Okay. This... What's the tone of, of Pac-Man? This comes across as a guy who wants to do YouTube, but he doesn't actually know what to say in his video, so he just says shit, and that's enough. You know? Yeah, okay, yeah. Holy shit, okay. Feel. What about driving in Rage 2 or walking around in Far Cry 5? My big problem with open world games is they never seem to really make me feel anything unless I'm at the designated locations. That's a you problem. Yeah. And again, see, here's the you, thing. Can say, you can literally say the exact same thing about Skyrim. It doesn't I, make you feel anything unless you're at the destinations. I was about AKA to say unless the same you're thing. in these in these fucking like generic dungeons and everything like that. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing that um I could say the same thing about Skyrim, where it doesn't make me feel anything being in the... Actually, no, that's not entirely true, but I don't feel the things he's is implying we should be feeling playing Skyrim. When I'm Damn playing it. Skyrim and I'm out of the world and not at a location, I'm just like, man, this fucking sucks. Yeah, I... you're looking for the next location, you're just trying to trudge there and be like, oh, uh, let me just z beeline to it. Yeah. In between, so, it's like, oh, cool! You get a single bandit or a wolf or something. Like that's literally it. So I I need one more thing to get a bingo, but it's a thing that would I I would have to force, so I can't do it. Fuck. All right. These goddamn icons actually occurs. Th these goddamn icons where the game actually occurs. Oh, yes, you mean Skyrim like in does Skyrim? That. Yeah. Where everything really occurs in a city or a fucking dungeon. Is marked on your map. God. Yeah, and if we actually want to talk about the random encounters that can happen and how awful those are, like, why the fuck are the Thalmor trying to kill me? I haven't even done the starting quest. Oh, Jesus Christ. I shouldn't just feel to a place. I should feel like I'm on an epic journey that guys in frilly pants will write songs about. How did you get that feeling in Skyrim? And then he walked because, down the road for Riverwood. No, no. You, you, don't, you don't get it, Setch. It's because they play epic music when you fight a dragon. But da 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 This doesn't even make sense in his own fucking explanation. Because he no, said going, going from place to place is just, a, it's just an activity, a chore. Yeah. yeah. So him saying like, oh, well, me traveling should feel like an adventure. Well, you said Skyrim's not that, so you, it's not. So well, therefore, Skyrim has failed in your eyes. Well, no, the adventure yeah. is just going off the beaten path and doing whatever the fuck you want. But like, that raises the other question. Why is a guy in frilly pants going to write a song about me going into a cave, killing a bear, and collecting 37 gold out of a chest? Yeah. Because that's not what... 
the the bards would make songs about it. it would be like the epic battle of um no do, do you want an example then it was a big bear i though. will i will keep it from from spoiling too much but as he stood against the gem facing blow after blow well i best do my job otherwise you know i would hate to ruin your story how would you ruin the story and the great healer who bound the warrior's wounds <laughs> and it's like dude yeah that's fucking oh god oh i can't wait till we get to that yeah man now i'm getting hyped all right there, there's a lot of things i can't wait to get to a feeling of freedom and adventure only thing an open world can make you feel if it's sufficiently hostile and alien, then it can make you feel uncomfortable. If it's truly empty and quiet, then it can make you feel a sense of peaceful solitude. And if it's just a violent crime simulator, then it can be a cathartic and fun sandbox. I even discussed in a previous video how Fallout's art style imparts a sense of tragedy. Listen, I will take in- Buildings are destroyed and ruined and there's skeletons all over the place, so that's tragedy. Okay. Why are you- did he I mean, use 70, was that 76? Yes. Yep. What the, you're going to use 76 over the first two falls, and you're going to be like, oh, tragedy. It's like, no. Why well, would remember, you... the first fall I hurt his Gen Z brain. Oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I mean, he's, still having a, he's still having, like, brain freeze over it. I made this joke on uh, Patrician's stream last night. Uh, I was like, uh, one time I went to a hotel. I left my bed unmade and towels on the floor of the bathroom. Environmental storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's the thing with some of these shitty videos is they're, they're they do that many a true nerd did that in his fucking fallout 3 video oh there's a children's playground without any children on it it's like no fucking shit it's the apocalypse <laughs> yeah what the fuck are you expecting there's there's skeletons of people who died in each other's arms uh, that you know doesn't what, necessarily you know does mean it? they were lovers. What if it was like a brutal rape? You know what does it so much better? What if it was like one of those cartoon things where the bomb goes off and their faces go super big and they hug each other and as they scream, <laughs> like a fucking El Dorado joke? You know what? You know what does it that better? Half Life Two, when you come around the corner and you see the little playset and there are no children there, and they just that dead doll that's missing an arm and an eye and everything that's just sitting on the i believe it's on the slide yeah and how did you realize that yeah that yeah. the entire playground is disrepaired and this is a playground that's right next to where people are living and that's kind of feeding you into the whole thing of something is really not right here not just beyond all the police you know the the literal civil protection units standing everywhere and then you get told throughout the thing when will they release a suppression field and let us procreate again. And it's yeah. like, there are no children. Holy fuck, this place is dark. Time simulator, then it can be a cathartic and fun sandbox. I even discussed in a previous video how Fallout's art style imparts a sense of tragedy. Listen, I will take anything, to be honest. Just don't make your open world game Ghost Recon another one fuck you and I'll accept it. Okay, so you're very easy to please, and... But arbitrarily so, because the things that you're complaining that they do is what Skyrim does. Yeah, well, why, why does Skyrim get a pass uh, when Ghost Recon is very fun with friends? Uh, yeah. Stupid storyline, very over the top, not very realistic, but it's in a part of a sense of adventure, and you can have epic, you can have epic uh, adventures, you can, you know jump out of a of a moving you know airplane and do all sorts of fun stuff like yeah you, i don't get why that game doesn't get a pass but skyrim does because he just doesn't like i guess he doesn't like that game that's yeah that's, <laughs> that's fucking that's weird oh what right. the fuck youtube recommended the video you guys are covering on my homepage feed the cobbler knows he is sending your <laughs> his videos to you all right, two minutes. For me, though, the can offer is adventure, but an adventure is defined by the unexpected. Would the Lord of the Rings have been good if they just marked Mount Doom on their map and walked there with nothing happening in between? Okay, you disingenuous fuck. Oh my god. When something <laughs> is marked... you When you get a quest, 
it doesn't always proceed exactly as you're expecting. Even at Skyrim. Yeah. Like, uh, uh. But, uh, no, that was, that was an activity, right? Yeah, it's an activity. Was an activity. It well, was an adventure. I mean, by the very nature of Skyrim's world, you're probably going to run into something on the way, whether it's bandits or bears or fucking whatever. So then, by the standard he just set with Lord of the Rings, then, yeah, everything is an adventure then. Yeah, every literally everything. Nothing can be an activity. I would I would have to say how how's an activity. Like I said, when he said the the journey to solitude to join the Legion is an activity, I was like, uh then what the fuck is an adventure? It, it's one way or the other, cobbler. Either Again, everything an... has to, by very nature of existence, be an adventure, or there is no adventure. Again, it's arbitrarily splitting stuff up so he can make some kind of weird fucking point. Which I still don't understand, yeah. by the way. He makes it sound like going from one point to another and something actually happening in between them is just impossible. It's just something that's unheard of. It just never happens. Like, yeah. what the fuck, you, man? Like, you can go to the super, you can go to the superstore, right? You can go to the grocery store from your house, and all of a sudden, you see a, a house catch fire, and you see the fire trucks pull up stuff. That's something that happened. Do you consider that an adventure? Because that was unexpected. You didn't expect it to happen. You saw it happen. Like, I mean, we could even go more mundane than that. You're walking to the store, and a bird flying overhead shits on you. I mean, now it's unexpected, so is that an adventure now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> adventure! <laughs> As he stares at the poop on his shoulder. <laughs> I'm so curious how this is like... Yep. How is this like a master... Skyrim's a masterpiece. Also, I do want to point something out. Uh, Lord of the Rings would be so much more boring if you just mar uh, placed an X on a map and said, go there. That's kind of what they fucking did. That's why he had the had the extra thing of if nothing happened in between, but that just counters his points from earlier because he said going would on have an adventure is going off and doing stuff and not following a quest, which is not what Lord of the Rings is doing. Yeah, they don't fuck off and do random shit that's opposed to the quest. Like, if shit just happens in between, they never go off of their fucking quest yeah. they never leave even, their path even when aragorn uh gimli and legolas get separated and they're no longer with the hobbits they're still trying to get the band back together so they can continue the fucking quest oh dude god this and is that's fucking problem. awful it's a problem with all bethesda games but one that skyrim really throws into sharp relief as I've said about 8,000 times in this video, Skyrim is shallow. It's the kids' bop version of an RPG. But Sky yes, it is. Well, I, I'm and that, and therefore, it's it's definitely not a fucking masterpiece. Yeah. The I'm fuck so are you? Oh. This entire video is literally just being like, "This is bad." Tell, and that's saying good Skyrim because is it's mediocre. Bad. Yeah, saying Skyrim is mediocre. These other things don't do it as good as Skyrim, but that means Skyrim's good? But no, but that just means, okay, so there's worse worse shit out there, but that doesn't mean Skyrim good. It just still keeps it mediocre. And then as the gall to say that everybody else is just imitating Skyrim now. Yeah. But yeah, Skyrim isn't good, but it's a masterpiece, apparently. Yeah, I, uh, I don't get yeah, it. We missed a super I... chat. Sorry. Two euros from Enclave Emily. Yeah, when I play Fallout 76, all I think of is tragic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but man, having gotten through most of this, yeah, I can see... Yeah, Rainbow Hawk and Peach Cobbler were fucking made for each other. Holy fuck. Yeah. Yeah, this God. was fucking garbage. Holy shit. Alright. We're almost there. Skyrim isn't about the mechanics. What? God damn it! <laughs> what? Make it three more seconds. Literally, what? But Skyrim isn't about its RPG mechanics. Fuck, man. Wow, it's RPG. almost like they shouldn't have advertised it as that then, huh? Oh this RPG my god. RPG is not known for its RPG mechanics. It's like, alright, you... 
What yeah. the fuck is this supposed to be? A fucking racing game? Are you fucking God, kidding me? This is another <laughs> one of those things where I really want to get like a group of like basically these people we have covered of Skyrim and, and put and them all and ask them what is skyrim to you and watch yeah. them fight each other <laughs> exactly <laughs> i want to put them all in the same room and be like okay what makes skyrim good and just watch them fucking tear each other apart at like how different each one of them will say like oh well because the rpg mechanics are, are it's there's so much depth to it it's so amazing and then you, you have Peach Cobble coming in and be like what yeah. no it, it, this game isn't about its rpg mechanics it, it literally doesn't have any it's shallow no what makes it good is its open world that's it yeah. and then the other guys would be like what no no it's not shallow fuck you and they the just, story <laughs> the story is so good and moving the story is shit though that's why you can ignore it but there's to put it in because they knew the story was bad uh, yeah, I would. Sur I'd be surprised if anybody left that room alive. Yeah, yeah. A, it's like an extended, uh, a deleted scene in The Dark Knight where the Joker bring, brings in a bunch of uh, Skyrim video essayists and it's like, Skyrim is great because, and like breaks a, a pool crew in half and just drops on the floor. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I also oh, like this damn. comment in chat. I believe this video is a defense of blind nostalgia at the cost of forgiving poor gameplay, writing, world building, and role playing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's the perfect summary of this video. It's good because it's open world. Now everything in that open world is fucking garbage, but that's why it makes that's why it's so good, is because you could go places and do things. Because it's shit, it's so good. <laughs> Alright. Okay, come on, we're right there, we're right there. We can yeah. do it. I Yo, can't believe Skyrim we only lasted three more seconds. It's the kids bot version of an RPG. But Skyrim isn't about its RPG mechanics. Nor is it about its story or combat. Skyrim <laughs> is about adventure. It became How do you oh have an adventure? <laughs> 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 That's the <laughs> shabbiest <laughs> fucking uh, thing. This is so or, fucking stupid. It's not about it all of these things that it's supposed to be. It's about the world. Not okay, what about it? It's it's a th it exists. The fact that it exists makes it a masterpiece. Imagine oh, fuck my off. God. Imagine what do showing we do in that world. Imagine showing this uh video essay to to uh <laughs> Emil and he'd be like, "The fuck?" <laughs> Everyone a great <laughs> These story. Are the people who like your games by the way. No, this no. is the people who don't turn them um, in the paper. Emil, again, Emil's Emil's whole thing, all right? Emil's whole thing is that he doesn't care about his writing and he doesn't like being a writer because nobody will actually pay attention to his story. They'll just make paper airplanes out of it. So he but doesn't it, bother. But if somebody approached him and talked about how great a particular quest line was, he would absolutely Of course uh, he does. Then talk about how how much work went into it and how all of his influences and stuff so yep i i it, it's a it's like a cake and eat it too kind of thing where he wants to be the most brilliant writer in the world which you know uh that's yeah, a good, I, good goal can, to have you but can like, try that's ambitious i i applaud your ambition sir but you ain't anywhere near there but then he like thinks that the all gamers are stupid so he has to dumb it down for people so, <laughs> that's odd. behold the bibble <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, oh, so again, because <laughs> this always applies when people make these stupid fucking statements. Skyrim is about the adventure. So, what about any of these other open world games means I can't have a similar adventure? If I start up Red Dead Redemption 2 right now and I get past the mandatory starting story stuff, and I get to the open world part of the game, what is stopping me from picking a direction and just having an adventure? Because I know I could do that in Morrowind. I could just wander around and find a dungeon that's maybe populated by vampires or maybe has a piece of sick loot in it that I've never seen before. My issue with it is, as he says himself, the story, the characters, the mechanics, they're all shallow and boring. What adventure is there to be had that's fun if none of those things are good? What, like, literally, what is there to do if those things aren't good? Yeah. yeah. If you are so easily entertained by the most bare bone story and quests and going there and being ooh skeletons, then Jesus Christ, you 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 are you're just a child. I don't I mean, know what else it could be because it's like you <laughs> to say everything's shallow, to say that it doesn't matter, 
It, oh, an adventure. Well, what do you do on that adventure? Well, you go to really boring places to do really boring stuff in a really boring world, but at least the world is there, right? It's like, that, that is literally the worst like argument for a game especially since again i keep saying this but it just sounds like he doesn't like this game if you really just take the title and and a few like <laughs> minutes away from the beginning yep. it would also make him a huge fucking hypocrite if he ever criticized any other game you know for these same reasons because it's like oh but it's okay when skyrim does it well yep. here's the thing That's too what we were saying why it's... is it okay when skyrim does it but not when red dead redemption 2 does it it's the exact thing Seth was saying earlier, though, about, um, I think it was one of the Dark Souls games. Ooh, a piece of candy. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. a piece of candy. That's <laughs> yeah. really what this comes across as. Yeah, it's literally somebody who can't pull their attention away for more than five seconds to realize it's not good. Because every time they start to think about it, they're just like, ooh, another piece of candy. Ooh, a piece of candy. Ooh, a piece of candy. Yeah. Yeah, like, if you recap this video, it's, it, it's like, uh, it's like a crazy person wrote it because it's like every every other sentence is is saying the complete opposite. Yeah, it starts out with like you know Skyrim is some you know oh, oh, wait, wait, so adventure and then and then it's like it's a magic. It, Skyrim is a magic, by the way. <laughs> and then uh, but, <laughs> by the way, here what you're saying, Indigo, <laughs> is that we have currently witnessed the video essay version of Unbred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, oh, no, God. then he does like the whole meme format for like five minutes, which or how many it felt like five hours, but whatever, however long that was, where he did the whole meme thing with the yeah. machinima yeah. thing. And then, then he does like the more serious vi video essay format, which he seems to methodically tear apart the game apart. But then he ends it saying, Oh, that's what makes it so great. It's like, What? <laughs> What's I have a point? feeling that he is typical second monitor fodder. Where people aren't yeah. actually listening to what he's saying. They aren't looking at what the examples he's giving on screen. They only remember the start of it and the end of it. It's 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 like that that level of uh, shallow YouTuber that if you sound convincing enough, people will believe you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and the people that like just tune in every once in a while, they're not they're not gonna check it. They'll be like, Oh wow, that he sounds pretty sure of that. Yeah, sure. Yep. That's literally all it is. I'm curious, okay. how many uh, subscribers does this guy even have? He's got a lot. He's got quite he a bit. I think he has like over 200k, actually. And this is the kind of content he makes? Yeah, I know. Isn't that a sad condemnation of society? Because like I was saying earlier, this seems very much like someone wants to do YouTube, but they don't know what to talk about, so they just say shit. Just like... 226k. Two... Oh my god. And this yeah. is the kind of content you make. What the fuck? <sighs> well, as we've seen, literally all you have to do to be successful on YouTube is just make random videos just being positive about stuff. It doesn't matter what it is or if you're correct. So long as you're positive about something and just spew... Uh, toxic positivity. Yeah, yeah, if you just spew praises for like an 18-minute video, people will watch the fuck out of it. Yeah, I... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, let's finish this off. Sorry, uh, go ahead. I, I just I, I saw a minute a moment of silence, so I started. I hit play. <laughs> God, this thing. Uh, no, I, I have a perfect short video from ProZD to play after this. So let's just finish this. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Came a massive success expected, and conquered the world by filling its own game world with secrets. But they aren't secrets with anymore, stuff. are they? It's not with secrets. It's with stuff. Yeah, it's just with generic stuff. It's content. Yeah. yeah. You can't call it secrets when you literally are being literally led by the hand directly to it. As you put it, you literally said Todd Howard takes your hand and leads you to all and of these places. And you like that because you like, and you Todd like Howard that. taking your hand. It's just so like you can't say it's secrets. Jesus. All right. You know my read all the locations earlier in the video? The way I was surprised by everything I stumbled into? <laughs> Acting. No, oh no, that's it, right. It, this that's... guy made a fucking stalker faction video. Oh no. Uh, okay, well. Also, acting? Jesus Christ, your acting is taught awful. Like, how dare you besmirch the name of Sir Patrick Stewart? Yeah, well, he kind of did that himself with Picard, but... 
Is is that uh, him though, or is that the writers? He was part of it. He signed on. If there's, from what I've heard, if um, they could inject it with politics and stuff. Ah, oh, but anyways, that's uh, tragic. But anyways, um, no, oh, it was acting. It's like you fell into a pit and you played a clip of I don't know what I was expecting, which doesn't even make fucking sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, as we said, gotcha, bitch would have worked better. Yeah. Yeah, that would have worked way better. Right. And also, right, 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 gotcha, right. bitch. Also, again, it wasn't very good acting. Oh, there's skeletons over there. Oh, there's a thing over there. Oh, a piece of candy. Yeah. I knew about that necromancer. I knew about Drillos's little love shack, and that skeleton was about as surprising as Todd lying to me. Sixteen times the detail, and even view distant weather the systems. Patreon plug. Do the Patreon Skyrim plug, doesn't please. surprise me anymore, and as a consequence, no longer feels like an adventure. Skyrim's constant re-releases do the game no favors, because with every release, that magic it had fades a little more. New That's not how that works. What? <laughs> the fuck? Is this... the what? Are we watching a different video now? Because like this is this felt like five videos. Yeah, it's crazy. How is this? Yeah. A, how is how is this a masterpiece? How is this a masterpiece? Piece? Please, are you just gonna say the word masterpiece at the end and that's it? Oh yeah, my god! No yeah, what that this word means. Yeah, he clearly has no understanding of what masterpiece is when he's literally said it's it's literally a master of nothing. It's literally just a flavorless, bland, generic pile of shit, but it exists and it has things. So therefore, it's somehow a fucking masterpiece. Even though it gets literally nothing, it does nothing exceptionally well. The fuck? Yeah. Jesus Christ. All right, let's let's continue. Shader. Are we really gonna do this right now? What no. the fuck is I'm happening? trying to press play. I'm and... pressing play too. All right, <laughs> go, go, Creed, go. Water shaders isn't gonna bring back that mystery. Volumetric lighting is not what secrets are made of. When Skyrim's magic and mystery is gone, all that's left is glitches, paid mods, and shallow mechanics. I've asked you in this video to not forget Skyrim. But I know you haven't forgotten these little stories sprinkled throughout the game. What I want you to not forget is this that is... Skyrim was at one point filled with the unexpected. And yes, that what? happens for every fucking game that's released for the first that is, time. What the that fuck is are you talking about? Every single game in existence, man. Every single game is filled with mystery and the unknown around every fucking corner. That's hey, how it works. Hey, hey, Such, do you know every secret in Elden Ring? No, I don't, because it doesn't exist yet. It's going to be a mystery. And, and by the way, re-releasing the game time and time and time again doesn't take the mystery away. What takes the mystery away is either fucking going out and exploring for yourself or reading up on it. I could spoil yeah. the entire story of fucking, I don't know, KOTOR 2 for myself. I could go read everything about it, so when I play the game... Oh, well, nothing's going to be a surprise for me. That's not because the game was released 200 times. It's because I went out and fucking read it. If I go in blind, like I am with Dark Souls, then I'm going to run into things that are going to be a surprise for me. Yeah, I, I don't get this fucking crazy person logic. Yep. You're actually making me defend Skyrim being released multiple times because you said a crazy thing about it. You fuck. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. 30 seconds. Come on. Patreon plug, please, God. And that's what an open world be. What makes Skyrim a bittersweet masterpiece is that it's an unforgettable. Of course, you would say it right at the very fucking end without having any substantive claims to it. All right, got it. All right. Game, yet one that I desperately want to forget, because I'd give anything to feel that adventure again. God, Shut how do you fuck up? Do you know how this? So he wants to have that experience again. It's it's a common thing that happens in the Souls community as well. Where after you do the Souls game, you yearn for that first time experience again. It's why the Souls community is actually so open to people experiencing the game blind for the first time. Because you want to vicariously relive what it was like to not know what was around the next corner. That mystery, that sense of discovery and everything. It's why the the fractured mode in Demon Souls is so fucking popular. Because I... you'd, be, you'd be shocked 
how different that makes it by just mirroring the entire world. Yeah, but it makes sense with Dark Souls because one, there's quality, two, the gameplay is fun, and three, there's actual fucking surprises that you just can't predict unless you've played the game. Are you guys telling me that if you were able to erase your memories of Skyrim, you wouldn't be surprised by there being a skeleton in a cave? And that being an amazing adventure when you killed it and looted the three gold off of it? No, you know what? I stand corrected. You're right, Kree. I'd be fucking shocked. (laughs) (laughs) you know i I, this by this logic i think that uh last of us 2 must be the greatest game of all time because i didn't expect the story to be so shit (laughs) yeah unexpected unexpectedly bad it made you feel things it might have been annoyance (laughs) and rage and boredom and fucking whatever else but at least it made you feel and that's the point of art and I wish I could feel, and I wish I could forget so I could feel all over again. <laughs> the things you felt weren't very good, but they did make you feel things, and that's what matters. Yeah. All right, we're almost there. 20 seconds. Please, Cobbler, show us mercy. Give us a Patreon plug. You can't say anything <laughs> stupid in 20 seconds, all right? Uh, I was going to oh, say something, but... You want to bet, Skim? No, no, no. I don't know if any of you are uh, Red Letter Media fans, but this reminds me of... Uh, uh, one of their um, bad movie watching moments where there was this movie which felt like 20 movies crammed into one and just in- absolutely insane shit happened all the time. <laughs> and to a point where one of the regulars, uh, Rich Evans, was like, I'm going to leave the room to go to the bathroom. Something crazy better not happen. And he, like, he slowly walks away. And as soon as he opens the door, it's like, wait, I saw that something cra- bad shit crazy just happened. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what this video is like. It's pretty great. Um, and yeah, Skibs, you don't... We've done 29 episodes. Only 29. We're not like EFAP, who's almost up to 200. We've done 29 episodes, and we've already seen insane amounts of shit. Like, absurdly crazy shit people could say in a span of just 20 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, we he, literally cannot say, like, anymore. It's like, oh, there's three seconds of footage left. Surely they can't say anything dumb now. Oh, no, you'd be surprised how many times we have that happen. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, thank fucking oh God. God. Thank oh, God. God. Thank God. Oh, God. Finally a win. Wait a minute. Gun, gun. Can I do a gun tangent? No, I'm just kidding. I can't. I can't, I can't uh, naturally fit in here. Well, you see the two videos that are fucking... Gun. 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 Top five failures of the CIA. Yes. Oh, that's not the one I have. The one I have is how Elden Ring made dunk on Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I see too. Oh, I don't see that. I have the top five failures of the CIA, and he's looking very cross. <laughs> well, that was that a fucking was... massive shit show. Are you guys ready for uh, more pain? Uh, well, yeah, I am. Let's get I, this I just, fucking Lord of the Rings shit going. I've I got guess. like a, I've got like a twenty second video. I'm I'm sorry to Pro CD. Uh, that's oh. not going to be very transformative. I just wanted to play it. I was just going to basically uh, uh, isolate this this genre of video where it's just uh, people wanting to wanting to uh, say stuff. Um, they want to say stuff that people want to hear. So okay. let me just play this play this video real quick. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've never never done. Okay. Uh, if you post the link. In, in chat, I could put. Well, you can just yeah. put it in the top bar there and watch. Yeah, where it, it says search or search or paste, just paste it there and it'll show up, and then you click on it. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully that worked. Yeah, it worked. I don't like this thing, but I like that thing. You know, there are people who exist that like that thing. We will not be silenced, you fucking son of a bitch! I like that thing. <laughs> I like that thing. But I do like this thing. I don't like that thing. I don't fuck. That thing fucking sucks. I fucking hate that thing. Oh! (laughs) (laughs) I love this guy. This guy makes great videos. Um, (laughs) Yeah, that's kind of what we have to deal with, though, because, you know, if we... Again, it's the whole fanboy thing. If we're critical of Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, oh, you're just a toxic New Vegas fanboy hater! It's like, no, yeah. we're, we're critical of genuine problems with these things. And then again, yeah. um, you say, like, 
Oh, Morrowind is good, or New Vegas is good. Oh, you're just fanboys who can't see any fault in the things you like. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, You're yeah, just yeah, sucking fucking... the game's dick. Oh, as, Acer right. Thorn, oh. as Acer Thorn would put it, you're just a bunch of cocksuckers. You suck their cock. All right, let's see this War of the Rings fucking trailer. Oh, Teaser trailer. It's a minute long, apparently. Or a minute and 20. Wait, wait, which one's the right one? They're both from Amazon. Uh, It should have been uploaded today. Yeah, it is. One hour ago. No, I've was... heard about this. I am so not excited for this. Well, which one should I watch? The the Amazon Prime Video UK or the Amazon Prime Video Ons? <laughs> or the Prime um... Video one? Fuck, I'll just do the Prime Video one. Jesus Christ. Yeah, fuck it. Um, just click one. The Prime Video one also has a live stream that's going on. It's like a live watch party of it. Who cares about that? Here we go. Alright, you got it on watch together? Yeah. Okay, you do. Uh, we'll probably have to All pause right. it because of copyright. We'll yeah, have to do that okay, every yeah, few yeah. seconds. seconds so. Yeah. Okay, you're ready. Alright, channel, prepare thyself. There we go. Haven't you ever wondered? What else is out there? There's wonders in this world. Okay, pause for copyright. Moose! Moo! Oh. I see the mooses! So you're saying Lord of the Rings takes place in Canada? <laughs> well, given the, the current choice they made, yeah, it's a liberal hellhole. <laughs> Beyond. Wait, what the fuck yeah. is that? Yeah, they're, they're, people, they're people carrying moose antlers that they killed. So I'm gonna say these are hobbits. Oh. I can't. Oh tell no, the things. moose got squooshed. Oh <laughs> no, the moose, moose got squooshed. <laughs> moose got squooshed. All right. Before the king. Uh, this is before Sauron was defeated, right? Yeah. This is the second age. Yeah. Like super, super before everything, right? So if, are they going to do before the king? There was the queen. And be like, oh. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. God. Yeah. They probably will. Yeah, they probably will. I can see where this is going before the king. Like well, Threadnought, I, I, we, we, we made that joke earlier, Threadnought. We had a picture of what Amazon unintentionally brought the question up to. Yeah. Oh, uh, Threadnought says, uncomfortable question. What happened to all the black people between this and the trilogies? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> they had their own third Because remember, in the books, um, yeah. For the king, don't do it. Before the fellow, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, I'll let you do it from now on. Thank you. So the, the, before the, the fellow, they're, so they're just doing like before the you know the Lord of the Rings trilogy, before the Hobbit trilogy. Yeah, yeah. There was blah. Yeah, typical trailer crap. Yeah. Okay. There. Was that was that a black elf? Yep. Yeah. Wait, before the ring, this is called the Rings of Power. Yeah. What the fuck? Wait, wait. So it's not before the rings. This is the this only... is when the this is when the rings get released. <laughs> <laughs> so what, I guess what? it's before the ring. If the first episode starts before Sauron made the rings and gave them to everyone. Maybe this is like his story of making the rings. Uh, maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, a blelf. It's not instead of instead of being a delf, a dark elf. It's a blelf. A <laughs> blelf. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Let's think of the background. Uh, 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 they. And the, the heads, they scream in eternal agony. Uh... I will give this trailer a fraction of a point. At least he has a beard. That, like, yeah. this dwarf shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Uh, 
And of course, they're doing the generic trailer shit. The da 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 da. Yeah, yeah I, that I, so I hate much. that. I yeah, it's so annoying. You, it's so fast. You literally can't see what's going on. So it's like it means nothing. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I'm pretty positive the the beardless queen dwarf was in there. Hold on. A yeah, oh, I saw that no. she was. Yeah, I saw her. Yeah, I saw her for a second. I'm going back. Go back. I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. Right there. Look at that. Where's your yep. Where's your fucking beard? Call yourself a dwarf. Get the fuck out of here. September 2nd. Well, at least we have a bit before pain begins. You don't mm. understand such. All the time is pain time. I mean, that's true. We basically have pain o'clock all the time. God, I don't know. Well, my fucking mind has been so fucking, like, shaped over the years that when the fucking, when that title screen came up, my brain actually moved the words power around so that the W and O were the first things I saw. And I, I actually thought it said the rings of woke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Well, at least well, it wasn't a little stinger at the end. Yeah, that was, that was still good. Oh, yeah. Uh... Just, they, they literally just have a, a stinger where it's just, just the fucking the black queen and she's just like and we're gonna smash the patriarchy oh god that would be so <laughs> terrible like yeah. at least it looks good but my god oh yeah i mean yeah. The, it, the fidelity of the special effects and stuff aren't bad actually i i'll admit that they it looks it visually looks it, probably it has a little amazon bit... budget it has amazon yeah for sure. yeah amazon yeah. budget it visually looks a bit sharper than the hobbit movies i really hated that sort of um it, it's like the 2005 video game bloom effect that they had all over that mo all over those movies it really irritated me yeah how do we make our special effects look better well if we smear it with vaseline yeah it's like yeah no and I think they just did that because some of the actors didn't look as young as the, you know, previous movies. So they tried to like blur that out. But yeah, uh, yeah, this is just, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm sure if you knew, if you know, Silmarillion and all of their, you know, extra stuff, you can pull something from here. A lot of stuff is probably completely original, but this is just collider fodder. This is just, uh, you know, well, 15 things you missed from the, the teaser trailer. We're going to analyze frame by frame. Well, here's oh. the thing. If you know the Silmarillion, there's way much more you can point out. It's like, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Black Elf? What? Hobbits existing <sighs> in the Second Age? What? Yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah, it, uh... I mean, I mean, the, the probably the article that summarized what's wrong with this the most is uh, Rings of Power exploring, uh, exploring the Middle Earth that t uh, Tolkien and Jackson ignored. Oh yeah. yeah. And yeah. another one was like <sighs> The Rings of Power is the uh Lord of the Rings book Tolkien never wrote. It's like, oh, yeah. maybe there's a reason he didn't fucking write it. Yeah, maybe it should have stayed unwritten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up, the fact that like if you just saw this trailer and didn't know anything about like if you hadn't seen the articles or any of the stuff coming out about this, like the interviews and all that stuff, you could easily think this would look pretty good like i could see somebody singing this and being like oh yeah this looks really competent this might actually be a good show yeah. but then when you put in what we saw here and then connect it with what we've already heard and seen about the show what they want to do with it it's like oh no yeah oh, this is gonna be bad uh, yeah. we're we're tribal we're tribal hobbits that existed before actual hobbits came, uh, and, and we've got blacks and Asians and Indians, and it's like uh, I'm glad. But then the modern hobbits came and killed them all because they're racist. Yeah, again, uh, I'm gonna put it back up on screen for a minute. It's Amazon deciding to make this change for no reason made quite the fucking implication for uh, Middle Earth. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, regardless of everything, I have like zero expe expectations for the show. But regardless of everything, it's uh, casting, uh, in incongruity with the you know Lord of the Rings and stuff. All that stuff could be completely wrong. But the only, the real factor that's going to determine whether this show is watchable or not is the writing. And yes, I, I really don't. Yes. I don't have a um, a whole lot of faith for that. It could be an incredibly unfaithful adaptation of LOTR, but it also could be an amazing story if it's well written. Yeah. Yeah. But it just makes you wonder if, if it's going to be completely unfaithful, why not just do your own thing? Yeah. But branding, brand is king. I, I know. I know branding yeah. is king because that's why iRobot, the movie, exists when it literally yeah. has fuck all to do with the book. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, it, it's insane some of the, the depths that people go. Like, I, I, I covered uh, Lawnmower Man, which was this really interesting uh, concept because they had this uh, generic script called cyber god and the script itself you know isn't great but it had a premise uh about like you know vr and and uh changing somebody who has a uh, limited intelligence to somebody who's like super brilliant and basically a, a god uh among men and all that kind of stuff and then they're like huh this isn't very marketable let we as a studio also own the rights to uh a book by stephen king let's just slap that title on there rewrite a couple scenes and call it lawnmower man because yep. and, and, and stick the Stephen King's Lawnmower Man. On I, I remember the, the thing I remember most from Lawnmower Man is the head going across the brain and the yeah. head's mouth was the, the, the tines of one of those old school lawnmowers. Yeah. And very weird. Like, tunk, 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 tunk. Very weird movie, but that that's their entire thing. And yeah. Stephen King was like, what the hell? That's not my story and sued him. And eventually, they had, to, they had to take off Stephen King's off of that. I think they still had the rights to the name, but they could no longer say that it was it was based on the works of Stephen King. But that yeah. was like one of the most blatant issues. It was like we we have something that just needs more brand recognition, so we're going to just use uh, this this IP that we bought off of Stephen King to to sell our movie that is completely yep. unrelated. <laughs> Very weird. God. It's kind of like um, The Shining and how they, the movie has very little to do with the actual book. And so he had to, they did that awful uh, TV series because it didn't have budget or anything like that. So, Well, the weird thing was, is a lot of the core elements of the stories are pretty much the same. Yeah. Just a lot of the details are changed. Um, yeah, and he hated that the details were changed. He uh, absolutely hated the the Shining movie, so he made a really terrible TV show. Yes. <laughs> uh, and and I, w I will say, I think, uh, I, I didn't watch the show, but I watched a review of it. I will say that the the tri the slow descent into madness uh, was probably a bit better in the show rather than, um, yeah. you know, Jack Nicholson just going from like, I drank a beer at a ghost bar. Now I'm crazy. Yeah. I want to murder everybody. We'll laugh at I'm going to kill them all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's. Yeah. But it, I, I don't think anybody would say, oh, yeah, no. Uh, Stephen King's, t uh, you know, straight to TV uh, miniseries is, is the true the true version. It's like, eh, it's not great. It's got, like, plant monsters. It kind of looks like uh, The Village. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And the plant monsters were horrible CG. Holy crap. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Yep. Um, and again, for those of you that are in the call, if you wish to stick around, you can. I'm going to play something to watch together for us. Oh, yeah. It's an but... amazing video. Oh, God. Uh, for the I, chat. I got to uh, yeah, head off for uh, work. <laughs> work early in the morning, so. Yeah, that's it fine. Was, yeah. It was really nice, you know, staying here and cringing all together with you guys. Yeah, so. it's been fun. Uh, sorry for making you suffer, but that is currently the name <laughs> no. of the show. Trust yeah. me, I don't think anything you guys could do could make me suffer more than talking with the, the retard for seven hours, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not... Sh We've covered some pretty... Awful videos, but I'm not sure any of them quite measure up to talking <laughs> to that person in real time. Yeah, directly. Yeah. It was rough. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to head out. So uh, I hope you guys have a good night. hope everyone watching has a good night. Before you go, yeah. shill your channel. 
Oh yeah, that's right. I gotta be a shill for a minute. Um, if everyone, if anyone wants to, my name is Skibby Dibbity on YouTube. I just kind of post. Uh, uh, I don't know. Right now, I just kind of have a shit post on it, but I have like New Vegas videos planned, and I'm also planning on like literally going minute by minute on uh, Acer's all Acer's Fall at New Vegas video. So that's taking some time. So yeah. <laughs> I sorry. I just searched up your channel, and um, your channel is the top result. My newest video on the DMCA abuser is right below it. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> let, let me... <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Uh, let me oh, get... It is. It's, it is for you, too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't even have to screen cap it, then. This is perfect. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it. I'm... Putting uh, Skibbity's channel link in the chat right there, and I'll put it into the uh, description too. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, poor Acer will never get rid of me. Or me. I yeah, or all of us. <laughs> I am fully convinced he genuinely despises owls now because of me. Oh, I I guarantee he probably went out and bought a BB gun and just sits at his window at night <laughs> waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like he, he, you know, Acer's a gamer, a hardcore gamer. He buys Animal Crossing, and oh, hey, there's a museum in town. He goes in, and there's an owl there, and he just fucking loses his shit. <laughs> Anyways, um, all right, guys, I I'll see you guys. Thank you so much for having me on, and peace. Yep. Yeah, thank you for joining, man. See you, man. See you guys. Have a good night. Have a good night. All right, well, uh, since we are closing down for the evening, um, Indigo, would you care to shill and shill and shill? I don't know how much to shill. My release schedule is pretty sparse. Uh, I had COVID for two weeks, so I'm kind of behind on that, but I am I was actually recording footage, footage while I was on here uh, for my next video about an obscure JRPG uh, developer called Quintet. They made a few games you probably didn't know that they're made by the same people. Um, Illusion of Gaia, Act Razor, um, Soul Blazer, Terranigma, The Grand Stream Saga, and a few others that most people haven't heard of. But uh, kind of an interesting kind of, uh, basically like an underdog uh, Square or Enix, essentially. They made some interesting games, so I'm working on a kind of documentary for them. It's getting bigger, so it's probably going to be at least an hour once it's done. But uh, otherwise, I've been kind of working within the scenes. It actually kind of came fairly haphazardly last week uh, into being that I'm going to be doing another podcast with, uh, um, well, another podcast with Zarek, but also um, newly featuring a, a Patrician TV. Still working out the details and the topics, but basically it's going to be overall about Skyrim and, and the... Um, I'm going to argue actually sort of the, uh, standalone complex. It's kind of a big term, but basically how a lot of different completely unassociated people ended up kind of doing the same thing. Um, where essentially a lot of, uh, like Bioware, uh, Bethesda, Square Enix, um, whomever else, CD Projekt Red kind of all sort of moved RPGs toward a certain direction, uh, through just kind of following successful trends and stuff. But definitely Skyrim is kind of the poster child for that. So uh, should be an interesting talk. Uh, Zarek's extremely knowledgeable about the TS series, and so is Patrician. So it'll be fun to talk uh, to them again. So that's probably going to happen next week sometime, Wednesday. Hopefully it doesn't disaster, because live streams, uh, everything that can go wrong will go, go will go wrong on live, live streams. So yeah. 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 Now, hopefully that goes well. Um yeah, uh, P uh, Patrician and Zachron, man, they've forgotten more lore about Elder Scrolls than I will ever fucking know. I've know. got a lot of respect for both of them. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm a lore noob compared to them, but uh, I I might have um, actually I, I probably don't even know as much as Zachron on on the gameplay mechanics, but at least I I could I could probably be on par with a lot of the game mechanics from the older games with Zacharon, um, probably more than Patrician, but yeah, between the lore and all the specifics of later games, I think that uh, Patrician and Zacharon got me beat, but it'll yeah. be an interesting conversation to have us all together and see what where the conversation goes, so it'll be fun. Yeah, I hope it goes well. Anyways, um, Pagan, Sesh, your channels. 
Eh, no one cares. Wow. <laughs> All right. Pagan, Pagan is fully defeated. Well, you can find uh, my YouTube channel. It is in the description below. Uh, current video we are working on is the Dark Souls video. I have decided to rewrite it because I was 40 pages deep and we had just got to Lordron. And I was like, um, yeah, this is turning into like a literal like textbook, you know, documentary style thing. And I don't think that would be genuinely as interesting for the analysis. So I have that off the side. But I'm going to rewrite it and basically just uh, uh, go a little little less um, autistic. Let's just put it that way on uh, the details and everything like that. Because I was reading through this and I was like, how the fuck is anyone going to be interested enough to go through this? That, that video probably would have ended up being like 15 hours long if, if, if I had kept going the way I was going. So, you know, I'm going to change the way I do that instead. Uh, as for that, uh, my Twitch channel, you can find it just by putting in my name, twitch.tv slash such dress car. I am there. We do uh, Space Station 13 streams. We do all kinds of different streams. I currently got a, I got a new capture card, so that's been uh, helping out a lot. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I will just uh, be on there. I'm going to be doing more Space Station 13 videos on my YouTube channel just to show that there's act actual activity on it because uh, I know people... Like, I, I revealed that I was doing the Dark Souls video way too early. I I kind of agree more with Patricia where I shouldn't I shouldn't have revealed it until the script was done. And, you know, we're starting work into editing, because then you have, you know, you've already got the, the legwork all done. Now you're just putting all the pieces together. Yeah. You should do uh, um, Dark Souls uh, analysis, a quick retrospective, and make it 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it was gonna be it was gonna be a Dark Souls analysis video, and I guarantee it was gonna be at least fifteen hours because, like I said, though a lot of it's front loaded heavy because I was doing it the moment you're introduced to the mechanics, so that that would obviously be more front loaded. But I just started thinking about how this is going, and it was just like, oh my god. So yeah, that's getting rewritten. Um, but yeah, I have that old script. Um, I may post it somewhere for a laugh, but Jesus Christ, uh, yeah, it's a bit much. Um, otherwise, good. yeah, just uh, feel free to join me on Twitch. I start at ten uh, east, uh, ten in the morning Eastern time uh, every weekday. So yeah, I'd love if any of you uh, showed up. And uh, links to everyone's channels are in the description. Um, uh, Ragna Armageddon. I'm probably fucking up his name. Sorry. Skibbity, uh Indigo Section Pagan are. Links to all their channels are in the description. Yep. And, uh, have a good night, everyone. Yeah, good night, everybody. Night, people.